Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku had an army part 1. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 2 comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist. The author of the story King Kumaki from Fanfiction Net. So let's start the video. Midoriya Izuku wouldn't know what just happened. He was with the class in their dormitories doing their own things. He had patched up the troubled relationship he had with Bakugo Katsuki and they were now on good terms, at least. He saved Uri from the Shai Hasekai and beat the crap out of Overhaul and his eight bullets but at the cost of Sir Nidai's death and his senpai, Tagata Murio, quirk, permeation. Still, after doing everything he could, at least now Uri was happy and had smiled during their school festival and he was responsible of hers while in school, Uri was either with Mirio or Aizawa Sensei. He went to bed to get ready for another day in heroism but somehow, he felt disturbed, like he was in a place he shouldn't be. He bolted up from where was laying down. He frowned when he discovered that his bed was here but the room was unfamiliar despite the same theme he decorated in his room, and walked out of the bedroom. Once he got out, he knew he wasn't there when the halls weren't matching with the same colors he knew by heart and he decided that remaining in his pajamas, which are All Might themed, of course, and went to search someone. It didn't take long when he heard. What the hell is this place? Kaken, Izuku said before rushing toward the source of the voice. How was Kaken here? Where is this place? How did a villain take us here? Is the League of Villains again? Those were the panicky thoughts of Izuku as he rushed, using a little of his quirk, one for all toward it. Once he reached it, his thoughts were between panic and confusion. Panic because every member of Class A and Class B were together in what he could assume was a cinema or a theater, and they looked and acted just as he was. And confusion because there were also his teachers, a few heroes, the big three, and others who he recognized during his stay at Uakakan. He decided to think later and put it at the present. Deku, what the hell is going on? Katsuki yelled in frustration as his palms kept cracking with small explosions, something Izuku remembered that his quirk acted with his emotions. I I don't know, he replied, looking around in much confusion as the blonde, young Midoriya. All might, you're here too. As the rest of us of UA, a few heroes such as Endeavour, Hawks, Mirko, Best Genist, Edshot, Death Arms, Kamui Woods, Mount Lady, Ryukyu, Gran Torino, and the WWP, Principal Nezu said as he was walking toward them with Aizawa Shota and Yamada Hazashi. Izuku, the greenette looked at the newly adopted Iri and Izumi Koda from the wild, wild pussycats making their way toward them. The heroes of said group also came with Sasaki Shino, Suchikawa Ryuko, Shartoko Tomoko, and Chatara Yawara. Where are we? Iri asked nervously, holding on to Izuku like a lifeline. I I don't know, Iri. Something tells me that we aren't where we supposed to be. Yes, such is a place that even I don't know. Izuku's eyes widened in shock and turned around to see the supposed deceased hero that went to work with had died, Sasaki Murai. Sir Naitai. Izuku cried out in shock and disbelief. Murai, Yagi Tashinori was the same. He had read the report in the state of his former psychic that he didn't know how to react to it. Sir, the one who couldn't believe most was Tagata Mirio, who didn't even hesitate to hug his master in shock and happiness. Midoriya, Tagata, All Might. Mirai couldn't believe it either but here he was and he needed to build the bad relationship he burned with his former boss, his successor and the one he trained. Here I am too, you zygotes. Torino Sorohiko grunted as he made his way toward his trainees. G Gran Torino, Sir, Tashinori, the former number one hero, cowered behind his successor in terror to see his former teacher. Izuku wasn't much bearing the same as he was trembling at the elder who kicked his ass during his internship before the Hasu incident. I it's good to see you again. Sorohiko snorted before a laugh. A familiar yet impossible laugh made him and Tashinori freeze in shock. He turned around to see the impossible sight of the deceased hero, friend, and mentor, Shimura Nana, laughing with a few other unrecognizable people behind her. In Nana, Tashinori couldn't believe his eyes. One thing is reuniting with Murai but another thing is reuniting with his mentor, his predecessor, and the only one who he could accept as his mother figure just in front of him. I is. Is it you? Nana's laugh diminished as she wiped the laughing tears from her eyes and sobered. Yes, Toshi, it's me. Tashinori would accept that he made his way toward her and gave her a hug, hoping that it wasn't a dream and remained like this forever. Nana accepted the hug as her successor shuddered in tears and patted his back. She then gave her old companion a cheeky grin. What's up, Sorohiko, you missed me? Sorohiko couldn't believe it either but the tone and the power she emitted couldn't be no one else. You damn right I do. You still own me those teyakis you stole from me. Nana laughed again as her eyes matched the green ones. Heya, ninth, it's good to meet you in person. Izuku's eyes widened in proportion which Katsuki, 
who has forgotten next to him, wondered if his eyes were going to pop out of his eye sockets. Why yo your Oi, Deku, stop being shocked every time, dumbass. Katsuki snapped him out of his shock, slapping his head. He looks just like you, second. Don't remind me, third. As they were left to their own, class A and B wondered what had just happened. It seems that Midoriya Kun is having a moment. Ada Tenya said, watching his friend and former bully standing with a few notable heroes. Deku Kun, Hiroraka Achako mumbled. Knowing that there was Sir Nightai who had died during the raid and she left him with the knowledge that Izuku needed much time. Tiro, I wonder where we are by the way. Basui Tsui wondered as she glanced at the cinema, theater they were staying at. Even our rooms are here but it didn't feel like it was ours. MH, Todoroki Shoto hummed in agreement. Well, glad I'm not the only one thinking like that. Shinzo Hitoshi grumbled as he made toward the only people of Klasa that he was used to with. Only because they knew Izuku. Shinzo Kun, you're here too. Tsuyu asked. And me too, Hatsume shouted, making Achako and Tenya tense which they hid behind Tsuyu and Shoto in fear of the eccentric woman. And I was a blast making my babies. I wonder if this place has a workbench somewhere. Don't worry, Hatsume. It will be all explained in a moment. Everyone tensed when an unfamiliar voice spoke in a nonchalant tone. Every student, hero and young kids watched the one who spoke to notice the sight of the one possible responsible. He was like a teenager only in that his hair looked like Shoto's except that it was white on the right and black on the left with two small bare ears on the top of his head and a small crown. He was a little tanned, has the aura of a Bishonen character and had two perfect amethyst-colored eyes. He was wearing a black three-piece suit with a white shirt and black tie, black gloves, golden button on his jacket, a king cape in color black with white fur around it, and a golden chain hanging his pants in the pocket of his jacket. Well, well, it seems like every person that I chose are respectfully here. The man sighed in satisfaction. Even Sir Nidai, which I'm sorry about your death. But hey, at least you're here with the rest of us, HM. Where the hell are we, you villain? Todoroki NG shouted, preparing his quirk to vanquish the villain. My god, is he always like this? Of course he is, what did I expect? The crown kid scoffed before snapping his fingers, which resulted on NG's quirk turning off. What the, who are you supposed to be? Nezu asked carefully. If such person could turn off the quirk of the current number one hero, he didn't know what kind of quirk this man had. Oh, careful are we, Nezu-kun. The teenager snickered in amusement. Don't worry, I'm not going to hurt anybody if it is necessary. At least I didn't bring the villains to watch the show. The heroes and heroes in training glanced at each other in worry but were in relief when no villains were here. The only thing they had to worry is about this guy who can turn off their quirks. Tusk, give them some entertainment and they distrust such present. The teenager, like if he could hear their thoughts, scoffed. It's like everyone else of my kind said. The first reaction of bringing the people of this universe is distrust. At least, I'm prepared to fight back if necessary. Ah, uh, what brings us here, mister? Yeirazu Momo began politely. The teenager slapped his hand on his forehead in realization. Oh, right, forgot about it. Thank you kindly, Yeirazu san The man stood up from his seat, which looked like the seat of a throne, and bowed dramatically. Sorry for the late introduction. My name is not important but I go by the name of Kuma. Nice to meet you all. I'm a great fan of your universe, truly. Universe. They perked up in interest. Are you saying that the theory of the multiverse is real? Why, yes. Of course the multiverse exists, my eccentric woman. Kuma shouted in joy, holding himself like he was pulling an invisible strap forward. The idea of the multiverse exists, but because of its complex, nobody could have known of it. Unless a group of individuals like me are able to see them, of course. Why are we here then, young Kuma? Tashinori asked. Oh, calling me young makes me younger, thank you Yagi-kun. Kuma chortled. I'm far the eldest of this place, truly far than the dawn of the quirks, but calling me young doesn't mean that I'm going to pamper you all like children, am I? Everyone tensed but didn't last long as Kuma laughed in glee. Oh, you should have looked your faces. He cackled, snapping his fingers. Of course, this cinema. Theater was added with a snack bar and many other delicious treaties that you can enjoy. A cinema, theater is nothing without some snacks, right? And don't worry, the place replenish itself on its own and we can take a break whenever we want. But I have a question. HM, what is it, Su chan Kuma asked, crossing his arms and planting a fist under his chin. I know you mentioned that this is a cinema, theater, but I'm asking, what is this place? She asked, not knowing if letting this person calling her by that nickname was okay or not. Oh right, you mortals wouldn't know what this place is? He chuckled. This place is put inside a pocket dimension that only the people placed here can move and act while the outside world is like in stasis. They won't know you disappeared. And you'll return to your own world as soon as this place has finished the course of the show. Suyu nodded and few of the heroes and students sighed in relief. Come on, I'm not that bad. Kuma grunted, pouting, and crossing his arms in mock hurt. I have known a few of my kind acting a little sadistic or worse, but I'm more like in the gray area. Sorry, I was worried about my family. 
she pointed out. Kuma nodded. Understandable, have a nice day. Kaminari Denki, Siro Hanta, and Ashido Mina laughed at the meme he just spoke. Ah, a man of culture I see. Denki laughed. Kuma smiled brightly. Why yes, my young Pikachu, that I am. Hey, Denki complained mock hurtfully, with the two laughing and Jiru Kayoka joining in. In any case, Kuma brought up. I think it's time for the show to start, am I right? So, take your snacks and seat whenever you want while I take a moment to prepare. With that Kuma disappeared just as his throne, leaving the heroes alone. So, Kirishima Ijiro mused as he scratched his head. What should we do? It seems that we don't have any other choice. Shoji Mizo said, crossing his multiple arms. Yes, I noticed that this place didn't have any other animals so I'm not sure about escaping this place. Kota Koji signed nervously. I saw a kitchen in this place on my way here so I can assume that we can cook something after this. Sato Rikido added. Hey, at least it's like a movie night. Hagakir Toru said excitedly. It would show my shiny form. Ayama Yuga posed in his splendor self. HMPH, as if we would enjoy the movie with Class A, I say. Monoma Nito grunted in the usual supremacy he sported before being knocked out by Kendo Itsuka. Monoma, sorry about him. She apologized. Oh, don't be, we are getting used to it. Momo said in dismissal. She's lying. Kayoka grinned. Revelry in the dark. Takoyami Fumikage said. Something on your mind, Endeavor. Takami Kago asked as he couldn't find anything in this place with his feathers. Don't be. He's just mad that his quirk was turned off like the idiot he is. Yuzajiyama Rumi snorted as she grabbed a carrot-flavored snack and munched on it. But I hope this place has a training ground to train. I don't want to get rusty watching only. Relax, Rumi. You'll get your chance to ask. Tatsuma Ryuko said diplomatically. At least the food is good. Toyomitsu Tashiro said as he had grabbed different snacks to eat. Well, at least this is an experience not many people would be able to be in. Hakamata Tsunagu said, brushing his brilliant hair. Somehow Katsuki shuddered when his eyes connected with his former intern teacher. I see, Kamahara Shinya said in agreement. What brought you here, old-timer? Takayama you asked the only active hero within the top ranks. Hey, you're being rude. Agami Shinosuke yelled, outraged. Hey, and don't think of looking at his name. Fun fact, I decided to use the voice actor in Japanese as his name. Kami, Mount Lady. Nishiya Shinji groaned, face bombing. HM, youngsters these days. Fujiwara Yasuhiro said, his armor sounding the cinema, theater with each step. I do not know the reason behind but it seems that this Kuma person brought me here when I could be protecting the city from the villains. It brings me joy to be reunited with many heroes. Megami Tsuguo said in delight, crying rivers in awe. And mostly, I am so happy to be with the former hero, All Might, showing the youngest how to be a hero. At least it could bring you time to sharpen your skills, Yoroi Musha. Sakamata Kugo voiced his point. HM, I agree for now. The elder hummed. It's strange to have many heroes in this place. Amajiki Tamaki said nervously. But it's interesting and amazing. Pado Nejair said excitedly. Maybe so. Mirio rejoined with the two others of the big three after speaking with Sir Naitai. But we should be able to enjoy the time we have here despite that I don't have a quirk anymore. Don't you worry about that, Tagata-kun. Kuma popped, announcing his return. While this place is away from the timeline of your world, my superiors had suggested that since everyone here present have their quirks, you should also have it. I already did it to Ragdoll too. Snapping his fingers, Mirio could feel the feeling of his quirk. Before he could cry in happiness, Kuma added, Also, this place has a cooking facility, cafeteria, playing zone, training grounds, and most importantly, individual bathrooms and a spa. Many women were delighted at the sound of a spa, but none other than the little pervert, Minta Minoru. Oh, I forgot. If anyone doing something drastic like peeping, well. Kuma snapped his fingers again as multiple robots emerged from the ground, looking menacingly at everyone and cracking their metallic knuckles. Don't think that the security here is light, MK. Minoru felt that threat was pointing at him as his eyes glinted dangerously as his eyes looked at him. Kuma lightened his look and smiled at everyone while the security robots returned to their posts. Right, ladies and gentlemen, prepare your popcorn and snacks, and let's get to it. They looked delighted to dismantle those robots and see what kind of machinery they worked on, but instead, she was pulled away by her teacher Majima Higari. You can ask him later about those blueprints, Hatsu. For now, rest like you show do. The support teacher ordered his problem child. May grunted in displeasure but for now, she listened, grabbed her snacks, and sat with the rest of the Deku squad, much to the horror of Achako and Tenya. Alright, you listen to that person. Grab your snacks and get seated. Kan Sekijiro ordered his class. Yes, sensei. Class B said in unison. You think it will be educational to see this? Ishiyama Ken asked as he prepared his snacks. Don't know, partner. But we'll know for sure in a moment. Naratoru said. Oh, I hope to see those snacks. Mine, Kiyama Nimuri said in delight, grabbing her favorite snacks from the pile. 
Hey, his Ashi shouted since those were his favorite snacks too. I'm happy about you, Mirio Senpai. Izuku said happily as he knew how devastated he looked even if he pretended to be otherwise. Yes, Midoriya, I'm overjoyed with power. Mirio shouted in his trademark pose, Iri doing the same and laughing. And I will be able to practice more instead of rusting my skills. That's great to hear, senpai. Tenya shouted. Don't be so still, Tenya. Ada Tensei chuckled while wheeling toward him. Brother, nice to meet you, Ingenium. My name is Yuraka Achako and I'm a friend of Ada Kun. Nice to meet you too. I'm glad to see that Tenya is in safe hands and friends. And call me Tensei. It seems that my little brother is now named after me. Brother, Tenya groaned in embarrassment. The Deku squad laughed at the reaction of their speedster friend as they grabbed their snacks. Shoto was at least happy that the snacks had soba so he grabbed as much as he could and sat with his friends. Don't eat too much if you're going to have a stomachache at the end of the show, am I clear? Shuzenji Chio said to everyone who agreed immediately. You don't fuck with the white mage. Is it really necessary? Kuro's on and said in confusion. I think it, GRR, is in her rights. 13, GRR. Inui Ryo growled. Class NB seated accordingly with their groups. And the heroes sat with the ones they were used to. Kuma stood in front of the screen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this universe is going to show the one person who everyone loves and cherish. Kuma announced dramatically. Oh, I hope it's about me. Minoru said. In your dreams, grapist. Hand aside. It's about Midoriya Izuku. Everyone paused as they processed that before they shouted. L-H-H-H. The loudest was the mentioned person. W-W-H-Y me. Izuku shouted. Oh, please, you villain magnet. Kuma scoffed, which others snorted in return, knowing that he was right and Izuku looked indignant. I know for a fact that each universe you, our lovable green cinnamon roll, another snort, happens to be always in the middle of some dramatic fight against villains which in turn, either you get hurt or learn how to use well your quirk. Izuku tensed when he was put with that statement. Katsuki, Tashinori, Sorohiko, and Murai tensed too. The other one for all users glanced at each other and weren't worried much about it since it was going to be time that their powers would be announced to the world, directly or indirectly. A few noticed their reactions but didn't question much as Nezu, Chio, and the supposedly detective Tsukachi Neyamasa didn't tense at such declaration. Well, the latter did, but quickly wiped it off. David and Melissa Shield looked at their respective friends in confusion and were now worried that their nervousness was showing to everyone present. Now, now, I know you are nervous, but I hope that everyone to understand that once this show is finished, no words from it gets out. Kuma explained, unless you want to get your head exploded like a watermelon. He threatened darkly. A few students gulped or shivered nervously while the heroes tensed at such darkness Kuma possessed, only that it is a bluff. I cannot control on that magnitude that could affect them to the others that aren't here. Kuma frowned, glaring at each one of them to try it. The only thing I can do is to hope that they learn it and hide it willingly or I have to make drastic measures. Since everyone got it, let's start the show, shall we? He clapped his hands, turning the lights off and the screen to shine. He grabbed his caramel bucket of popcorn and sat with the rest of it in his throne. Where we are going always reflects where we came from. Nice title, Shoji said, and something added that we can learn from. Kuma nodded. It started with a dream. A single man, whispering. At first, he didn't even remember. But then the voices started appearing in his head. Just one, two the more. Until all day he was plagued with them. Nice beginning. Kaibara Sen snorted sarcastically. I wonder what kind of dream Midoriya was having to listen voices. Honiki Juzo said worriedly. He was already quirkless. He didn't want to be known as crazy too. Man, that's rough. Shinzo huffed. Quirkless. Achako and Tenya said in unison and confusion while Izuku tensed and was sweating nervously. And maybe it's nothing guys. He deflected hastily. It's another multiverse, maybe. But the voices comforted him, stood by him. When nobody else would. When his best friend became his tormentor. And when his mother denied him. Man, that's fucked up. Tetsu 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 grunted. Who could possibly hate the green bean? Takage Satsuna said angrily. Katsuki tensed and gulped nervously as Ijiro watched him in confusion just as the other members of the Baku squad. They whispered comforts, appreciation, encouragement, and approval, constantly reminding him. You can be a hero. You will be a hero. What a nice bunch if they are encouraging him. Mezu sighed as he sipped his tea. But I wonder what kind of people would encourage Midoriya if they are only voices. As Ashi mused in confusion. Then one day, he appeared. Izuku was four when he got a quirk. But he was ten when he finally found out. Izuku was first scared. As all children are when a random person who looked exactly like you appeared in your room. Everyone blinked in confusion before shouting in shock. Uhhh. In this universe, Midoriya has a quirk. Doesn't he already have a quirk? What the hell? Two Midoriyas. Are we going to hear them mutter like ours? Silence. Kuma shouted. Annoyed that it was expected to happen but to hear them is another thing. Naturally, Izuku's innate curiosity overwhelmed that fear. 
Who are you? Nicely done, Greeny. Setsuna snorted in amusement. Midoriya is always like this. Tenya affirmed. Ida Khan. Right. Iraraka-san. Well, finally I'm out of here. Hi Izuku, I'm your quirk. The doppelganger said, only to pause as Izuku immediately froze and fainted. That too, Todoroki-kun. But Midoriya-chan, you tend to faint when something incredible happens, Kiro. Asui-san, not you too. Call me too. Well, that could have gone better. Someone snorted. Understandable of the day. After getting the initial shock, happiness, tears, more shock, happiness, and tears from Inko and then even more tears. They all managed to sit together in the living room and talk. Man, they can cry much. They could at least flow the streets if it were like that. Denki whistled. At least they should hydrate themselves if they keep like that. Momo said worriedly. Deku can cry for hours and not feel anything. Katsuki snorted. Kakin, am I wrong? No, but you shouldn't say it like that. Izuku pouted, Achako patting his back while covering her laughs. So let me get this straight. My son has been listening to voices for years and never told me. And it turns out it's his quirk. Inko was devastated. Her own son hadn't trusted her enough to talk about what was happening for the last six years of his life. Wow, Greeny, lying to your own mother. That is big no-no, Satsuna said, her hand disconnecting from her wrist and shaking it to Izuku's face. If I can say something, she couldn't have believed him even if he had told her. Shishida Jirota remarked, if someone said that he, she could hear voices without proof, nobody could have. That may be right, Rinhuryu said in agreement. Yep, we've been inside his. I guess you could say mindscape. Most of them are asleep I guess you could say. Right now Izuku's only strong enough to bring me out but eventually, we might be able to summon others. Who knows, maybe even an entire army. No villain's gonna want to mess with that, the clone said as he started chuckling. Wow, think of the possibilities of having many clones protecting the cities. Suburaba Kosai said in awe. Yeah, there could be many possibilities with having many manpower with that kind of ability. Kago frowned since this kind of quirk reminded him of twice or Bubegawara Jin and his double quirk. Inko felt like the experience was surreal. It was as if she'd had twins instead and both with completely opposite personalities. That would have been surprising, Mina said, earning a lot of attention to her. Having one is cute enough but having two but have different personalities would have many possibilities of knowing him. Siku cute. Me. Izuku yelped in embarrassment. Enough of embarrassing him, young Ashido. And let's continue with the show. Toshinori saved his successor. Izuku sighed in relief while the other members of the OFA laughed at the ninth situation. But I always hear their voices. Izuku asked as he leaned forward. He had grabbed a fresh journal for this one but had yet to name it. Too excited at the idea of writing about his own quirk. Some of them wake up from time to time. They like seeing through your eyes. We've always been in your corner, Izuku. The copy said with a sad smile on his face. Izuku immediately knew what exactly that smile meant. Do you? Shoto asked. Why yeah? Izuku replied. While his friends comforted him, many heroes watched him in slight worry that this kid had suffered. He's going to need therapy after this. Nimuri sighed. Agreed. Nezu said, looking at the counselor. Can you do it, hound dog? Yes, principal, I will do my best, GRR. Ryo affirmed with a nod. Okay, do you have a name? M.M. Not really. I have a designation, like a number that popped into my head. One time when you were looking through some American military-based heroes I came up with an entire thing. CT000001. CT for clone trooper, since I'm a clone and well. I like the word trooper. He explained with a grin. Thank you. Denki shouted when he didn't understand the CT term. Shut up, dumbass. Kayoka growled, threatening him with her jacks to his face. Yeah, no way am I calling you that. You're not just a clone. You're not just my quirk. Hear me. Just, a bit different. So you gotta have a name. Izuku said passionately. He didn't want to be like other people with sentient quirks who disregarded them. You are a great companion in the darkness, Midoriya. Fumikage approved of him. Yeah, Dark Shadow agreed. Izuku smiled. Thank you, Takoyami-kun. Nishida Masakazu smiled under his mask as such intention wasn't very liked with non-sentient quirk users. While his quirk clones are part of him, they didn't do much as what Midoriya could. One was surprised but smiled at the thought. All right then, but what should my name be? And it better not be a reiteration of All Might. I saw enough of those when you were a kid, mighty boy. He teased. Izuku flushed red. As much as he admired All Might, even he had to admit that those names were kind of cringy. My boy, there is no shame of calling close to name hero name. Tashinori yelled. You still thought of those names, Deku? Katsuki snorted. What a kid you are. At least he isn't called like those cringy names of yours, Bekugo. Kayoka snorted. What did you say? Ears. Katsuki roared indignantly. What were those names? Rumi asked in total curiosity. Bakugo called himself Lord Explosion Murder for the first time. Nimuri said with a wave of her hand. I instantly shot it down. Cold. I like it. I don't know. I think you should decide. I mean, 
It's your name, Izuku mumbled out. One nodded at the good point and started to think about it. Unfortunately, he also had Izuku's mumbling habit. Is this what it feels like? So similar. Wow, even yourself are creeped out like it? Huh. A ways Yosu pointed it out. M.H. Kodai Yui nodded. Revelry in the dark. Kirwaro Shihai agreed. That did come expectingly. Fukudashi Manga said. M.H. Inagi Riaiko nodded. H.M. He snapped his fingers and smiled at both of them. I choose Django. Django. That's so cool. And Ko just smiled at the two. Though now she did wonder if she was going to have to take care of two growing boys instead of just one. Or more if Django was right. Oh dear. Anyways, in celebration of finally getting your quirk. How about I make Katsudan? And Ko was immediately met with the excited cries of two ten-year-old boys for their favorite food. Django. That fits well for some reason. Kayoka mused thoughtfully. Django means brave warrior in Africa and since he's the opposite of Midoriya who looks braver than him at the time, it kinds of fits. Momo supplied. It also means awake so it also fits him. Izuku was mesmerized that in this universe he had something like a brother as he wrote on his notebook, which neither the one sitting close to him or Kuma watched him having on himself, to see the many possibilities of his quirk. Do you know how he brings those notebooks, Kuma? Suyu asked in total curiosity. You know, many of our kind had wondered the same but nobody knows for sure where Midoriya brings those notebooks. Kuma replied in total honesty at such boggling action. We tend to joke that crying or being a villain magnet was his quirk or something. But him bringing those notebooks whenever he is, is kind of shocking even for us. I doubt that if he's naked, he would bring those notebooks somewhere. Shoto mumbled out as he also wrote down the conspiracy theories in his own notebooks. And the conspiracy Shoto attacks again. Kuma groaned as he munched on his popcorn. The following visit to the doctors was a very joyous event for the family, officially labeling his quirk as clone, with the understanding that it could be updated later if it proved true that more clones could come out and the added note of him being the second oldest late bloomer recorded, the first being some Yagi kid 40 years ago. Despite this, however, Kakin was not so excited at seeing worthless Deku with a quirk. It seemed to have shaken him because immediately after class he confronted Izuku with his lackeys and started to bully him. The teachers glanced at Tashinori who gulped nervously at such statement from the doctor. He knew that he was a late bloomer but his status as quirkless wasn't very well known. Nana smiled softly that she didn't even regret choosing him as her successor. But it seemed that the secret of one for all was closing in. Then the students glared at the supposed kakin while said person decided that the roof was suddenly interesting. Even Kuma looked at him with a glare and raised eyebrow as he paused the show. Wow, Bakugo-kun. Well I know the reason behind it. I can't understand how your brain works. If he's quirkless, you get mad. If he has a normal quirk, you tell him it's weak. If he has a villainous quirk, you call him a villain. If he has a mutant quirk, you call him a monster or freak. I mean, what's the point of him having a quirk if you're going to be mad at him for something he has no control of? Yuri sniffed as she didn't know how to feel about that. She knew that Deku was the one who saved her from overhaul but she doesn't see him as a monster. Instead, she is her hero who saved her when everyone told her her quirk was a curse. Yuri tensed when a hand touched her head but it was warmer and kinder. She looked up to see Izuku giving her a smile and caressing her slowly. It's okay, Yuri-chan. Overhaul won't hurt you anymore and your quirk is not a curse. Yuri smiled happily and gave him a hug which he returned warmly. Kuma sighed as he clapped his hands. All right everyone, you can chew him up after the show. So, return to your seats or whatever and pay attention. You think that just cause you got a quirk you can stand up to me, Deku? You're nothing. The blonde went with his hands already crackling. Izuku was already crying. His hopes of finally being accepted by his childhood friend being shattered in front of his eyes. Man, I really fucked up. Katsuki groaned, rubbing his eyes. That's not manly, Bikubro. Ijiro grunted, not knowing how to feel about that. We already made up so there is no need to attack him, you guys. Izuku quickly defended him, covering Eri's ears, which Shino covered Koda's much to his chagrin. So please, guys, let's keep watching. Everyone grunted reluctantly but followed the Greenette's words and sat down. On that day, things stayed the same. And yet things changed. Katsuki's prejudice stayed the same, as well as his assumptions, automatically assuming that a clone of Izuku would mean the same weakness to violence. Unfortunately for him, Django was not Izuku, even though he was a clone. And he did not like Bakugo Katsuki. So in true fanboy fashion, he copied a move that both boys saw All Might do on TV. And cold clocked Katsuki in the jaw. Amen. Denki and Hanta shouted, posing the same as the meme while the others laughed at the blonde's result. H-O-H-O-H-A. Wow, Greenie, your brother is impressive. Satsuna cackled. You got owned, Bakugo. Kayoka chuckled. Shut your mouths, extras. Katsuki roared. Oh look how a clone punched the great hero of class of how the mighty have. C-L-O-N-K again, I'm sorry about him. Don't worry, no harm done. 
Ajiro Mashurao answered for their class. Man, at least Monoma would have learned that there is a time and place for that. Kamakiri Tagaru stated. You don't know him enough, I think. Showed a Nirenjiki side. HM. Bondo Kajiro nodded. It was kind of funny though. Sunotori Pony said in perfect Japanese. Pony, since when you can speak well. Tomori Kanoko said in confusion. You're welcome. Kuma snickered, grabbing more popcorn in his bucket. This place is able to translate in the language everyone is familiar with so I though. Why don't I also help those that don't understand other? HM. Pony cried and bolted toward Kuma who then hugged him thankfully. T thank you. With this, I'll be able to learn Japanese without worrying others. Kuma smiled and patted her head like a small kid. It's alright. Oh lord in heavens. Thank you for bringing someone with a heart to us. Shizaki Ibarra said in total prayer. Did that light come from somewhere or was it only me? Juzo asked. No, it wasn't just you. Manga supplied. Uff, I thought it was only me who thought like that. Away sighed in relief. I came out to have a good time and I'm honestly feeling so attacked right now. Kuma huffed indignantly. And nobody asks me about that light. The same as Midoriya. Don't ask, I don't want to know. The young boy was out like a light and seeing their illusionist leader unconscious on the ground lost any courage they had and ran away. Blasted Pomeranian. Django grumbled as he shook his hand, turning to Izuku, who could only stare in shock and pant as the adrenaline left his system. He had fallen on his rear while backing away and was still shaking. Buo, cowards. Denki shouted with Hanta thumbing down. I'm going to use that the next time. Mina chided happily to use the new nickname on Katsuki. You wouldn't. Katsuki snarled. Try me, bitch. Deku-kun looks like a scared puppy. Achako cooed but was worried about her best friend. Hiroraka san Please. Izuku's face reddened instantly. Django grimaced at the sight but promised to himself that he would help Izuku get better. Come on Vod, let's go home. He said while pulling Izuku up and then walked him home. Once reaching their room, with promises of explaining to mom later, Django set Izuku on the bed and let him weep for the friendship that was lost and the dream that came with it. Later, after explaining everything to mom, Izuku and Django sat together in bed, Izuku taking comfort in who was probably his only friend. How sad. Yeah, how sad. Mimuri sighed sadly. It looks like Bakugo is going to need some anger management after this, don't you think? Shota grunted, but inwardly he was boiling in anger that one of his students was the instigator. He wanted to explode and strangle that school for letting such actions without doing anything for their students. Don't you worry about it, Aizawa, Nezu said frigidly, which many teachers and even heroes shivered at the tone the principal was using. After we're done here, I promise you that school is going to be burning down. Here for more information, Principal Nezu, Kuma supplied. He was so glad to give him all information about that place. H.M. Alderan Middle School. Yes, thank you kindly, Kumakun, for the information. Nezu chirped joyfully which now the teachers of Yua felt kind of pity for them. For two seconds. My thanks to you, Principal. Kuma chortled as he made his way toward his seat. Do your worst. Ho ho ho, then I shall. What was it you called me earlier? Vod something. HM. Oh, Vod. I was thinking of the future, you know. If we're gonna be heroes, and we get more clones we're gonna need to come up with strategies and stuff, and I was thinking of creating a language, just for us. Nezu's interest perked up. If such language existed, it could help many people coding with a language not many people would know. He hoped that his other version has more encouragement of it as he should. That's an interesting way of putting it. I should learn from it too. Izuku muttered as he scribbled down. What's it called? I'm calling it Manda. Cool. What does it mean? It means brother. Teach me. Of course. With that the screen turned black and lights on, saying that the first show was over. Man, that was cool. I hope that it would teach us Manda too. Anjiro said, pumping his fist. That is manly. Don't worry, the show is going to show subtitles what it meant for the language these two brothers are saying. Kuma assured them. Meanwhile, take 30 minutes to rest and we will return to the show. With that, everyone went to do their business or resupplying their snacks. Saying so, everyone was in agreement that this show was going to show them a part of a certain Midoriya Izuku. During their break, Shota had called both Izuku and Katsuki to have a chat with the principal, saying that both young heroes to be were nervous was understandable one more than the other, while Tashinori remained with them also nervous. Now, Midoriya and Bakugo, would you mind telling me what kind of relationship you had? Nezu asked kindly. Well, it was hard to tell about him. Izuku nervously shivered like the puppy everyone looked at. Katsuki grunted and shoved his hands inside his pockets while looking elsewhere. But the principal or their homeroom teacher frowning at them. I know you two haven't had the best relationship since the beginning of the class. Shota decided to intervene before anybody could have a heart attack. But we got enough evidence that we will do something about that school of yours which many staff would have their license revoked and the students warned. Izuku and Katsuki glanced at the folder the principal was holding like a doom button, which it was like that, before Katsuki huffed, deciding that he was better to finish this like a band-aid. 
Yes, I was the bully and I saw the problems I have. Katsuki admitted. Sensei got us during our fight which was something akin of finally burying the hatchet between us. There are many bridges I burned and I hope that I can rebuild them like before our quirks manifested. Izuku was surprised and shocked on how much Katsuki had admitted. While concerning, he was happy that he was going to a better path than the path he was walking on like a bully. Tashinori simply smiled proudly that young Bakugo was finally growing up like the hero he viewed. HM, very well, I can see that you have grown up from that shell of yours and going to a better path. Nezu nodded in satisfaction. But you two won't mind if I take down your school, right? I don't mind, principal. Katsuki whiplashed when Izuku was the one who answered that without hesitation. Izuku simply continued, oblivious of his childhood friend's look. That school had shown me that the teachers are responsible to the actions the students make and they should have corrected them. But knowing that since I'm not there, there are other students that would suffer the same action I lived in. And they shouldn't live in that horrible place anymore. Shota huffed under his scarf while smiling. His problem child had grown much since the beginning of the class and he was proud of him. Nezu seemed to agree as he smiled. Well said, Midoriya Kun. Do not worry that I plan using my role as the principal to shut down that school. And maybe look for another school that matches the same principles from that horrendous place. Nodding, Izuku and Katsuki returned to the cinema, theater to their respective companions. Tashinori sighed in relief that they weren't punished much but at least. They had grown much to turn into a better person and he was glad that the future was going to be in good hands. Now that everyone was sitting in their respective seats and holding their restocked snacks, Kuma clapped his hands to gather their attention. Now, people, since I'm in good mood as the first show was a success, I'm going to bring someone to share with us, Kuma said, raising his fingers before snapping them. There was a sudden light in front of him before a figure formed up and appeared. Midoriya, Django, Vod, the second Midoriya wearing normal clothing. Wasn't Izuku's horrendous taste of clothing, appeared and gave their original a big hug. Izuku, not knowing what to do, simply gave him an awkward hug which in turn, Django frowned in confusion. Vod, you're okay. Wow, it's strange to see two Midoriyas that it isn't in front of a mirror. Achako pointed out. Django looked around in confusion, noting the heroes and the people he didn't recognize before a realization came toward him. Uh, I'm, you're not my Vod, right? Incorrect, Django Kun. Kuma interrupted, getting close to them. He's indeed your Vod, but the difference is that he's not from the same universe as yours. Django looked sad but sighed an understatement. I see, why did you bring me here then? Why? Because your universe shows them that the lives this Midoriya Izuku took is going to be bigger and he needs much assistance from someone who was from the same blood and sweat. Kuma explained. Django glanced at Izuku and he was indeed surprised that there are many multiverses with different Midoriya Izukas. But, at the end of the day, they are his Vods so it would be an experience to see how his Vods are different. Well, guess I can stay and see how's that. Django mused as he glanced at Kuma. Still though, how's my? Kuma looked at him solemnly. It took him a massive hit on his heart and you will know what happened during your stay in this cinema, theater. You would be proud of him, Django. Django chuckled melancholy, rubbing his forehead. I am, and I wouldn't be so sure that Vod will do his best to become the hero he dreamt on. He then tensed and frowned darkly before his eyes turned to the one person he could at least hate, Bakugo Katsuki. I'll be watching you, Arudi. He growled darkly, which surprised everyone with the tone he was using. Without anything to say, Django grabbed the snacks he desired and sat with the rest of Deku's squad. Not knowing what else to do, since they didn't know what that word meant, sat on their respective seats and Kuma started the show. It is a rough road that leads to the heights of greatness. Oh yep, most people nodded in agreement. In the years that passed by Izuku stayed unfortunately alone. Children can be very fickle, regardless of the fact that Izuku now had a quirk, he was still treated very much the same. Although thanks to Django's support he managed to handle himself. Children can be so cruel. Shoji sighed in disappointment. The young have less filters and can be crueler than you expect. Fumikage mused sagely. Since when you were that poetic? Rikido asked. I think Takoyami-chan meant what he expected. Suyu added, tapping her chin. Most children learn from the adults and from what we saw. The adults are as much at fault for corrupting the minds of those children. What would it be if Bakugo was kinder? Achako wondered aloud. I can be kind, round cheeks. Katsuki roared indignantly. I don't see that. Sitsuna cackled. He wishes. Django snorted under his breath. Django helped him realize that a hero had to be both smart and strong in order to save people. So they both started to work out together. Unfortunately, Inko didn't have the money at the moment to send them to a martial arts class. Nobody believed him when they said that Django was a quirk, or if they did, still tried to charge them for two. It made some sense but at the same time, come on. Wow, people are jerks. Achako shouted, outraged. He has a quirk, they don't believe it. He doesn't have a quirk, they bully him. What is wrong with these people? 
I agree, the actions they went isn't much the same as acting like villains, Tenya declared, barely holding his anger. They only want to make Midoriya suffer for their pettiness despite having a quirk. They should not be representing with that kind of attitude. I wonder if my family lawyers would help me destroy that school reputation. Momo mused thoughtfully. Damn, yeah Momo, you are damn cold. I like it. Kayoka snickered. Django was happy that Izuku has great friends to count on, just as he is with his Vod and Orvod. And whenever Katsuki's inferiority, superiority complex reared its ugly head, they could always count on each other. Sometimes they won, sometimes they lost. They grew together however and made sure to learn from their losses. HM, I should write this down on helping Bakugo with his problems, GRR. Ryo growled, thinking on his plans on giving him the anger management. At least, young Midoriya and young Django are learning on each fight, Tashinori said. Taking a loss doesn't mean much if anyone can learn from their mistakes. Momo decided to write that down and hold it to herself. Ever since the time she teamed up with Todoroki, she gained her confidence but it was good to write down what they learn here. While Izuku still had a small part of him that held out for Katsuki to grow up, he stayed realistic and realized that the blonde's decisions were his own. Unfortunately, Katsuki's influence over their peers was still great, especially due to his own explosion quirk, and as such, nobody really wanted to be friends with Izuku. For now, however, that was fine. He had Django and the voices inside his head to help him. Wow, does that make him sound insane? Yup, Izuku agreed to his counterpart. At least my voices in my head are sane. Right, the OFA users, feeling the thoughts of the ninth, glanced at each other wondering about it too. Anyways, all of that came to a head one fateful school day. Both Izuku and Katsuki tensed up, knowing what they were going to expect from that time. All right, it's your third year, and I have to give you all these career packets, but I'm pretty sure you all want to go to the hero course. Their teacher said, throwing papers into the air as the entire classroom started showing off their quirks. Izuku refrained, however, as the phrase that could describe his and Bakugo's relationship was on sight, said teen in true Bakugo fashion, let off an explosion to catch everyone's attention, and then loudly began to proclaim his own ambitions. Wow, he didn't even change much. Achako snorted. What did you say, Kirby? Read my lips, Bakugo. Achako challenged him. Django snorted. You sure picked well, Vod. He muttered to Izuku. Izuku instantly blushed, waving his arms. W. Wa, what are you saying, Django? Ah, young love, how precious they are. Kayana. Nimari squealed. Keep dreaming on, old hag. You snorted before yelping as she was hit with a snack. Shut your trap, you whore. Make me, you dominatrix bitch. Man, these people. Shino groaned, covering Koda's ears as much as Mirio doing the same to Iris. Aunt Shino, I can't hear the show. Koda complained as he tried to uncover his ears. Izuku was in the middle of writing down some questions and notes in his most recent hero journal over the newest hero that had just debuted, Mount Lady. It was only the fact that the last few years had given him great situational awareness that he pushed his desk forward while pulling his journal back and driving the desk into Katsuki's chest as he left off explosion. Ha ha ha, in your face, dummy. Django laughed before dodging an incoming fist. Wow, the kid was in my debut. I wonder what he wrote in those journeys of his. He amused thoughtfully. Have you seen what Midoriya writes in those, Shota? Hizashi asked. No, I haven't. But after this, I might ask him about that. Guf ka. Damn it, D-A-K-U. He screamed as Django appeared. Look who's talking, you feeling lucky. Punk. Django sneered as he got ready for a fight. Izuku immediately stood as well and the three were in a standoff. What's the meaning of this, Bakugo? Izuku asked tensely. The hell you think? Trying to join you and ruin my record. Get real. Tension are too high over here. Denki joked. Obviously he was going to dodge that if you were going to do what we expected you to do. Kayoka said, rolling her eyes. I like the confident Django. Mina chortled. Django, hearing that, didn't react but his ears were reddened in embarrassment. I still don't understand what's on his head. Shinzo pointed out in disgust. Ruin his record. What if Midoriya would have ended up as an underground hero? Would that also mean he's stealing his light? What a joke. Where I go has doesn't matter to you Bakugo. Get your head out of your ass and leave us alone. That's right, Deku-kun. Achako cheered. You can do it, Madabro. Ajiro added. What a man. Tetsu Tetsu agreed. Huh. You wanna start something D.E.K.U. Start something. No, but you know that we'll finish it. He replied with a cold glare. Sometimes it still hurt to see how far his old friend had fallen. Oof. Yosu cackled. Man, Midoriya knows how to give a speech. Itsuka said with a nod. I'm going to steal that for sure. Tagaru declared in glee. The three tensed, ready to fight then and there. But finally, their teacher interrupted and sent them back to their seats. What a coward that teacher. Subarava snorted. It seems that the teachers of that school barely pay attention to their students. Jiroda grunted in disapproval. I think it would be that they don't pay attention to their students. Hurry you corrected him with a frown. 
Later, once class was over, Izuku was putting this stuff away when a hand grabbed his shoulder. Bakugo smirked, but that soon fell off his face when another hand grabbed his wrist. Again, the boys were in a standoff, and all three were glaring at each other. Tommy, why can't you leave Green Bean alone? Satsuna asked incredulously. I wonder if this Bakugo is too centered on showing his superiority to Midori. Juzo wondered. From what we had seen, it could have been. Shihai agreed. Chi, you better not think about applying to UA. Deku, you and your useless quirk got no chance against me. Tatsuki sneered. As I said, screw off. You have no power over me, Bakugo. The unspoken any more rested between them. Bakugo's hand smoked, the beginning of an explosion begging to be released. But Izuku stared hard at him, already used to the pain. Kid, you should not be used to the pain of that explosion. Chiyo yelled in outrage. That kind of pain shouldn't be accounted for until they are past their high school years after many days of training. Not at that age. You should know, Bakugo, that using their quirk outside is considered illegal. Shota pointed him out. The only reason I can see that you weren't even reported for such actions is because of those professors. He hissed, as if saying professors was a venom that spat next to a box of kitties. Think of your actions before acting, Bakugo. Hizashi remarked as Katsuki reluctantly nodded. Damn it, I fucked up too much. Bakugo scoffed before heading towards the door. You know, if you really want to be a hero, how about you take a swan dive off the roof and pray for a more useful quirk? This time, it was Izuku, not Django, who lunged. Achako lunged at Katsuki and knocked the shit out of his face without warning. Shocking everyone at the sweet child of class of the fuck is wrong with you, asshole. You take for granted the lives of the people and you think that you can be a hero with that kind of attitude. You disgust me. Achako spat venomously, shocking even their teachers at such vulgarities coming out of her mouth. The only ones who didn't look shocked were Django, Kuma, and Mirko. My, my, Vod. Like I said, you really did well on picking her. Django chuckled. That sure is a Sin Naman moment for the Machai girl. Kuma snickered, his mouth full of popcorn. My, that girl sure has fire. Rumi chortled. Hey, Ruko, mind if I take your apprentice to teach some moves? No, you okay, Bakubro? Ajiro asked, helping him up. Yeah, I'm okay, shitty hair. Katsuki groaned, grabbing on his bloody nose. At least, I deserve that. Izuku and Django were walking home, the former bruised and burnt, the latter mostly bruised. Okay, I'm not complaining, but that's the first time I've ever seen you go on sight with that dicka. He didn't just insult me, he insulted you when you're the best thing that ever happened to me. You and the rest, well, once I finally meet them, I couldn't stand that. The two continued walking and Django smiled before he paused. This is why I'm saying that Midori Akun is a villain magnet, Kuma pointed out, drinking from the straw his soda. Katsuki gaped in shock when he saw this. While his attitude was surprising that he had the ball to fight back, he was more shocked when the manhole began expulsing the grotesque slush and attacked Izuku the first time. He still shuddered at the thought. Tashinori was the same as it was the moment he encountered young Midoriya for the first time. Yeah, that's pretty much. Django instantly agreed. Django, hey, am I lying? He snorted. Thought so. Do you hear that? A couple of meat sacks, shame I'll only need one. A sludge like being rose out of the sewers and attacked Django, quickly enveloping him and going down his throat. G A H I Z U K U R G. J A N G O. J A N G O. I'm right here, you know. Django deadpanned, shivering in disgust. Still though, that Atten villain was disgusting. I'm going to take a bath after this. The sludge villain threw out a tendril and smacked Izuku away as Django struggled. Acting quickly, Izuku called back Django and sent him to the minescape. The sludge that was in his body falling to the ground. What the? A teleportation quirk. That would have been so useful against him. Crap, I don't have time for this, you'll do. He said as he charged at Izuku. In a flash, however, Django reappeared and went for the eye. Yeah, everyone cheered. Over here Shabir. G-A-H. My eye. Lashing out he knocked Django into Izuku and both were knocked over. Man, that has to hurt. Yosu winced. At least they're fine. Right? Pony asked. The sewer lid popped. Not so fast. All might. Tashinori laughed in his trademark tone, buffing himself for five seconds before debuffing completely and coughing bloody muter. Was it really necessary? Mirai asked, mildly concerned. Tashinori simply hacked into a handkerchief with a thumbs up. All parties gasped. It's too late. Never fear, for I am here. The titan of a man rose from the sewers and cocked his fist back. Texas no, wait. Smash, smash. Everyone else joined the trademark punch except for the heroes before laughing in relief that both Izuku and Django were now safe. Man, that was bad for my heart. Ajiro laughed. You and me both. Denki snickered in agreement, as if the forces of nature were at his beck and call. All Might's fist punched forward and unleashed a windstorm so strong the villain was splattered away. Two boys could only stare in awe at seeing the greatest hero in Japan before them. My apologies young men. 
I didn't mean to get you involved with my work. Unfortunately, I'm new here, and this dastardly fellow evaded me in the sewer cistern. My most humble apologies. The hero smiled as he pulled the two up. Well, at least, this time I didn't pass out. Izuku muttered out. You passed out? Achako asked incredulously. W well. No need to fear, you're Raka. Tenya interrupted. I believe that he is now safe would be our first priorities. Quicker to get over his shock, Django was the first to respond. Eh, it's big deal all might. At least you saved us in time. That stuff was disgusting, Blake. Django coughed out some spit. While the dematerialization did help him get the sludge out of his system, it did nothing for the lingering taste. Mood. Izuku and Django grumbled out, making the Deku Squad laugh. Katsuki simply thought without anyone else to hear him. All Might nodded, and also slightly shuddered. He did more than his share of unwanted substances in his mouth. Turning to the other boy in front of him, just now he noticed they were identical in appearance, twins. He raised a brow at his silence. I mean, the first thing you would say or think when seeing two similar person would be that. Hant appointed an agreement. Many people nodded or affirmed that statement. Django turned and chuckled. Oh, don't mind him. He's just probably having a fangasm of epic proportions. Come on Vod, make something of yourself. He said while lightly tapping Izuku on the head. Said boy flushed and shook himself before stuttering and mumbling out an odd response. Finally gaining his bearings he smiled and bowed. Thank you for saving us. Everyone laughed at the reaction. Izuku included but more sheepish. Django cackled. Izuku punched him. Haha, well like he said, thanks for saving us. This is Izuku, and I'm Django. A pleasure to meet you both. Now if you'll excuse, I must put away this villain and get him to the authorities. All Might said as he turned and began piling sludge into a soda bottle. Let us help, All Might, least we can do. Django said as he and Izuku started to help. Django took a certain vindictive pleasure in throwing All Might the eyeballs. Django Kun, that is no way to handle an eyeball like that and throwing it to All Might. Tenya shouted to the first clone. Relax, I wanted my own revenge and I like being a prankster. Django scoffed as he waved him off. You would have done the same if a villain attacked you or your brother. Tenya tensed immediately which Izuku and Shoto matched but they quickly hit it before anybody could have noticed it. Only Enji grunted in annoyance at that memory, but didn't see their reactions. Django did notice quickly his and their reactions, frowning at them in confusion. Before he could answer, Tenya grabbed his glasses and adjusted them. All right, my apologies. He replied forcefully as he sat down. Now Django's interest was piqued on what did those three had done that acted on that way. Maybe he should wait and see these shows to discover their secret. So young ones, are you two planning to be heroes? Yep, planning to go for you. Eh, hey. ah, my old alma mater then. Well, I certainly hope you two make it. Now if you'll excuse me, I must be off. Have a nice day. All Might yelled out as he jumped into the air, leaving two smiling boys. Now that's different from what happened. Izuku admitted. What do you mean, Vod? Django asked in total curiosity. Izuku tensed as maybe it was better to keep his mouth shut. Uh, it's nothing of concern. He lied miserably. Django and the Deku squad, and few others, squinted their eyes and stared at Izuku. Vod, what are you not telling us? On the teacher's side, every hero was staring at Tashinori who looked the same as Izuku, avoiding their gazes and watching the floor with interest. Tashinori, what is the brat talking about? Soraheko demanded. Uh, Izuku may have not grabbed his leg as All Might shot out on the air and almost dropped during his jump. Kuma declared nonchalantly, which in turn, everyone glared at their respective target. Hey, hey, hey. Both current users of OFA shrieked in panic. I'm totally rubbing this into Bakugo's face. Yeah, that you should. Shinso snorted in agreement. What did you say, I bags? That you're stupid and jealous. Django sneered. You're dead after this. Wait, no. Izuku fell to his knees in shock and dismay. His life was over as he knew it. Django quickly reached him and asked what was wrong. I forgot to ask for an autograph. Og, Izuku, take your priorities straight, Midoriya Khan. Tenya chastised him while everyone else laughed. Walking home with a depressed Izuku, Django called in Ko and let them know they were on the way home. The sounds of explosions and fire, however, brought the spark back into Izuku's eyes and quickly ran over there leaving Django behind. Dank Farak, Izuku. He yelled out and ran after him. Izuku, Katsuki and Tashinori tensed when they recognized that moment. How could it be? This time I didn't grab on All Might's leg so it shouldn't be possible for the bottle to fall. Izuku panicked inwardly. Fuck. They are going to see that moment. Katsuki thought fearfully. Is it normal for the kid to stumble upon a crime scene or something? Rumi asked. Not that we know of it. Hazashi answered truthfully. But problem child gets into any problem. Even in his day off. Shota grumbled at the times he got called for those situations. Reaching the scene of the crime. They both were shocked at seeing the same villain that had attacked them loose and causing so much destruction, heroes around him helpless to do anything. Man, what a day. Shinji groaned in recollection of that day. 
But, he was now dreading when she reminded on what happened after that situation. Didn't we scold a kid that day? Shinisuke paled at the reminder of that. Oh shit, damn that backdraft of not being here to get chewed up with us. Shinji cursed at the luckiness of that hero. What the hell is happening? We helped All Might put that thing away. How did escape? The bottle must have flown out. Or maybe his pants ripped. I doubt that they were made for going at mock stupid high speed. The two boys made their way to the front of the crowd and were still in shock. It's been like this for a while. Wasn't All Might going after that guy? All Might. Where is he then? I was hurt that day and I had used most of my time limits at the time. Tashinori defended himself. Relax, Yagi, nobody could have blamed you about that. Hizashi said. Although, David mused. You could have at least wore more practical pants than those cargos. While the pockets are deep, with the speed you were going, there was a possibility that it could have flung out of it without you noticing. That could have been a possibility. Mirai nodded in agreement. Well, at least there is a possibility that it wasn't Izuku's fault. Kuma thought, munching on a chocolate bar. They continued to murmur and the fires continued to grow. The sludge monster turned and Izuku's eyes met Bakugo's. Wow, Bakugo looks scared in that one. Denki pointed out nervously. Bakugo-san showing nervousness is not something you would have expected. Momo agreed. Katsuki could only grumble at the sight of himself looking scared. He wasn't scared of that bastard and he had managed to fight him. Or was he? In a burst of motion, he blasted through the crowd and tape line, sprinting as fast as he could towards him regardless of the heroes calling him to come back. Dank F-E-R-R-I-K, I-Z-U-K-U, come back here. Django yelled as he ran towards Izuku. You too, not again. What is with you and moving without thinking? Kuma snickered. While heroic, you're going to be hurt one of these days. Agreed, everyone else said in unison. Only those that knew him well. Izuku simply blushed but was determined to be better. Izuku without any thought for himself threw his backpack and nailed the same eye that Django had grabbed earlier. The impact stunning the villain long enough for Bakugo to breathe. With a gasp and a cough, Bekugo demanded to know why he was there. I don't know, my body just moved on its own. You're an ass but I can't let you die. Izuku yelled as he started tugging on Bakugo's arms. What a way to shout him that he was saving him and cursing. Mina cackled in amusement with Satsuna. Young Midoriya, you shouldn't curse like that. Tashinori shouted. Mirio sighed in relief that he at least managed to cover Iri's ears on time as Shino. We are going to need some earmuffs that censor curse words at this rate. Hey, that's a thought. Koma mused in consideration. The villain raised a tendril and prepared to smack it down only for a rock to hit his eye and distract him. Screaming in pain, he paid no attention to the second boy running down towards him. Izuku, duck, Django cried, jumping over his brother. He took advantage of the opportunity given to him and delivered a well-placed dropkick on Bakuga, serving not only to know him out of the sludge villain's grasp but also make him hack up whatever sludge had gone down his throat. If he took a certain vindictive pleasure in doing so through a dropkick, well, who was going to say anything? What the hell, Deku number two? Katsuki demanded incredulously. My job, stupid. Django sneered challengingly. At least it was a quick thinking on making young Bakugo hack the sludge out of his throat. Tashinori admitted begrudgingly. I would have done the same. Soraheko snorted. Don't do that, Soraheko. Nana chastised him. The sludge villain had regained his bearing and lashed out once more on Izuku. This time, however, it was stopped by a large arm with a familiar face. Damn, that villain is fucked up. Denki cackled. Kaminari. Kayoka chastised him, stabbing him with her jacks. Language. We have kids here. You have learnt well, Jiru. Momo nodded proudly. Don't tempt me, yeah Momo. She snorted, her jacks returning. We will corrupt you one of these days, yeah Momo. Toru wiggled in a tenebrous way, which was more cute than scary. All might. It seems we meet again boys, and let me say you're truly an inspiration. All stood in awe as the man effortlessly held back the villain. Now let me finish things up. Detroit he cocked his fist back and the sludge villain's eyes widened in fear. N-O-O-O. Smash. Once again the villain was scattered across the street and fast winds buffeted the crowd. Izuku, Django, and Katsuki ended up being pinned to the ground and a tornado reached the sky. Just as soon as the wind started did they end, and it began to rain. Man, that was impressive. Hanta whistled in awe. That's manly. Anjiro and Tetsu Tetsu chorused in a manly way. As everybody began to exclaim at All Might's power. Izuku couldn't help but look at the man in front of him, standing tall with his fist raised high, steam wafting off of his body, blood dribbling down his chin. Something was wrong. Deku Tective Midoriya on the scene. Mina shouted, earning many laughs. Still though, I think Midoriya-kun discovered a part of your secret, Yagi-kun. Nezu noted, sipping on his delicious tea. So it seems. Tashinori sighed. Later, after getting scolded, commended by heroes for interfering Izuku was walking home with Django. Although they'd had an odd interaction with Bakugo that they both decided to just ignore. The three heroes that were on that day sighed in relief that they didn't scold him much since this version of Midoriya had a quirk or so. 
Django called him a discount sundier. TFF, discount sundier. Sen snorted in his hand. What was that, driller? Katsuki roared. You, you discount sundier. Kosai snickered. Ijiro and Denki quickly grabbed Katsuki before he could lunge at the bastards laughing at them. Izuku had to take a deep breath to process that one. Both were startled at the appearance of All Might. All Might. Haha, yes, I am here to be L-E-G-H. Wow, how much All Might Sensei would have spat blood countlessly? Denki wondered aloud. Dot 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 you know, that is an excellent question. Momo admitted reluctantly. At least you have grown a brain cell or two. Kayoka joked. Hey. Oh crap. The now skeletal man said as the three stared at each other. You know, I suspected that you were hurt, but to this extent. Izuku questioned while tilting his head. That's the expression you should be wearing now. Minoru shouted incredulously. I think that if the people thought less, it might have been an assuming expression. Meshura thought aloud. That's all you gotta say. F-R-E-A-K-I and All Might just S-M-E-R-G-H. Django was cut off as Izuku covered his face with his hand and held him down. Oh now that's the expression everyone should expect. Nejire said with a sagely nod. I agree on that one. Tamaki said in agreement but shyly. Tahaha. That's All Might for ya. Mirio chortled. Keep it down, Django. I seriously doubt that this is something that should be yelled out Dikut. Izuku said as he held his struggling clone. Understandable. Everyone deadpanned. Come on, let's go somewhere more private. Follow me, sir. Izuku pointed with his head and dragged Django who at that point was more or less just following along in shock. You seem to be very unfazed, young man. Oh believe me. Hell Herm. I am very much in shock and panicking but it's yet to fully register. The appropriate reaction. Mina nodded. Mirai groaned in his hands. Tashinori. Learn to know when to reveal that kind of information on strangers. Well, excuse me. Mr. I can hide in plain sight in a three-piece suit not everyone can hide like yourself. Tashinori huffed indignantly. Agreed. The top-ranking heroes said in unison. They ended up heading to a nearby park. Fortunately, at this time, there weren't any people. At first, they simply sat in silence, as both boys stared at the emaciated man in front of them. How long? Izuku asked first. All might and wasn't it jarring to call this man that name, sighed before replying. It's been about five years. I got wounded, and the subsequent surgeries and recovery period turned me to this. Everyone grimaced when they discovered that the responsible of that injury was that villain from Kamino Wards. No villain you've ever fought could have done that much damage to you. Even Toxic Chainsaw only managed to give you a few bruises and make your nose bleed. This was something else, wasn't it? A fight that wasn't publicized. A villain so strong only you could have had a chance of beating. Am I right? Izuku analyzed and asked, startling the older man. Whoa, Greeny, that is some analysis there. Sitsuna whistled in awe. Oh oh, it's nothing mostly. It's just a hobby. Izuku said in embarrassment. Hobby, my cloned ass. Django scoffed under his breath. Nezu seemed to be perked up at the idea of seeing those notes which if the few teachers and heroes glanced at the principal, they could have seen his eyes glinting in a dangerous light. Shota decided to hide Izuku before Nezu could find him and Tashinori would gladly help him too. That's right, you wouldn't by chance have some analysis or mental quirk, would you? Izuku chuckled but shook his head. Nah, that's all him. He's a hero nerd through and through. Django pointed his head towards his brother with a smirk but that soon gave away to a more somber expression. Enji was now interested in the kid that was similar to All Might. While he was infuriated that the kid was similar to him, Midoriya has the intelligence to analyze quickly without even using a quirk. As someone who have some experience as a detective or something like that, he was now curious on what he had written on those notebooks. A few other heroes were also curious about those notebooks. But I'm guessing that's also the reason why you're only active for a few hours a day. Huh. All Might nodded sadly. I lost my stomach and half my respiratory system, and right now I can only do hero work for three hours a day. Dank Farrick. Django muttered. Three hours a day. Wow, that's impressive with a wound like that. Rumi admitted in awe. It is a sacrifice that most of us should learn from. Suguo cried out for All Might's awesomeness and sacrifice. Yes, I agree. Yasuhiro nodded in respect for the former number one hero. I couldn't say I would like that, losing my stomach. Teishiro muttered, patting his fat stomach. Heroism is something we need to sacrifice ourselves to save others. Shinya muttered with his arms crossed in a cool ninja way. Izuku began to softly weep. Why, All Might? You could have retired. Sure things would be difficult, but we'd manage. Why hurt yourself like this? All Might gave a soft smile in return. Because when I became a hero, I made a promise to help others and keep their smiles alive though my own. I became a hero because I knew that Japan needed a symbol of peace. And I smile through the pain because every day I continue working is another person I can save. He chuckled. And after all, it is because of my resolve that we stand here today. The students were in awe at such declaration of the former number one hero. They now felt that they should do it better to make the previous generation of heroes proud. 
The other heroes nodded or hummed in satisfaction that All Might had sacrificed much to hold the peace of Japan. Nana was smiling proudly that her successor held for so long to create a better world, and she felt that he couldn't be able to show the same resolve as Tashinori. But maybe, he could have been better even if he wasn't the number one hero at the time. He was only the top-ranked hero because he retired, and he felt bitter that the title was given to him like nothing. His sacrifice couldn't be compared with the wrongdoings he had done. Taoya, Izuku smiled and bowed. Thank you, not just for saving us, but for everything you've done, All Might. Django also bowed in turn and All Might was touched by their actions. Tashinori was also touched by it. But, I have to ask, why did you come after us? I came here because I was inspired by your actions, young man. I was there in the crowd but felt that I could not do anything because of my time was up. Then I overheard you saying to that boy, your body moved on its own right. She, this idiot's always getting into trouble before his mind even catches up. Django chuckled out while punching Izuku. Izuku rolled his eyes and returned Django's punch. Mene, Izuku said, giving him a stink eye. Am I wrong? Django challenged him, laughing with his friends and Vod. That is one of the hallmark traits of a true hero, and starts the story for many. I am here today because I was inspired to act by you, to push beyond my limits. You reminded me of what it meant to be a hero, and for that I'm thankful. Izuku was freely crying in joy at having been an inspiration to his idol. Even Django couldn't help but tear up a bit. His vod was definitely on the way to greatness. Hey, like a title drop. Hanta pointed out. Shush. Achako shushed him. This next part I will tell you, however, is very important and extremely classified. Tell me, young man, how well do you trust your friend here? At this, the both of them started to laugh, which was a good sign of All Might. Everyone else also laughed at the implication, Tashinori included. Ha. Hey. Well All Might, I think it'd be hard not to trust my own quirk. Yes, they seem to be the best of. Wait, what? Ha. Hey. That is one expression we should have expected. Ken chuckled on his blocky hand. Can't blame with when he doesn't know about it. Nimari giggled. I'm sorry. He was very befuddled right now. Allow us to introduce ourselves. I'm Midoriya Izuku and this is Midoriya Django Izu. Django tried to protest. No matter how much you deny it you're still a Midoriya, Django. Anyway, technically, he is my quirk. What do you mean technically? I am your quirk. Stop interrupting me. My quirk is called clone. I can create clones of myself but so far I've been limited to manifesting Django. I've got about a couple thousand in my head, but they're asleep and I can't bring them out yet. A couple thousand. So yeah, whatever you got to say, you can say it to us. Alright then. Let me tell you about my quirk, it's called one for all. What is exactly this one for all quirk? Keigo asked curiously. Tashinori and Izuku were sweating in distress that they had to now reveal the secret of their quirk. Mind if I take it over, you too. Fuma offered, having paused the show, which the two of them glanced at him then at each other. Tashinori shook his head. I'm not going to ask how you know about this but you mentioned that you were a fan so I think you know more of it than us. Fuma shrugged. Yes, I know so far on how the quirk was formed and how it works. Mirai was now intrigued at the source of information this individual knew of. The OFA users glanced at each other but shrugged, letting the man to do it on their behalf. You can explain them if you wish, Shigaraki Yoichi said. Kuma nodded. Okay, here is the basic story. At the dawn of quirks, two centuries before the present time, there were two brothers that one was who determined to shift the power of the quirked and the quirkless at the time for the many disagreements between these two factions. The older brother wanted the power to protect the quirked individuals, but his methods weren't what the little brother desired. So, trying to show him what his views were, the older brother planted a quirk on the younger brother. But what he didn't know was that the younger brother had a quirk all along. But it was a transferable quirk and since the older brother added a stockpiling quirk on the younger brother, it had come to the point that both quirks merged to become the now named one for all. Meanwhile, the older brother took the name of the cruelest villain of history, all for one. Everyone tensed at such declaration of the history of both quirks and to think that both quirks were related to one another. Here standing next to me are the previous users of One for All. Kuma presented the people standing next to him. Hi, my name's Shigaraki Yoichi. He began, earning many gasps on recognizing the family name. Yes, I'm sorry on behalf of my brother but there isn't much I can do since I'm dead. I'm the original user of One for All. The next ones are the second and third users of the quirk, Kuma said. And before you ask, they won't give you all their names even if you begged them. You know us well. The second hummed. Yes, I'm the second user of one for all and my quirk used to be called Gearshift. I'm the third. And my quirk is called Va Jin. Not going to explain your quirks, Tensei asked in curiosity as they didn't continue their explanation. The ninth hadn't earned it yet so no. The second shot down other questions. Hey, Bakubro, doesn't the second looks like you? Ijiro asked. Shut up, shitty hair. The third chuckled under his breath as the second rolled his eyes. I'm the fourth user named Shinomori Hikage and my quirk was Danger Sense. Hikage said. 
My quirk is self-explanatory so there is no need for an explanation. Yo, I'm Banjo de Goro and I'm the fifth user. De Goro grinned as a black tendril shot out from his wrist, making the class A and B tense in recognition. As you can see, my quirk is called Black Whip and my quirk is mostly controlled by my emotions so if anyone decided to poke the hornet nest, well. He chuckled darkly, making the students nervous, mostly Shinso and Monoma as they were nervous since they were responsible of Izuku getting mad. I'm in. Just N. Mina asked childishly. N. He repeated flatly. And I'm the sixth user and my quirk is smokescreen. As the fourth, it is self-explanatory. Nana came out with a smile. I'm Shimura Nana, the seventh user of One for All and I used to be Toshi's old mentor. My quirk is float. I'm not going to mention the family connected between her and Krusty Lips yet. Kuma decided for now. Yagi Tashinori here is the eight and Midoriya Izuku is the nine. Both quirkless. On that revelation, everyone stared at them in disbelief except for Django who simply was surprised and Katsuki since he had known of it since ever. Everyone shouted that both of the best hero and student of Yui used to be quirkless. Why did you tell them about that, young Kuma? Tashinori yelled incredulously. Kuma sighed and looked at them solemnly, which surprised them and everyone else at all. Because this is the part that is important and something to say to a certain idiot. He walked among the group before he stood in front of Sasaki Murai who was surprised that centered to him. First of all, you are an idiot to assume that Izuku here was unworthy of the quirk. He declared as everyone else gasped in shock. The one for all is like a sentient quirk which holds the previous users. While, yes, Mirio is a capable young man that could bring that kind of strength, the quirk itself is a double-edged sword. Murai instead of getting angry, looked more confused than ever. WH what? What do you mean by that? The reaction was that the fourth, Hikage, looked at Degoro incredulously. You haven't told the next users about my situation. What were you thinking, Banjo? Kuma blinked in confusion at the reaction of the fourth, not expecting completely on how he would have reacted. E but, Master, I didn't know much at the time and you simply gave me the quirk without telling me. Hikage groaned as he rubbed his face, grumbling profanities before sighing. What I am about to tell you is completely important. Apart from the other users, I wasn't killed by all for one. I died before I fought him. Everyone gaped in surprise at the confession and before anybody could say anything, he continued. The thing is, I got the quirk when I was 22. I knew that all for one was strong so I decided to seclude myself for the next 18 years to train both quirks, cultivating it so that my next successor would have a better chance defeating him. But, I died when I reached my 40 seconds. Shota froze at the implication of that as many others. Are you saying, is Izuku, Midoriya going to die by the time he reaches 40? Was not said but was implied. No, no, nothing like that. Please, calm down. Kuma decided to stop their panic attack diplomatically. Well yes, the reason behind that Shinomori-san died on his 40 seconds and nobody could have known the fact since most of the users were killed before their 40 seconds. Tashinori was far past his 40 seconds but he has yet died from it. Why is that? Now everyone were thinking at the explanation before Momo's eyes widened in realization. It's because he's quirkless. Hey, everyone gaped at her as she slowly turned to Tashinori and then at Izuku. The previous users had at least one quirk but adding one for all must have put a much risk in their body that it could have been the reason that the fourth user succumbed before the normal rate of mortality. Momo explained, but since both All Might and Midoriya don't have one, their bodies can sustain the quirk as it wouldn't imp them to adapt the quirk into their bodies. Nicely done, Yeyurazu san Bravo. Kuma clapped his hands in confirmation. Yes, think of it like this. All previous user had their cups filled with their quirks but since they added one for all into their system, they've been cultivating for so long that their bodies couldn't hold no more that their life force was depleted and died of old age. But as quirkless, their cups are empty so there is no problem for them to fill them up and strengthening their quirks. Django nodded at the explanation before paling in horror. But then, Vod, everyone else paled too as it could also mean that the Izuku they were watching could also die when he reaches his 42nd. I don't know for sure that it could be the same, Kuma said, quickly trying to calm them down. As in the multiverse, there could be a chance that Shinomori-san had fought all for one despite reaching his 40 seconds and it wouldn't happen to the Izuku we are watching or not. The multiverse is a difficult place to know and we aren't sure if it could be the same. Django breathed in and out to calm down. His Orvat won't die of old age. He hoped. Murai couldn't believe it too. He wished that one for all would have been passed to him. But if in the end, it would kill him by the time he reached his 40 seconds or before that, it would have been his greatest mistake. He didn't know if it was fate that Tashinori met Midoriya but it seems that he could now believe on what he had known. So, since everyone knows about the important quirk, let's get back to our seats and continue with the show, HM. Okay, did he expect to be part of one of the greatest kept secrets in history? No, TFF, that was funny. Denki coughed in his fist. Was he honored? Yes, yes, I am. Izuku nodded. Tashinori beamed at hearing that. Did he regret agreeing to this insane training plan? 
Most definitely. Training montage. The two manly heroes shouted in unison. But a chance to be All Might's successor was too good to pass up, along with the potential to boost his quirk and access more clones. While it did feel like cheating at the beginning, Django was quick to put a stop to it. As far as I see it, heroes use any and all tools at their disposal. If this helps you out, it doesn't matter. All that matter at the end are the people you save. That was great way to put it. As Ashi pointed out, yes, it is a rational conclusion. Shota replied with a nod. Django, hearing that, blushed. Of course, that didn't mean that it didn't suck to be lugging around All Might on top of a fridge. I think I made it an inch. Minoru decided to keep quiet when Kuma suddenly stared at him with his cold amethyst eyes. Suyu, who had been preparing to smack him, noticed the exchange and nodded in satisfaction. Come on, young Midoriya. Let's move it. Oh well. Nothing ventured. Nothing gained. Of course thanks to the workouts he and Django did, they were physically fit, just simply not strong enough. All Might was working with him to develop more muscles so that he could handle one for all without busting his limbs. Dot 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 what? Was the general question. Are you telling me? Us. That there was a possibility that Deku Khan would have his limbs exploded. Achako shrieked in disbelief. I am concerned. Tenya grimaced. Don't worry everyone. Young Midoriya is doing his best during his training so there is no need to be alarmed. Tashinori quickly stopped the panic the students were wearing. I hope that you get to live later, Yagi. Shota growled since if he was told beforehand about Midoriya's situation, he might have been more understandable with him. He had a feeling it'd be a lot worse if he hadn't worked out. Izuku grimaced in shame that he hadn't thought to do that, to prepare Yue. He needed more than his brains. He should have prepared at least something. And it would have been much easier when he got one for all from All Might and cleaning that beach. Soon enough, however, he and Django did it, and Dagaba Municipal Beach was rendered clean once more. You cleaned that place, Mina shouted incredulously. My family and I visit that place ever since the beach was cleaned up. I thought the government at least had the decision to clean the place. It seems that they did not. Momo hummed. That place had two towels of trash to one end to another. Katsuki yelled. How long did it take you? Uh, ten months. Three months to spare too. Lucky me. Izuku grumbled in envy. Django laughed. He had help, I, e, me, so there is no shame about that. Izuku accepted reluctantly that point of view. Standing before All Might and bathed by the rays of the early morning sun, Izuku and Django had their heads high with pride at their accomplishment. Both of you have made me very proud. I am truly glad to have met you all those months ago. You have rendered a great service not only to the community but to yourselves and your future careers. Yes, that means you too young Django. All Might said as he plucked a hair from his head. Django smiled brightly, tears pricking the edges of his eyes. Izuku was smiling brightly. Fortunately, tears were absent. You should be proud of it, Madabro. Ajiro cheered. You too, Django. Hanta grinned. The two Midoriyas smiled, almost bawling their tears. Damn these Midoriyas jeans. Django quickly wiped the tears before he bawled like any Midoriya. Tashinori chuckled at the reaction of those two. He was really proud of them to have done the impossible and worked their dreams on. Now remember this, both of you, something I was once told, something that you receive because you're lucky and something you are given because you are recognized are different in essence. Take that to heart. I see you have taken your lessons well, Toshi. Nana grinned proudly on her semi-adopted son. Tashinori blushed as being told and reminded by his mentor, and maybe pseudo-mother. Sorohiko simply shook his head, not even hiding his grin. The both nodded and All Might extended his hand. Now, Izuku puffed up in apprehension. How exactly could a quirk be passed on? Eat this. Everyone paused, boggled on how to process this information. Kuma sighed before he covered his ears. Here we go again. Ihhh. Yuck. Is this how two-century quirk is passed on? That's disgusting. Rumi spat. I think I lost my appetite. Tashiro muttered as he left his takoyakis down as few others were in agreement, leaving their food down. Tamaki was following behind as his mentor when he was about to eat his ramen even if they were going to get soggy. That sight was not going to let him eat for the moment. I'm sorry but what? Django asked in pure disbelief as Izuku was currently frozen. In order to get my power you have to ingest some of my DNA that's how it works. All Might sheepishly said while rubbing the back of his head. Well, never took you for a pedo, All Might. P-F-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-A. Everyone laughed at the thought of All Might being called a pedophile. Oh, Kami. My sides. Rumi cackled, holding her guts. W-H what a way. To crack a joke for that, Django. Hazashi wheezed, holding himself with Nimiri who was also about to keel over from laughter. Shota was hiding inside his scarf, hiding the fact that he was about to laugh like the rest of them, holding with his willpower to cackle like madmen. Izuku could only hold himself from laughing about his mentor's plight except to hide his face with his hands as his shoulders shivered. Django joined the others by laughing at his own joke. Sorohiko looked close to keel over if he was laughing and rolling on the ground was an indication. 
Even the past OFA users were either laughing or holding themselves. Tashinori looked really ashamed to be considered a pedophile. He had standards. B-L-A-G-H. Said man coughed up blood in shock. What? I mean, here you are having a boy take in some of your DNA after preparing him for months. Seems kinda sus to me. Django shrugged while All Might looked at him in disbelief. Izuku was still frozen. I mean, I guess that's why you picked the both of us up. Okami, I. I can't stop. I can't stop laughing. Mana wheezed in pain. Katsuki leaned down, coughing madly. Django, you're the best. H-O-H-O-H-A. Denki cackled. His eye was twitching. Must have a twin fetish too. AI what? No, that's not poof the sheer shook actually caused All Might to transform back to his skinny form. It had the added effect of making him look like an understuffed plush doll. Noticing Django's barely concealed chuckles made him scowl. Very funny, young Django. Tashinori actually scowled at said person. My bad. Django apologized. Not as he kept chuckling with the others. Django started to cackle. It was too much for him to handle. Finally, however, he plucked the hair from All Might's hand and popped open Izuku's jaw before shoving it down his throat. Og hey. Re. J-J-A-N-G-O. Blurg. Nope. Close your mouth, do what All Might wants you to do, and swallow. Don't say it like that. All Might hissed. If this is All Might's embarrassing hours, I'm totally enjoying it. You giggled. Shinisuke sucked the air greedily to try to calm himself. M me too. And G was enjoying the most of All Might's rotten luck of being dissed in such context. Finally forced to swallow. Izuku shuddered in revulsion after the last feelings of nausea left him. He could even feel nausea from his brothers in the mindscape. Well, now that that's done, let's get something to wash that down. Unless you want the taste of Old Spice to stay in your mouth. Django remarked as he started to walk up the stairs. How do you know what shampoo I use? All Might. I can smell it from here. Plus, it's like the most American thing you could do. Westabu. He mumbled out. Tashinori sputtered indignantly. I am not. Yes, you do. Izashi affirmed. I worked in a few commercials from them. Nimari shrugged. The smell is your tell. I can smell it from my office. Nezu stated with Ryo nodded in agreement. Sorry, Tashinori, even in the police station it smells. Nayamasa stated. Traitors. All Might could only sputter. What happened to the nice young man who respected his every word and stared at him in awe? He was starting to doubt if clone should even be the right term to describe Izuku's quirk. They certainly weren't identical personality-wise. Soon enough, however, they moved along to catch up with Django and deal with the aftertaste. Yeah, it probably would have been better to skip the old spice today. As you should. Django sneered. Young Django. A few hours later, and they were back on the beach ready to test out Izuku's new power and see if it could help out with clone. All right then, let's give her a whirl. Calling upon the power is simple. Just clench your butt cheeks, and from the depths of your heart yell out a smash. Tashinori as well as Izuku looked down when everyone gave them a pointy look. That doesn't help the case, all might, sir. Tenya declared, making Tashinori gulp and be nervous. Nana decided to keep her mouth shut. I don't know for sure, but I wonder if the past users of OFA could have at least written something else rather than that phrase. Kuma scoffed. The past users simply looked embarrassed. You're really not helping your case there, all might. Django pointed out with a deadpan expression. Izuku just had his face in his hands, lightly shaking his head. I mean, first the ingesting of DNA. Forcefully too that was you. Now you're talking about butt cheeks and smashing. Shut up, Django. Izuku whispered out. You're the worst. Izuku grumbled into his hands. You love me and you can't lie about it. Django chuckled. All Might's grin became more and more strained until he finally had enough. All right, all right, I get it, let's just move on. He mumbled out. He then motioned to Izuku and gave a wave of his hand. Just, just go, young Izuku. All Might used cheer. It's not effective. Denki started, holding his laugh. Django used this. It's super effective. Hanta finished before both of them laughed as few others. Izuku felt for him, he really did. There was a reason why it was on site between Django and Bakugo, and it wasn't the fights. Izuku walked forward to the edge of the beach and looked inside himself. At first, he couldn't feel anything, but soon he saw it. A spark inside him that quickly grew to a roaring inferno. Cocking his fist back, he pivoted and moved forward. Sma up. Izuku stumbled and black out as a cacophony erupted in his head. The last things he heard were All Might and Django coming to his aid. Oof, that must have hurt. Kyoka said in sympathy. Yeah, Koji signed an agreement. At first, it was dark, and while he could see it was as if he was looking through a blindfold, the slightest bit of light piercing through. Not yet, but one day. Honestly, Toshi, clench your butt cheeks and yell out smash. It does sound like something a pedophile would smack. Oh, wake up, ninth, you will see us again soon. These voices, they don't, sound like me. 
Izuku thought as he continued to stare in the darkness. Wake up, Orvad. And he did. Everyone blinked in confusion at such short encounter. It seems that Ninth managed to hold a bit of a connection with the rest of us. Hikage remarked. I'm somehow embarrassed that Toshi said that. None aside. And the pedophile thing too. Smack. Shut it, Banjo. It was the same like that, Midoriya. Shinzo asked. Well, no. The first time I encountered them was when we fought in the sport festival. Izuku replied. Shinzo's eyes widened in realization. My quirk got you forcefully into your mindscape and maybe that's why you got out of my control. Yeah, I didn't know at first. Izuku admitted. That's so like you. Shinzo snorted. Izu, Izuku. He heard and he opened his eyes, focusing. He was met with All Might's worried face in an unfamiliar room. Oh no, Django was right. You even took me to your house. Izuku deliriously mumbled out. H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-
Django said as Izuku did some fight training with All Might. Because of this I sincerely recommend changing your quirk name, cause clone isn't going to cut it. He pulled out from behind a long rifle, a shorter carbine, and a pair of pistols. Uo, look at those babies. May shouted in glee to finally showing something entertaining. Achako, Tenya, and Majima paled at the thought of giving her those weapons to be modified. They suddenly had the look of Vietnam War passing through their eyes. Wow, so my quirk makes weapons too. That is, slightly concerning. It seems that either there is more to your quirk than meets the eye or one for all has already boosted it to incorporate other military-related items. Were there any signs of vehicles? All Might asked as he crossed his arms in concern. One man army, Shoto muttered out. That is a scary Midoriya if it was. Mizo said. That would be too opus. Denki complained. So far no. But another thing I've noticed is that the clones are awake. Ever since the blackout though they've been unable to break through, they've started taking the time to train. Especially with the weapons available. Django said as he set them down on a small table that was set to the side. They look different than standard weaponry. They don't look like they fire any type of ballistics. All Might noted as he inspected them. That's cause they don't. Look, Django said as he grabbed a pistol and shot at one of the walls. A bright blue bolt of energy fired out and impacted leaving a hole with a scorch mark. Oh, so it is energy based. That has many possibilities that these weapons could be used and not leaving anything like bullet shells, May said as she wrote the models of those weapons. The only thing that can be placed as those blue bolts of energy and the scorch marks. Is someone worried that Hatsum chan is going to build one of those? Suyu voiced her concerns. U.S. Achako and Tenya shrieked in terror. Majima could only sigh into his hands, expecting that her problem child would do many damages in the building rooms. Okay, that is certainly very dangerous, not exactly suitable for hero work. Snipes bullets don't even do that much damage. All Might said as they inspected the hole. It went over a meter through regular concrete, and most likely would penetrate at least a quarter of a meter through other reinforced materials. Perhaps less if it was metals, but still, that is really dangerous. Toru whistled at the dangerous guns he was watching at. I hope that those have some non-lethal figuration or else I need to check on them. Majima said. I can reduce the settings. Django said while fiddling with the pistol. A few other shots each showed less and less damage until oddly enough, a ring of energy came out and did no damage at all. Huh, huh, everyone said their confusion. Well, I think I won't be needed then, Majima declared. Huh, I guess this is the lowest setting, I wonder, Django said before turning and shooting all might. J-J-A-N-G-O. Izuku cried out as the man stumbled and fell on his rear. Wow, Django literally didn't even hesitate to shoot at the number one hero. Mina whistled. J-A-N-G-O Khan. That was unresponsible of you to shoot All Might S-E-N-S-E-I. Tenya chastised him. Relax, it was the lowest setting and it wouldn't have killed him. Django shrugged. Besides, would you have preferred me to shoot at Izuku? Tenya tensed before sitting quietly without being able to formulate a retort. All Might groaned, somewhat disoriented but still conscious and poofing back to his skinny form. Raising a hand to his head in an attempt to assuage the headache he had he lightly glared at Django. A little more warning next time. He sarcastically asked before standing. It seems that that setting is a stun setting. Were it anybody else they'd be out like a light. As it is, I really don't want to transform right now. All I can say is that if you're planning on using those guns, you'll have to take a certification course with Snipe before being allowed for fieldwork and use only the stun setting. He then forced himself back to his bigger form. Feeling like a good 15 minutes got knocked out of him he stretched a bit before fully facing the both of them. HM, a stun gun. Perfect for quick takedowns. Shota contemplated before a quick thought passed through his mind. Hazashi shivered in terror when Shota gave him the grin of death. I quote LL be good. The students of class A shivered too since they knew their teacher enough to know that he would not hesitate to shoot them with the stun setting notwithstanding. I mean it. Unless absolutely necessary, such as a life or death scenario, use only the stun setting. All right. Yes, sir. Of course All Might. Thanks for being my test dummy though. All Might grumbled at the remark but acquiesced. They continued training trying to figure out a way to get Izuku to handle at least a piece of one for all before the exams. You know, if you ever get a handle of this, it would be interesting to see if you can buff up your entire body like all mine. Django commented offhandedly as he continued working on his marksmanship. He'd taken a liking to some unique pistols he'd found in the armory and some other equipment. His comment though made Izuku pause before he slapped his face. Izuku also understood and groaned that in this version, he had a quick help to have him understand the usage of one for all. It took him a visit to Gran Torino to finally understand how to use it but here, the Izuku could do it before the entrance exam. I'm so envious of myself. He groaned into his palms. I'm such a dickhead. He groaned out. As you are. Katsuki snorted. Yeah, and, I've been using OFA like I use clone, but it's different. When I summon you I just focus on a single part or place and boom, you're there. But one for all is different, I need to focus everywhere. 
He focused, and sure enough, sparks started to come off his body, veins of reddish energy crisscrossed his skin, and his eyes glowed. Strange way of thing but it is helping him on using better the OFA, Itsuka stated. Unfortunately, it took him months like breaking his bones to make him understand. Tenya sighed, until Hasu, Shoto mumbled under his breath. Mizo and Kayoka glanced at Shoto in confusion but decided to keep it quiet until they knew better. That is why everyone called him Finger Destroyer Kid. Keigo chided playfully. Only you did. Rumi scoffed. All Might looked on with pride. His successor was finally figuring things out. He wished he could have helped more. But unfortunately, he didn't have the best experience in teaching. Shota snorted. Now he's thinking that he's not good at it. As Ashi and Nimari laughed, covering their mouths. At least for now I don't have to call Gran Torino. One more day and I would have had no choice. Then why didn't you do it when you saw how your successor broke his bones? Tashinori. Sora Heko hissed angrily at the idiot student of his. W we didn't have time at the moment, sir. Tashinori shrieked out. Hi cool. Okay so how much can you use? Django asked as he neared. H hold up. It's too much. Right now. Izuku grunted out as he focused even more. 20. 15. 10. 7. 6 and 5. He sighed in relief and panted with exhaustion, feeling as if his body was ever so close to breaking apart just from a fifth of the power. Even now he was still pushing it. Right now, it's 5%. Lower than I'd like but any higher and my body starts to strain. Well it's a start, can you hear the VOD? Django asked as he observed Izuku. Immediately, feelings of approval and encouragement filled him, and he could hear the voices praising his hard work. I wonder. Reaching out with his power, he pulled. Zwoom haha, you did it VOD. I knew you could. Django cried out as he hugged Izuku. Right next to him was another clone who was also brightly smiling. All Might stood beside him, smiling proudly at his successor and his personal victory. CT000077, reporting for duty, sir. The clone saluted at Izuku and then stood at attention. Hey, that's... Django began. No spoilers. Kuma snickered. Yuga for some reason felt like a connection with that clone. He began paying attention to him and see what brought this feeling. It's great to meet you, but you'll have to get a name for yourself soon. I don't think I can summon another clone right now, so we'll have to take this time to get ready for the exam, Izuku said as they continued to train. All Might had refrained from saying what the exam was, not that Izuku would have accepted it, not wanting special treatment. So for the rest of their training, they took to working on their fighting abilities and marksmanship, along with some team strategies. Finally, however, the day came for the entrance exam and as Izuku stood before UAS gates, he prepared himself to being the next chapter of his journey to become a hero. The screen blacked out. Everyone stretched and wiped from the snacks they ate. Man, this chapter was funny and entertaining. Ijiro said as he stood up from his seat. Yeah, no kidding. Hanta agreed. All right, people, listen up. Kuma began, earning their attention. We are going to take a longer break for this time. So, we will rejoin watching here after an hour or so. I'll call you everyone so if anybody wants to do something in this place, knock yourself out. And with that Kuma disappeared, leaving the spectators on their own. All right, let's go and play video games. Denki said as he and few others began making their way toward the playground. I hope this training ground has workable equipment or else I'm going to get mad. Rumi hopped impatiently toward the facility while Ryuko followed her behind. A few heroes also joined her to train their skills. We should check the spa since we're going to be here. Momo suggested as few women of class A and B decided to take that part. With everyone going to their respective ways, Izuku remained with Django as the two Midoriyas remained together. It's great to have you here, Django. Izuku began, unsure on how to react on seeing someone from a quirk of his of another universe. Yeah, it not something I expected either, Vod. Django winced. Sorry, it has been a habit of me calling my Orvod like that but if you're uncomfortable. Oh no, it's no problem. Izuku quickly shook his head. In truth, I always dreamed to have a brother so. This is basically a dream come true. Vod. Django smiled. No matter where he was, his Vod would always be with him. He laughed. Alright, Vod, let me show you how these guns works, shall we? Izuku's interest was piqued. Yeah, I want to try them. With that, both Midoriya who one didn't have a brother and the other who lost were finally reunited like the fate desire. Nobody could have known that Django had shed a small tear, promising himself that he was going to do his best to his new but same Vod. After everyone had watched the second chapter of the show, everyone was led on their own while their host, Kuma, was elsewhere. The women were without a doubt enjoying their spa, massage, mud baths, anything related to becoming younger and beautiful was there. Oh, this is heaven. Kayoka groaned in delight while she was being massaged by an agenda robot. I don't know you girls, but I am enjoying this. That's good to hear, Jiru. Momo smiled as she was resting with a special face mask and two cuts of cucumber placed on her eyes. This is much better than the places I've been around the world. 
Oh, I wish my parents were to be here to test these massages. You tell me. Toru giggled, sitting next to her with the same treatment despite being invisible. Our parents are really missing this. A little lower, please. Oh, right there. Mina moaned when the massager pressed the place she wanted to. Ah, this is life. You sight in delight as she and Nimiri felt the warm waters course their tired bodies. Haven't thought about getting a spa in years. I'm going to milk them. You and me, hun. Nimiri giggled as she lowered herself in the water. You and me, both. This does really good for my skin, I say. Kamori said, enjoying the warm water. I love this experience. Pony agreed. M.H. Yui nodded. Still though, Ryaiko began. Despite all of this, I wonder if our host, Kuma, had thought of this beforehand. Well, at the beginning, he had mentioned that he was fan of our universe, whatever he meant. Anan, finally out of her bulky astronaut suit, showing her well-developed body and showing her navy blue and blonde hair with hazel-colored eyes, said as she enjoyed the waters out of her suit. So, you think that since he had known that we were coming, prepared all of this for us? Ruko said as she took the opportunity to be younger than ever. I feel so spoiled like a little kitty. Pixie, where are your team, by the way? Nimari asked as you became so bliss with the water that was rendered too relaxed to answer. Oh, well, since Tomoko's quirk returned, she and Shino decided to train her quirk as since hers was stolen, she lost the edge of using her quirk. Meanwhile, Yoara is training elsewhere. Don't know where. Ryuko shrugged. Again, Shino commanded as Tomoko concentrated again while using her return quirk. Search. I see the kids going around in the playground, the girls in the spa, and I see Aizawa, Iri, and Mirio together in the recreational room. Tomoko said, disconnecting her quirk. Oh, it's been a while. I think I'm going to cry. I'm really happy for you, Tomoko. Shino said honestly. The wild, wild pussycats wasn't much without you. Shino, the greenette of the team cried gratefully. Hugging the team leader. I missed it too. I see that Ragdoll is doing well with her recuperated quirk. Ryuko said as she walked alone toward them. Oh, Rukio. I thought you would be with Mirko. Shino pointed out. Well, she's over there kicking ass to those training robots. The dragon hero said, watching as Rumi was fighting two bulking-sized robots at the same time. Surprisingly, those robots are put with different power level, depending on the rankings of villains. Ranking, Tomoko asked, wiping her joyful tears. Ryuko shrugged. From what one of the guide robots said, the robots are configured with various levels like we use in real life. It goes from D rank to S rank. And Rumi is testing by fighting two a ranks, one going fist to fist and the other going with a mace. There goes that these robots are also configured to copy the exact quirk and movesets as the original of the villains which are in the data. Teshiro said as he was taking a break while eating on his second box of margarita pizza. So, in other words, this training ground gives us chance to practice and strategize against villains that we already fought or are going to fight against. Tsunagu hummed thoughtfully. It would help me by strengthening my fiber master quirk. An excellent place for training, I must admit. Yasuhiro hummed an honest joy as he was checking on his blades. Still though, our host had prepared us too much for this that I feel quite pampered, Shinya said with a slight frown while crossing his arms. He did say that he was a fan of our universe, Shinji remarked, making onto the most famous ranked heroes, like he wasn't trembling in slight fear and trepidation. So, what makes you think that he had seen something that we needed more time to prepare? That could have been a possibility, Teshiro hummed, going now with a chocolate cake. Still, enough of that thought. What are we thinking about Midoriya? Shino asked. She was especially grateful for the Greenette's help during their visit or else she would have lost her nephew from muscular. The kid is still green, pun intended, but he has a heart that would rival all might. Tomoko stated. We have come to be part of a secret that was guarded by few. Shinya said, feeling a little dizzy with the secret being exposed. It feels like we are discovering secrets we shouldn't know of. Speaking of the Greenette, have anyone seen him? Tsunaga wondered. I might have found him in Django in the shooting range with Snipe and few others with my quirk. Tomoko confessed. Is that a good idea for Midoriya using guns? Shino asked in concern. It might have been more to reconnect between those two. Ryuko assumed, knowing that the two brothers needed some time. They do not know much apart from what we are watching, but those two passed to many terrible things despite that they don't know each other. It seems that it is like some kind of reconnection between two people. Every hero paused at the thought of that and contemplated that line of thought before Shinji grimaced dreadfully as everyone else. But seriously, with guns, this is a DC-15A blaster rifle, the standard rifle for each clone that use in battle. Django explained, holding said rifle with reverence. This was our first model of weapon that the armory made so it has been useful in battles. He grabbed the shorter but still two-handed weapon, DC-15S blaster carbine, shorter than the first cousin but sacrifices range for accuracy. 
and more capacity from 50 shots to 100. It gives the best option for scouting missions. Eventually, more useful to dual wield it but a sidearm or other. Leaving the carbine on the table with the rest of the weapons, he picked up a pistol. DC-17 Hand Blaster, a clone's best friend if the first one is lost or destroyed. Mostly used by high-ranking clones and the jetpack troopers. 50 bolts. It has the same power as many other guns. Izuku mused out as he shot a few bolts to the target dummies, scorching the target points. True, but as most guns, they have stun settings. Django grinned as he then showed the other weapons that the clones use, such as the M3 Bulwark Blast Shield, an RPS-6 rocket launcher, most used as anti-vehicle, DC-17 meters and DC-15 second sidearm blaster which were used by the clone commandos, thermal detonators, and Django and few other clones' favorite in case of a dire situation or anti-unit solution. The Z6 Rotary Blaster Cannon. This beautiful would carve a group of mad bulls without stopping, he said with vindictive glee. Wow, a minigun. Izuku gazed at the monstrosity of a weapon in awe, and few others who wanted to test the guns the clones used. Yeah, yeah, it is amazing. Django scoffed, raising his favorite weapons and spinning them between his fingers. But nothing as compared to these beauties. Two custom fits Westar 34 blaster pistols, perfect for a surprise attack at close range. I modified their handles to be hollowed out so I can fast draw them easily. They are capable of shooting 20 bolts each before I have to reload them. I have to say, partner that I think that I'll have to keep one of them for my guns. Snipe Sensei, Izuku said as he watched the cowboy-themed hero coming toward them. My quirk is compatible with them and I think that since a few of the models of guns that I tried are chargeable on its own, so I don't have to worry about reloading in dire moments. Toru hummed in excitement, being able to hold a few weaponries of the clones. True, some of the guns have large capacity and or are rechargeable. Django shrugged. But those models have to be special since those require more time to produce, so we can only use what's available. Fine by me. Still though, it is good to finally meet you, Django. I know we said this before, but this just feels like. Izuku rubbed his chin thoughtfully, like a dream. Django snorted, shaking his head. Yeah, I know, maybe that Kuma guy knew what he wanted to do when he brought me here. And I'm happy by it. I mean, I am sad that I won't see my Orvad but it feels like I gained another one. So, whatever happens, I'm with you through the end. Izuku wasn't to cry. He promised himself. Okay, he was crying and Django was tearing up. He quickly wiped it off. Damn it, Django. You sure know how to make me cry, you dummy. Django laughed as he patted his Orvad shoulder. Oh, don't be such a crybaby, Izuku. I've known you since I was born, or well, created out of your mindscape. And I know better on how to tease you. Izuku gasped in betrayal. He wouldn't. Django's grin stretched with mischief. I didn't stutter. The two remained staring at each other before they laughed like any other family would do. Toru simply watched the spectacle with a smile under his mask. He knew that Midoriya felt so much wrongness throughout his life, but here, he knew that he was going to be simply fine. Speaking of it, Izuku interrupted, sobering his laugh. I wonder what Kuma is doing at the moment. He needed a long time to do but we don't know for sure what he's going to be doing. Django shrugged. Beats me. Maybe he's trying to bring another VOD like 77. I don't know. They were now wondering what Kuma would be doing. In one spacious room, featuring many bear-themed furniture from floor rags, drawings, action figures, a desk with a bear head carved on the wood, and few other non-bear-themed posters from many other heroes and villains stood the host of the show, walking around or in circles with panic. Are you kidding me? Are you sure you want me to show them that? Kuma exclaimed, holding a futuristic phone over his bare ear like it was normal, his face showing dread and trepidation like someone is going to destroy someone's favorite toy. I know I got your permission, Draco. But I thought it wouldn't such a deal to bring that story. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, good. A baritone voice chastised him playfully over the other side. First of, you asked about my permission to bring my side of the multiverse so that the original verse would be able to enjoy what I cooked up. But I have the final say if you want to show the rest of my world. And I want to show them a side of the multiverse I created. That universe is one of my many successful ones. Puma grimaced, rubbing his face like he hadn't slept in days despite that they can't but they want to. Look, I know that you have the final saying. But I wanted to show them the Legion side of the story and maybe add the clones once. But that, really, of course, Draco scoffed like it was obvious. It is important that they understand that actions have consequences and that anything is possible. Kuma kept the phone away for a second to breathe in and out and rub the bridge of his nose. Okay, you may have a point on that. And I can agree that they need to see a few of their choices and the butterfly effect. Still, at this rate, this might give them some existential crisis bullshit or something. He could feel Draco sighing ruefully. Do not ask how, and continued. Perhaps, but better than they learn now than suffer later. Kuma could feel his stamina drain up like a vacuum cleaner sucking dirt greedily. Fine, I'll show them that. 
Still, I think your world is becoming more successful. We, as overseers of the multiverse, get quite bored with the original ones that each of us would mold a world of our own image. And I have to say that I enjoyed quite a bit of yours, Draco. Draco scoffed. Of course it was. Well, that's my part of the thing I wanted to say to you but I didn't think it would reach to the point that you were asking me about adding that story at the end. Kuma sighed wearily, tossing himself onto a black bean bag. Well, no time like the present. Draco drawled. I need to go. I think my Izuku is doing something and I don't want to miss it. Yeah, yeah, see you later, Draco. You too, horn guy. With that, Draco disconnected the call. Just because in my universe Izuku has another childhood friend with horns, doesn't mean that I have to be called horn guy and this is my theme. He clicked his tongue before getting up from his seat, snatched a bottle of juice from the desk and drank in a big gulp. Puh, that's much better. He huffed and prepared as he stretched and began walking toward the exit and get to the show. After announcing the resume of the show, everyone who was enjoying their fun groaned or sighed as they made their way toward the cinema, theater. Students wore their uniforms while the heroes used their own costumes. Even Tomoko wore her cat uniform again with glee as the rest of the wild. Wild pussycats welcomed gladly at their teammate. All right, everyone. Time is wasting, but I have an announcement to make, Kuma said, earning their attention. At the end of the show, by the suggestion of the original owner of the show, asked me to show one of his works to you to see your reactions. Tenure raised his hand. Mr. Kuma, what do you mean by that? Well, my dear Ida-kun, it is to say that we, as overseer of the multiverse, are quite bored of our monotonous life. So, we bring new multiverses and watch on how they flow, Kuma explained, the heroes getting more interested on his explanation. As we oversee every multiverse we are given, we enjoy our own creations and such, and we also watch others with their permission, of course. Mina perked up at an idea she thought of. Does it mean that everyone here would be different in those multiverses? Katsuki gave the pink alien a weird look. Since when you can think like that? He asked in honest curiosity. Hey, Kuma laughed at the response which others joined. Not in malice. Well, Ashido-chan. There are many alternative universe, or as we would love to call AUs, which depends on each one of ours desire to happen. Which are? Denki asked, intrigued as everyone else. There are many possibilities. Kuma spread his arms, showing snippets of different universes. There would be universes that a few of you would be related one to another like our dear Katsuki being Yu's cousin on the mother's side. She is my cousin. Katsuki roared in offense. I take offense of being related to that ditzy woman. Hey, you shouted indignantly. Would you prefer Nimiri or Himiko? Kuma grinned at the now tense and paled Katsuki. That would be a nightmare. Shouta grumbled with Nimiri swatting his arm. Mildly offended, I can't see them together as relatives, if I'm honest. Suyu pointed out bluntly with a few others nodding in agreement. So, the multiverse can be diverse in such way. Shoto mumbled before he raised his hand. So that means that. Yes, Shoto-kun. Kuma answered flatly, expecting his question in the first place. There are worlds that Izuku is related to All Might as his father. Izuku and Tashinori blushed at the thought of being related, while they each other think that they are their father-son pseudo-like. They weren't in a familiar relationship. Although, Tashinori thought with a blush, thinking on the lovely mother of his protege. Kuma snorted while listening to his thoughts. Yeah, this Tashinori is likely the many possibilities of being enamored with Inko. Inji somehow shivered at the thought that out of every that was related to him, Shoto would have gotten his conspiracy theorist urge. He remembered the time when he thought that Sorohiko was Tashinori's father. Shivers. He hoped to have forgotten those embarrassing years. That is why he started to get better on his detective skills after that failure of thought. Does relationships count too? Toru asked, raising her invisible hand. Yeah, most likely. Kuma nodded. There are multiverses that some of you are in relationship or not, depending on the gender you are. Our gender? Tensei asked with a confused frown. Well, most universes are much put to the class A and B kids here. Kuma motioned as he waved at said group. While a few of you people might be in relationship, there are multiverses that have you meet our dear Izuku early on. A few of companionship, brotherhood, and such that many enjoy having a friend like him. He's a great friend, Tenya declared. He's capable of showing us the best of us. Achako cheered. He's understandable of others' problem. Shoto intoned. He's charismatic. Suyu bluntly pointed out. Izuku began blushing redder than before as soon as his closest friends began giving him compliments. Others also added their opinions on him which something inside warmed him. Django smirked at the state of his VOD was having and couldn't be proud of him. Okay, okay, that's great. Kuma interrupted in amusement. We don't want our broccoli boy turn into a strawberry. Everyone glanced at the embarrassed Izuku and could see his head looking like the fruit. Then, everyone laughed making Izuku nuclear red. All right, all right, people. Enough of teasing him. Back to what we were speaking about. The multiverse which a few of you people would endear the other to get into a romantic relationship. 
Still, our little cinnamon roll would end up with one or many others. Many others. Denki and Minoru shouted in unison. M-I-D-O-R-I-Y-A, you bastard. Minoru continued, raging all the way. The few girls of his classmates blushed at the thought of being with him, mostly Achako who was the closest to him. The class B was more confused or intrigued while glancing at said person. Teachers and few other female heroes are also added but that depends on the situation. Kuma continued burning the fire while the heroes were looking at Izuku with raised eyebrows. He is sometimes added with Mei if he ended up being a support student or not. Meet, Mei said. Other would be with Melissa since both of them band together because of their quirklessness. Melissa, who had been quiet all the show, was blushing while David didn't know how to feel about that. Despite the other multiverse, I won't let you get a boyfriend unless he is capable. David decided for the best. But daddy, Melissa whined with a blush before lowering her voice. What if it is Midoriya? David grimaced and began grumbling incoherently, which Melissa didn't know what the answer was. There are a few with the female heroes. Kuma considered telling or not and then shrugged. Either if he was the same age as them or as it is. Nimiri giggled before being splashed by Shouta with a bottle of water. No, but, Shouta, the little kid would be no. Also, a few of the guys as girls or him as a woman. Kuma grinned when a few of the guys shuddered before he rolled his eyes and snapped his fingers. Yeah, don't worry. This is Izuku turned into a girl. A new panel showed up a female version of Izuku who looked cuter and had the angelic vibe. Which it could be said to the male version. Django could only cackle at the sight of his vod turned into a woman. He then paused and thought about it, and grimaced with a pale look if his VOD had legion. It could have been two make female version of his VOD which would also mean, bastards trying to get their first hand them. He gagged at the thought. So, after the show and the additional, I'm going to show you a part of it. Kuma grinned and his grin stretched more when Izuku paled. W wait. No, too late for that. Now sit your asses down or I'm going to bring a few people to watch together. Kuma grinned mischievously when Izuku quietly sat down. Uh, who could you have brought here? If you can answer my curiosity. Shinso asked in honest curiosity as few others. Kuma hummed, rubbing his chin in a thoughtful manner. Well, I could bring Midoriya and Ko into this place to watch. Izuku yelped an eep. Or bring Bakugo Masaru and Mitsuki. Katsuki instantly paled at that. Or a few parents of the students. Some students were tense at that. The few that didn't say anything were Shinso and Mei. Or a few heroes to enjoy the show. You know, a certain comedic heroine. You would not dare. Shouta instantly bolted up from his seat in accusatory look. Kuma chuckled as he sat down with the snacks coming toward him. You can try, Aizawa-sensei. Ooh, I always wanted to say that. But anyways I can bring a new person to this show. With a snap of his fingers, another Izuku appeared with a shirt with a number 77. Before anybody could say something, Kuma interrupted. You are here to join us to see the show of your Vod's life and you were the second to be brought to life or well, the reality. Kuma waved his hand. In any case, you don't have to give your name yet. Just give them your CT number and so until the show gives your name. Until then, enjoy the time you have here with a few VOD of yours that I'll bring after more. 77 blinked in confusion before his eyes turned to Django and widened in shock. J. Django, is it you? Django smiled and gave his VOD a hug. I am here, 77. You are among friends and heroes. At ease, 77 gasped for the touch, not trying to think that it was a dream. For a few tense moments, 77 sagged in relief and choked on his tears while giving his fallen VOD a hug. A few others wondered what had happened but kept quiet knowing that it was moment that they needed. Tashinori and Sorohiko knew best since they were reunited with Nana and Murai, so they did their best to give those two clones the time they needed. Kuma closed his eyes with a smile, feeling the gratitude of one another. After giving them a few more minutes, 77 quickly wiped his tears as Django gave him a smile. It's good to be back, 77. I think we got too much time until then, don't you think? 77 nodded and went to grab his snack. And surprisingly, instead of sitting next to the Deku squad, he went and sat next to Yuga who in turn gaped in surprise and confusion. 77 simply gave him a small smile which he returned with much twinkle. Now, since this is out of the way, let's continue with the next one. Kuma announced as everyone got into their seats. Chapter 3 Arrival Courage Makes Heroes, But Trust Builds Friendships Words to Live By Tashinori stated warmly, raising his drink as few other heroes. The Deku squad glanced at each other with smiles, knowing how they felt about it. Arriving at the front gates of Yue, Izuku found himself enthusiastic and ready to take on whatever challenges that would stand in his way. He found himself completely at peace with what the future had in store. Oh, I felt it like that too. Toru cheered joyfully. Was it like that to you too, Deku-kun? Achako asked. Why yeah, I was so nervous at the time but I loved watching the gates of Yue at the time. Izuku replied, Out of the way, Deku, and the moment is ruined. Wow, such way to ruin it. Rikido snorted, 
Revelry in the dark. Fumikage agreed. Izuku honestly just walked forward and kept ignoring Bakugo out of spite, the latter becoming incensed before noticing something, smirking, and moving away. Everyone blinked in confusion on what Katsuki had planned. Even himself, was trying to understand his other version's action. Odd, that's a first. He thought before an upturned stone caught his foot and sent him tumbling. Instinct had him rolling as soon as he tipped over. Unfortunately, he soon found himself spinning in a circle uncontrollably. W-H-O-A-A-A, what's H-A-A-P-P-N-I-I-N-G? He cried out while moving like a wheel. That really sucked. Django chuckled. Yeah, since we see his actions through his eyes, everyone was panicking in his mindscape. 77 added with a snort. That would have been quite trippy. Denki joked. Is that how I looked? Izuku grimaced in embarrassment. Yeah, minus the shouting in that. Achako assured him, giggling. I think you were more surprised than him. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. A girl said before grabbing Izuku and straightening him out, then pressing her hands together. The effects of her quirk were cancelled and Izuku stumbled, trying to get over his sense of vertigo. Idly he heard Bakugo's cackling laughter up ahead, neither expecting the turn of events. Oh, that's why I was smirking. Katsuki realized. You didn't see him almost fall, bro? Ijiro asked. Nah, I went ahead without even carrying Deku at the time. Achako-chan. That is a wonderful way of saving Midoriya-chan. See you pointed out. Why yeah. At the time I didn't want to think how he would trip over, giving himself some bad luck. Achako confessed with a blush. I'm so sorry. I tried using my quirk so that you wouldn't fall, cause that would be bad luck, and well. Yeah. The girl sheepishly said while twiddling with her fingers. See, although, it is different of how we met. Izuku said, not recalling being that scared and so. It. It's alright. Just got a bit confused there. I'm Midoriya Izuku. May I have the name of my attempted savior? He asked with a smile as he continued to walk forward. Oh, I'm Yuraka Achako. Are you trying out for the hero course? Yep, I have to ask, what exactly is your quirk? I don't think it's levitation or telekinesis due to how you move your palms, and the glow that came from your fingers. Is it some sort of touch-based manipulation? Thumb. Considering the effects of vertigo and how I seem to roll in one spot, is it some of gravity manipulation? Izuku rambled before a hand came out of nowhere and popped him on the head. Quirk nerd. Shinzo snorted. Can you blame me? Izuku asked incredulously in mild offense. There are millions of quirks that are capable of changing the lives of the people. And there are many possibilities that if done well, people would be capable of using them perfectly. Midori is brain something to behold. Nezu cackled in glee. I expect once we return to have him taught by me. Every teacher paled in terror at such declaration. And if Shouta was thinking of hiding Izuku with Toshinori's help, well, he now had the help of the others. Jeez Vod, I thought that you already got that mumbling habit of yours under control. Django said while turning to the girl. Sorry about him, get a cool quirk and a pretty girl in his face and he's lost. Oh The class of shippers, Mina and Toru, cooed while a few girls from class B agreed completely with them. The two pointed out blushed and covered their faces into their hands in embarrassment. J-A-N-G-O. Django. Izuku yelled in embarrassment as the girl blushed up a storm. Izuku tried to swipe at him, but Django dodged and circled away laughing. Sorry about him, he's an idiot. I it's fine. Yuraka said while trying to gain control of her blush. Oh, young love, how I love this. Nimuri giggled. Please, Nimuri, not right now. Shouta groaned in dismay. Izashi could only laugh at that. He he, I'm Django, nice to meet ya. He said, staying just out of range. Izuku was tempted to shoot him. Anyway, thanks for saving this dickhead. But it looks like we need to get inside. Come on. He then ran ahead, leaving the other two behind. Izuku sighed before turning to what was hopefully a new friend and classmate. Shall we? Yuraka nodded and they both moved ahead. So, was I right? About your quirk? Yuraka giggled. Quite different of how our first meeting went, Deku-kun. Achako mumbled in embarrassment. Why yeah? Izuku agreed. Django and 77 could only laugh at the predicament of their vod. Izuku had to admit he was only half paying attention to present Mike's well, presentation. Truthfully, he had already met the bombastic man before. A reward that All Might had provided after he had managed to finally use OFA safely. Getting the autographs of some of UAS teachers was one of the best days of his life. Look, Shu, the little listener is overjoyed with our autographs. Azashi yelled happily. Would you kindly not shout next to my ear? Shouta growled. He would probably be happier to accept autographs from any hero. Nimuri pointed out in amusement. Snipe had even dedicated that last few weeks before the exam teaching them proper firearm safety. If only because he as a hero would not stand for anything else. If by chance another hero with firearms had the potential to enter the exam and continue against the stigma. Well, it good thing nobody had telepathy nearby. Right? Call me out, me. 
Toru grumbled half seriously, crossing his arms. Well, the laws of the use of guns had changed much since the years. Anan remarked. Izuku had also managed to keep up the contact with the clones inside of him, somewhat. The connection was mostly one way for some reason, but recent reports from Django were that the clones were taking Snipes' lessons to heart and were steadily increasing their capabilities with weapons. If by odd chance he heard the random explosion in his mind, well, nothing he could do about it now. Ah, good times to practice. 77 chuckled. I hope it was controlled, Toru said. Of course, the clones take their training to the point that they could shoot on their sleeps. Django snorted. Please don't. Izuku begged. It still begged the question, could he enter his mindscape? If so, what was necessary? Questions for later he supposed. Huh, he's sure. Enthusiastic I guess. Izuku thought while staring at some guy who was. Well, asking wasn't really the right word here but still, should at least be polite. He might be nervous about the different villains they would face. Apologizes for interrupting, Mike Sensei. It was right to assume that I was nervous and confused during your explanation. Tenya apologized, bowing to the teachers. It's alright, little listener. I could have expected the nervousness at least. Hazashi shrugged, waving his hand. No harm done. You sure about that? Tensei asked, raising an eyebrow at the voice hero. Hey, it was expected that nobody would have answered me. But I would have been if at least one had. He replied with a shrug. That would have been a headache. Shouta grumbled, drinking his juice packs. He summarily ignored Bakugo. Later, inside the training ground. And wow was this place huge, according to Django who was currently in the mindscape. They'd asked and quirks could not be activated until after the exam started. Mentioned offhandedly that it was about the same size as the mindscape. Izuku had some trouble processing that one. Wow, so that Midoriya's mindscape would have been quite big. Pony said in awe. It would be possible that the mindscape would grow the same as Midoriya. Satsuna hummed. You know, grow in age, and the mindscape follows. I wonder how big it would be if he reached his 30 seconds. Riaiko wondered. Like the size of Tokyo perhaps? Sin asked. It could be. Kosai replied, unsure of his answer. Looking around he found Yuraka in the same training area, and was about ready to walk over to her when a hand grabbed his shoulder. Wow, that sucks. Mina huffed. Midoriya. I apologize. That wasn't my intention and I had misunderstood completely. Tenya apologized. It's fine, Itakun. It's already in the past and I forgave you. Izuku said. Not for long. Django muttered and before anybody could ask him, he pointed up. The person holding his shoulder soon found his wrist grabbed and a gun in his face. Well, you're fucked. Hanta snorted. That was uncalled for, you idiot. Kayoka grunted, swatting his shoulder. You can't blame him. Ida got himself into a prickle on his own. Denki defended. Now let's just calm down, eh? No need to try and start everything, right? Django said with a grin as the other teen's eyes widened in shock. Excuse me, are you allowed to even have those weapons? Although I am shocked to have a gun pointed at me, that wasn't a question that needed to be answered. Tenya sighed to himself. Was I really that tense? Don't worry much about it, Ida-kun. Izuku assured him with the other members of the Deku squad nodding in agreement. Rules don't matter to me, I'm just a quirk. Django chuckled out as the group around them spread from the standoff. Really Django? Izuku sighed as he moved away from the teen's now lax grip. Midoriya. Django. Everything alright here? Uraraka asked as she just now noticed the commotion. Start. Such timing. Kayoka snorted. I was nervous myself and wouldn't notice until it was late. Achako said. Each on their own, I guess. Suyu shrugged. Everyone paused and looked over to where present Mike was. What are you waiting for? There are no countdowns in real life. Go. As one the entire crowd moved toward the city, Izuku and Django immediately grouped up, passing toward Izuku a carbine and some thermal detonators. Go. Do a crime. Denki joked with a grouchy voice before laughing with few others. Is it really necessary to meme? Kayoka groused. Hey, the show gives us great moment to add memes. He defended. And it's funny. Ajiro chuckled. Don't say that you aren't enjoying it. Kayoka simply huffed and crossed her arms, not admitting that a few of them were funny. Momo simply laughed on her hand at the dishonesty of her best friend. All right, you go left, I go right. We'll meet up around the end of the ten minutes. Check your fire, down. Django yelled, knocking down Izuku and quickly shooting a one-pointer. Thanks, behind you. Django ducked and Izuku took some shots, the robot exploding into a mess of shrapnel. Let's go. Stay frosty. Django said as they split up and went after points. Nice work on the shots and combinations. Toru said, humming in appreciation at the tactics they used. They trained for this. It would have been a waste, otherwise. Rumi snorted. They're still kids, Rumi. Ruko said. In any case, they are covering their backs and not wasting shots. Suguo hummed, surprisingly calmer than his usual self. They work well. Hugo pointed out. 
Izuku went towards a group of various robots that had actually pinned down some students against some rubble. Grabbing one of the detonators, he tossed it towards the group, blowing up some and scattering the rest. Hey, aim for the head. He cried out as he rolled and shot some more robots, leaving the rest of the group to deal with. He charged forward and moved quickly, the embers of one for all sparking to life under his skin. I always wanted to do this. One for all, Yehil Biskargam. Okay, so it was a work in progress. I prefer calling one for all, full cowling. Izuku said, glad that he could now speak freely about the secret he was holding. That is a mouthful. Achako agreed. I quite prefer myself using names that can be said in a hastily manner. Tenya commented. Moving even faster he burst in between two one-pointers and shot them from behind. After that, he moved upwards, jumping between the walls of an alleyway to get to higher ground. I hope Django's doing worse than me, can't lost that bet, Izuku said before a sudden rumble made everything shake. Turning around, he spotted the absolutely ginormous zero-pointer in front of him. Izuku sighed. Others sighed in agreement while those that took the recommendation exam blinked in surprise. That was the zero-pointer you mentioned, Momo asked Kayoka. Yup, no way in hell we could have taken it out. She replied with a huff. It gave us quite a scare. Mashiro sighed. Yeah, Toru agreed. Although, I heard mine was destroyed. Mizo told the others. Huh, I wonder who could have done that. Rikido wondered aloud. Those that were there turned to the greenette who was looking at them sheepishly. Right, it was a no-brainer. The sugary hero sighed. That made everyone laugh. Django was actually doing pretty well. All things considered. Well, if you didn't count the fact that he was surrounded by robots. Yeah, this is just too easy. I'm winning that bet for sure. Django yelled in excitement as he started to spin and fire. Fortunately, they were mostly one-pointers so they didn't have any range capabilities. Three were immediately eliminated within a few seconds of each other. Ducking and rolling, he ran and shot more, the blue bolts piercing through metal with deadly efficiency. Getting closer, Django was forced to make space, constantly moving, constantly firing. His pistols were starting to overheat and burn his hands. The smell of burnt circuits and oil filled the air and Django was getting tired. Putting away a pistol, he tossed two grenades towards separate group of robots and blew them to smithereens. Brutality. Denki whistled. He knows what he is doing. Hanta hummed. Kind of reckless. Minoru pointed out, surprising the others that the pervert would at least think which he took it in offense. Hey, I may perv but I know what I'm seeing. It's more like we are surprised that you can coherently speak without making a perverted comment like you always do. Mizo decided to point him out. Rude. He grumbled, crossing his arms. People might take you seriously if you stopped ogling women like a piece of meat. Kuma dryly said. You respect their boundaries and they might see you differently. For now, you are on sight kicked on the balls without mercy. The students laughed at that but Minoru pondered that and was thinking about changing himself. Meanwhile, Django was smirking cockily at Izuku who responded with a roll of his eyes. Don't brat about it, Django. We know that I can do it better. Izuku replied with a snort. Oh, you wound me, Vod. Are you afraid that I would win that bet? Django sneered. I bet that they would end up tying or something. Achako assumed. Yes, they are good on their own ways and that might be the result of the match. Shoto affirmed that assumption. They're good. I'll give them that. Tenya nodded. I want to bet on it. Satsuna immediately declared. I bet 2,000 yen that Midoriya will win. Denki said excitedly. I think Django would do for 1,500. Hanta added. There were a few bets on either side or a few preferred that both of them would win. Those were Mina, Satsuna, Achako, Momo, Toru, and Katsuki, surprisingly. Others didn't join them. The heroes and teachers of Yua were mostly quiet watching their future of students betting on the state of two individuals' results. What makes you think that both of them would win, Bakabro? Ijiro asked as he bet for Izuku. Katsuki simply snorted. That would be telling. Spotting a three-pointer, he bum-rushed it, firing at its support and joints before leaping on jumping onto its body and scrambling to its head, and firing point-blank. Its body crumbled and he rolled off onto the concrete before continuing forward. Spotting a blonde boy hunched over in pain and a two-pointer about to strike him, he rushed forward and tackled him to the ground. It's me, Monami. Yuga exclaimed with twinkles. 77 simply chuckled. That you are. It seems that your limits were hitting you hard. Rikido said worriedly. That is was. But fret not, Monami that I will always return with more sparkles. Yuga said in delight. Everyone stared at the twinkles Yuga was sporting before turning to Kuma. Don't ask. He replied flatly. Turning quickly and firing at the bot it soon became scrap metal under the barrage. Hissing in pain as he was forced to let go of his gun, he turned to the boy he'd save. You alright? Django asked, picking up the team. The blonde nodded, still clutching his stomach. Django noticed the specialized belt he was wearing and dragged him over to an alcove. A mercy. Welcome, you need anything else? Just rest Monami. I managed to grab 40 points, I think I made it. 
he said while panting before straightening out into a pose. After all, someone as glamorous as me can always shine. He reminds me of his purple highness before his retirement. Ryuko hummed which she didn't notice Shouta who had been listening. Tensing at the name of the previous and turned pro hero when he shook his head. It wasn't the time to think about it at the moment. As Ashi and Nimari who were also listening to Pixie Bob's comments. Glanced worriedly at Shouta but didn't comment on it since they knew better to speak of that. Wakai then. Good luck. Django said before quickly moving away and heading towards the middle. I lost track of how many points I got in that last scuffle. Hopefully I made more than Izuku. Either way though, we're totally making it in. Out of nowhere, debris shot upwards into the sky, sending him flying back. Towering above him was what was apparently the zero pointer. Django was not amused. You've got to be kidding me. That was terrifying. Nironjiki sighed. Yeah, no matter how my quirk works, I wouldn't be able to deal with that. Jiroda said with his arms crossed. Would I be able to disable it with my quirk? Juzo wondered aloud. Maybe. He would be able to soften the ground of that zero pointer and rendering its movement null. Kajiro said quietly. HN. Huey nodded in agreement. I think a few of us would be able to. Nito hummed, rubbing his chin. I think among our class, it would possibly be Kamakiri, Fukudashi, if he is able to bring a powerful onomatopoeia, Honuki, and Bondo. That could be a possibility, Shroom. Kanoko agreed. Hearing that, the class a wondered out it too. Well, it would obviously be Deku-kun since he did that one too before. Achako said, recalling the time she thought the plain boy destroyed the zero-pointer to save her with a slight blush. And as for the others, it could be Todoroki, Bakugo, and maybe Yamomo if she is able to bring something like a cannon like the sport festival. Kaminari would be the same if he didn't have that drawback of his quirk. Izuku added, Denki was happy to hear that he would be able to destroy the zero-pointer and was determined to be better and hold more electricity without getting into his Wii stay. Hum, the test hasn't even started and we already have a confrontation between applicants. Hound observed, good instincts honestly, but shouldn't we be worried about the firearms? Where'd they even come from? Midnight asked, I signed it off myself, besides, they're produced by his quirk. All might would, until the end of his days, be jealous at how easily Snipe could pull off a southern accent while speaking Japanese. The best he could do was a half-hearted West Coast accent thanks to Dave. And he'd lived there, completely unfair in his opinion. Jealous much, partner, Toru smirked under his mask and while nobody could see it, the tone of his voice would be his telling. No, Toshinori would deny that he was pouting. Haha, don't be so glum, Toshi. David chuckled. It is harder than it sounds but you'll know it later. Melissa could shake her head at her Uncle Might's jealousness. Oh, Uncle, Snipe, please stop flexing on All Might. Besides, young Django was simply protecting young Midoriya. Nezu chided with some humor. And wasn't that a sigh? Nezu had taken a slight interest in both boys. Although since Django hadn't been training to wield OFA he was the one to spend more time with the principal. They shared a dark sense of humor and made jokes that would make anybody else gape in shock. Ah, take my fun away. So unfair. That's his quirk. It's been a while since I've seen a duplication quirk. And is he fully sentient, or just a copy? Ectoplasm asked, interested in seeing a quirk similar to his. I've had the opportunity to speak with young Django. Although he is a clone of Midoriya Izuku, he has his own personality traits, likes, and dislikes. We had a riveting discussion of military tactics and the art of war by Sun Tzu the other day. He cheerfully said while focusing a screen on him. As one the entire faculty shivered, Nezu having his eye on somebody was never good for their sanity. We're dead. The world is ending. As Ashi yelled dramatically and only this time, Shouta wouldn't blame him for that this time. Izuku was one thing but Django. Hell no, he would have a horrible time hiding them from the rat. Ha ha ha. Oh, don't worry, Mike. I won't be too hard for young Django, will I? Nezu asked nicely. Of course not, Principal Nezu. Django affirmed and smirked at the sight of the teacher's paled faces with a mischievous grin. In fact, I would gladly return to our games during recess. That will do, young Django. That will do. We're so fucked. We're going to die. Denki and Mina shouted in unison, fearing what they would do. Izuku could simply sigh as he uncovered Uri's ears as soon as he expected it to happen. Him and his progenitor, Cementos asked. He knew that some sentient quirks had a preferred relationship term in some cases. They prefer to be called brothers actually. Hum, interesting. It says here that Midoriya's quirk registry recently got updated. It went from clone to arsenal. Although that is set to change in the future once he has proven to be able to make more than 20 clones. Midnight looked over in a tablet. What does he want to change it to? Legion. The room seemed to vibrate at the potential of that word. The spectators could also feel the vibration as soon as the on-screen Nimari said that. The word Legion felt like something powerful was bestowed to them and it felt unreal. That is quite a name, Chino said, rubbing her arms at the goosebumps she suddenly got. I can't blame you on that one. I felt it too, Yawara affirmed. It sounds cool, Koda mumbled in awe. 
with a name like that, it sounds like Midoriya could call an army. Tsunagu said, brushing his hair. Yeah, Shinya affirmed. Ooh, Midoriya, that name sounds thrilling. Mina said. Manly, Ajiro and Tetsu Tetsu chorused in agreement. I wonder if my quirk copy would be able to replicate that. Nito wondered. I don't think you could do it since you would need a day to produce a clone and your quirk wouldn't be able to make that. Shihai replied. I think you could only produce a gun or two. Probably. Kosai wasn't sure of his answer. Or you could break your arms. Itsuka said dryly. It could go either way. Ryaiko decided. All Might took time to observe the boys before moving on to other applicants. Many applicants are showing what it takes to become heroes. Speed, agility, situational awareness, adaptability, and pure combat ability. He noticed both Izuku and Django helping people and it brought a smile to his face. And the capacity to help others, even at the expense of yourself. Nezu smiled sadistically. Let us see, however, what they're made of. Power loader. Yes, sir. Pressing a button that said plus ultra, the teachers leaned back to see what these applicants would do when the odds were stacked against them. Many students that took part of the exam groaned in exasperation and fear. One thing is watching the teachers talking about us which we can now know better of our strengths and weaknesses. Kayoka groaned wearily. And the other thing is how the principal would unleash that monstrosity. Revelry in the dark. Fumikage and Shihai sighed in unison. Izuku and Django soon regrouped and retreated quickly but relatively calmly while everyone else panicked. Yeah, not much phased you after taking a smash from All Might and eating his hair. Still though, giant robot. SNK, giant robot. Denki snorted. I can't believe this. I know, right. Where does you even get the funding for this? Is that really what you're worried about right now? A voice crying out made them both pause, as when they turned, stuck under some rubble. And desperately trying to get out was Yuraraka Achako, and for one heart-stopping moment, their eyes met. Achako, Yuraraka. The students shouted in distress, mostly class A, at seeing their bubbly friend stuck under the rubble. I'm fine. Achako quickly assured them. Yes, I was in a pickle but I was totally fine after the test. Majima could have the zero pointer located her under the rubble. Nezu asked quietly to the support hero. Could be. The programming on the zero pointer had specifically with a sensor that could locate and secure examiners that could have gotten hurt. The hero answered back. Although, the two and few other teachers of Yua turned to the side of Kuma floating over them. They turned back to see that there was another Kuma sitting on his throne with a few members of the class of O. Oh, don't worry about that. That is simply an illusion that I cast since I knew that you would have spoken about this eventually. Either way, in the multiverse, there are many possibilities that anything could have happened. Most of them were with Izuku destroying that to save Achako. Some of them, he managed to move the rubble and escape unharmed. He then grimaced, which most people noticed it. And the few, Nezu quietly asked, and the few. Well, Achako wouldn't have survived the Zero Pointer as it could also have damaged its sensor, which the results would have been catastrophic for her in the school. The teachers of Yua gulped at the thought of one of their students getting killed during the entrance exam. That wouldn't have been quite nice for the school itself and their own selves. You know what to do. Nezu ordered. Majima nodded. I'll upgrade the sensors of the Zero Pointers and have a protective layer so that nothing would damage it. Good luck with that. With that, Kuma disappeared and replaced the illusion before anybody could notice him. Immediately they both started to run towards her as the robot lumbers above. One for all surged beneath Izuku's skin, crackling the air and making everybody's hair stand on end. Everyone held their breaths as they watched how Midoriya. No, a hero saved someone. Django. Got it. As the villain bot brought down its hand, Izuku leapt up and intercepted it. Sorry about this boys. Focusing on his arm instead of his body. He charged his arm up to 100%. From deep inside of her heart, Izuku grinned. Detroit S-M-A-A-A-S-H. As if the powers of the heavens themselves were in his fist, a great tornado of force erupted from the impact point and knocked over everything in the vicinity. Explosions riddled from the point of impact throughout the entire until the entire thing popped off and the robot itself was knocked backward an entire block. Why H? Every student cheered with a few just smiling at the sight of their friend and colleague taking out a giant robot to save his friend. Achako blushed as she watched her counterpart being saved once again by Deku-kun. Tenya nodded with a smile as he watched once again, his friend doing something heroic before he could have thought. Suyu and Shoto watched with intensity, seeing that their closest friend was someone who could be their dearest companion in their lifetime. Katsuki simply huffed, regretting slowly how he had treated him since they were kids. Izuku shot and crashed backward from the force of his punch to the ground but he was cushioned by both Django and Yuraraka. His arm shredded and bloody, a dark purple from the use of his quirk. Django had used the distraction to grab Yuraraka from the rubble and that's how the two were there to catch Izuku. Nice catch, Achako-chan. See you complimented her. Yeah, I wouldn't have done it without Django's help. Achako chuckled softly. It was a team effort, Tenya declared. That's right. 
Django affirmed with 77 lightly elbowing his bot. Yeah, good thing you didn't do that last time, right? Shut up, Django. Your arm, Midoriya. What this? Tis but a flesh wound. Every person who knew about the meme laughed while the few others were more worried about Izuku's arm. He gets to be hurt again and he would have said, tis but a scratch. Denki joked while laughing. In the end, he would have ended up in a draw. Hanta cackled. No time for pre-quirk references Vod. That thing is coming back. Django said as he set down Yuraka and they helped Izuku back up. Adrenaline was an amazing thing now that Izuku thought about it. Yes, yes it is. Izuku agreed with a sage nod. Midoriya kun. I am concerned of you. Tenya chastised him. But most heroes can go on to protect the people, am I right? He defended. Yes, but there is no need to hurt yourself like that, young Midoriya. Tashinori said sternly. You have to talk, you idiot. Sorohiko scoffed with Murai agreeing with him. Og should have aimed for the head. Izuku grumbled as the trio stared at the half-broken robot that was slowly making its way toward them. You still got them detonators? Django asked as he grabbed the ones he had. Izuku nodded and tossed them over. Is it really necessary to throw grenades? That is dangerous, Melissa said with worry. Hey, that only happens if you shoot them or pull out the safety pin. For the detonators, you only need to push the button to cook up and throw them away before it explodes. Django explained with a shrug. Since he didn't, they are safe. You managed to blow up a bunch of holes in that thing. If I pop these and I can blow it up more, maybe even the head. That thing could cause a lot of damage before the exam ends. Let's get rid of it. Izuku nodded and grabbed the back of Django's shirt. One for all charged again sparkling wildly as he prepped to throw Django. Wait, let me help. Uraraka said while tapping Django's back. Immediately floating in the air, both he and Izuku to express their appreciation. Moving forward, Izuku spun to gain some momentum. I've always wanted to do this, Oklahoma. A small twister of wind and energy formed around Izuku's rotating body, Django groaning as he was subjected to the force. Smash! He yelled while flinging Django at breakneck speeds towards the zero-pointer. Yeet Django! Izuku smiled at the thought. Don't eat Django! Django grouched. Midoriya kun no. Tenya yelled. Midoriya yes. Shinso grinned. Unfortunately, zero gravity had a negative effect on this situation because while for training purposes, Izuku has thrown Django. He was not used to the force necessary in this situation. As such, bam, Izuku and Yuraraka cringed as Django slammed into the zero pointer's face, leaving an indent in the metal and leaving him stuck there. Everyone cringed at the sight. Ouch, that has to hurt. Kyoka winced. With the force of one for all and the gravity shift of zero gravity, it might have accelerated the force and velocity of Midoriya's throw. Momo explained, that might be the reason of such. Accident. Django simply groaned. Thinking on how much he loved and hated his VOD while 77 simply patted his back. I'm okay. Django groaned out before shaking his head and turning. He saw the other hand coming close to reach him. Jumping off his imprint, he went through the fingers and started running down the forearm, shooting wildly at the zero pointer's eyes. Knocking out too, he felt the metal shift under him as the robot tried to get him off. Diving towards an exposed ledge on one of its chest vents, he grabbed tightly and climbed his way up the top before sprinting and jumping across towards the other. Making his way to the exposed section along its left side, he climbed his way in and crawled through to its spinal base taking special care to avoid exposed wires and the broken framework. He could feel the entire robot shake and even was knocked over by impacts of the robot's fist against its own chassis, moving around while the robot starts destroying itself. Not a bad plan but more stupid. Hurry you said. They need to find the weakness to leave those grenades and blow them up. Kosai hummed. Otherwise, it wouldn't work and it would only endanger with the little life the Zero Pointer has left. Juzo remarked, kind of reckless though. Tetsu Tetsu grunted. Itsuka could only look at the metallic hero in training with a flat look. That is something he would have done the same. The same saying for the redhead of class and made it. Lot more hassle than I'd have lived but here I am. Setting off one, he then quickly made his way back towards the opening. With a great eruption. The entire spinal base was blown to pieces, the neck and head collapsing onto the body as the entire thing flipped over. Django himself was too slow to escape and so was flung out of the zero pointer and into the air, the shockwave disorienting him and sending him careening towards the ground. Oh no, this is gonna end badly. He groaned as he fell. Wait a second. Kuma raised a finger. His fall, however, was stopped by a slap and he started floating in the sky. Oh, sorry. Iraraka groaned out while she and Izuku were on top of some floating rubble. Izuku grabbed Django's flailing hand and brought him to the slab. Guiding them down, Yuraka soon let go of her quirk, and the three rested on the ground. And now, you can react, Kuma said. So, you slapped him. Mina grinned. I it was to save Django, Mina. Achako blushed at the boldness of her friend. Had I not Django would have gotten hurt just as Deku-kun did. Forgot to say something. So you asked, 
Well, Achako decided to not tell them and expecting to have Kuma keep quiet. Soon enough the absurdity of the entire situation made Izuku start snorting in amusement. Soon enough Jango started chuckling and Yuraka giggled before all three of them started to laugh. As they quieted down, Izuku was the first one to notice and ask, Hey, where is everybody? Did the exam end? Oh it ended about five minutes ago, young Midoriya. The three of them turned and looked to see the entire Yua faculty near them, and all three were caught off guard. I'm sorry. What? Everyone laughed at that, not expecting that the three would engrossed in their fight to forget the time limit. Wow, getting into some dangerous situation. Forgetting that they were in an exam and finished just a few minutes ago. Rumi snorted. This kid. I believe that a few of us would also ignore the time when fighting villains so it is something. Vuko chuckled. Wow, they both stopped at the same time. If that's not a clone thing then I don't know what is. It turns me on. Midnight roared out as her co-workers face palmed. Really Nimuri. Mike groaned out while Eraserhead continued to nap. Now they're heading over to rescue her. Looks like Midori is charging up the strength aspect of his quirk. Wonder if that strength of a thousand clones actually apply holy. Ectoplasm and the others exclaimed in shock as they watch Izuku jump in the air and meet the executor's hand. What were you going to say? Nimuri asked coyly to Masakazu. It was hard to tell but he was blushing under his mask. Not expecting that Nimuri thought that he was talking about that application. I was only going to say, as I expect, that if the clones would have won for all. But it seems it's not. He corrected the assumption. Nimuri simply smiled as Shouta groaned at the thought of his friend being herself. It blew the arm straight off. Power Loader complained. He knew that that was gonna be a pain to fix. Well, that's the end of the exam. Call it Mike Wait, something's wrong. Power Loader cried out as he tried various controls on the computer. That can be explained. Majum aside, rubbing his head. Think you can upgrade them before this happens? Onan asked. Yeah, I can work with that. I think I'm going to add a secondary program in case the primary gets damaged. Good enough. Nezu nodded. What is it, Hajima? Nezu asked as the other teachers got up. Even Eraserhead was fully awake now. The executor bot's not responding to my controls. After taking that damage it should have shut down automatically, but it's still moving. It's out of my control. He frantically tried to regain control, but error messages continued to appear. Let's move out and hold. Nezu said and the teachers froze. What is the principal thinking? Tenya shouted in distress. If you continue watching you might know. Kuma drawled, sipping his soda with a roll of his eyes. Present Mike, call the end of the exam. Advise the students to immediately go to the gates. Everybody else, wait. But sir, that zero-pointer's targeting system is on those students. Power Loader protested and soon the other teachers began to interject. Nezu if you expect me to stand by and watch that boy destroy his body again recovery girl started only to be interrupted by Nezu All Might marveled at his audacity. The students also marveled at the audacity of their principal. Few knew how Chio acted when they were being stupid and reckless, and she reacted on that. The heroes glanced at the chimera with mild surprise but didn't say anything. He will do no such thing. After all, brothers work together, don't they, All Might? As one, the faculty turned towards the emaciated man, who continued to stare at the screen with a grin. Your right principal, brothers, and heroes. So they watched, as Django was flung towards the executor. Both All Might and Nezu laughed uproariously at his impact with the robot and destroy it from the inside. All were marveled at how the three worked together, saving each other and laughing together like children. Let's go. Ah, so it turns out that All Might and the principal trusted them to do it right. Satsuna realized in awe. We should have seen that instead of reacting badly. She should decide. And that is what happened. I must admit, you three have impressed me very much with your teamwork and capabilities. As a reward, I will tell you now that all three of you passed the exam. Yes, that includes you Django. Were you not a quirk you would be a student. As it is, I cannot give you your direct scores until they're tallied but congratulations you three. Nezu said with a smile while recovery girl made her way towards the group. Hey, Nezu. Django yelled while the teachers choked at his boldness. Who won the bet? Is it really the time to ask him about that? Ijiro asked incredulously. And why do you have to disrespect the principal like that? Tenya yelled. Relax, Ida. There was no harm done. See? Django motioned to the show. Nezu only chuckled and shook his head. Now why would I ruin the surprise? Django only responded with a groan. Quite the balls of steel with speak like that to the principal. Denki shivered with Mina nodding in agreement. Why yeah? You really traumatized them, principal. Tashinori deadpanned. May traumatize the future heroes of our school. Nonsense. Nezu cackled, holding his tray of tea. The staff of Yua could only look at their superior with a flat look. Alright, that's enough for now. Let's fix the three of you up. No. Hey, I'm just a clone, wreck. Girl, I'll be Django was cut off by the sheer terror he felt of having her glare turned toward him. Right here waiting for treatment, ma'am. He quickly finished while lying still. 
Scary, someone muttered but everyone agreed. HMPH, youngster these days. Shio huffed proudly at her performance. As I thought, she replied before glaring at a chuckling Izuku, shutting him up, and kissing his arm. I thought I told you not to do something so stupid. Izuku sheepishly chuckled before replying. A, well, instinct I guess. My body just moved on its own. Shio only gave Izuku and Tashinori with a pointy look. You reckless youngsters. Think before you act, you buffins. Yes, ma am. Both users of OFA shouted in unison with sheer terror. The others could only hope that the next time they get to the infirmary, they could at least be prepared for the consequences of their actions. Recovery girl HM met in annoyance before checking him over. Satisfied at the end, she gave him a gummy before he fell asleep from exhaustion, giving another kiss to Django to heal from his back injuries. The latter dematerializing back to the mindscape. She then turned to Yuraka, said girl eeped in apprehension, but recovery girl was much gentler with her. Now then dearie, let's fix you up, and please, for the life of me, never bring yourself to be stupid as those two knuckleheads. Yuraka nodded rapidly, unwilling to have the glare turned on her any time in the future. The spectator Achako nodded in agreement as many others. Getting a glare for a villain is one thing. Getting from recovery girl is another thing completely which would scare you for months. Only Nezu was chuckling in his tea. Soon enough she was feeling better from her nausea and injuries, but she still decided to sleep off the adrenaline and exhaustion. They're so cute. Midnight squealed. Nimuri, the racer had warned. And can you imagine him using that quirk she continued her tirade. Nimuri, or better yet on me. N-E-M-U-R-I. A few students laughed at the interaction between their teachers. Others simply blushed at the implications she was mentioned. And few guilty people were blushing as that thought invaded their minds in an unholy and perverted manner. Kami, just kill me. Izuku, while blushing nuclear red, covered his face with his hands and moaned in embarrassment. I just hope that one of the clones managed to curb her. Django grumbled, feeling the same as his bot. You would be surprised. 77 added, much the same. Achako was blushing at the thought of many Izukas getting on her before nope. Get the gutter out of my head. She hastily shook her head while trying to calm her blush. As the ensuing conflict grew behind them, Nezu, All Might, and Snipe approached the group. I want him in my course, the both of them. Midori is pretty good with that carbine but Django's natural with them pistols. Shot those eyes while moving in from a pretty good distance. Snipe commented before picking up said carbine. I still marvel at how just makes him from his quirk. Think he can get me a permanent one. Really Snipe? All Might asked in exasperation. What? They're pretty useful. No need for Relodin. Who knows? May I be can mayak me a revolver? I'm talking about the accent. Snipe. Snipe just chuckled. Then he turned and went to break up the fight. You certainly picked a good one, Yagi. Nezu commented as they stared at the two who were now being taken away by medical bots. All Might chuckled. Yes, yes I did. Dad might. Shoto declared. Todoroki-kan. Izuku shouted with Tashinori coughing blood at hearing that. I told you that All Might wasn't my father. Well, he does act like one. Asui-san. Call me Tsu. While Izuku was getting embarrassed by his friends, the staff of you. And the heroes glanced at the former number one hero who was simply covering his face. You sure gave him a fatherly figure for Midoriya, Yagi. His ashy chided with a smirk. Oh, how heroic of you, All Might. Nimuri giggled. Inji only looked away and ignored every that occurred in the place. Forget those times. Forget those miserable and embarrassing moments. Try to not think about them. He continued repeating those thoughts. Later, after Izuku had woken up, thanked the faculty, and went home, he and Django eagerly spoke to Inko about the day's events and the battle that they took part in. Izuku took particular pleasure in mentioning Django's faceblunt. Django in turn praised the new girl that Izuku had made friends with. Inko just smiled and laughed, enjoying the time with her two boys, her own family, both born and, as she looked at Ta smiling Django, created. That is a nice family, Deku-kun. Achako smiled. Why yeah. Mom is the greatest person for me, Izuku said in embarrassment. A great auntie she is, Katsuki muttered under his breath with Ijiro barely hearing him. Did you say something, Bakabro? No, you shitty hair. Kayoka and Mizo heard him mutter but decided to hold on until it was necessary. Later that week, the three of them stood with the Yua letters in hand. Django felt particularly touched with the fact that one was addressed to him. Although he was a clone, Nezu had recognized his sentience and semi-independence. That I do, young Django. Nezu hummed with a smile. Django was congratulated by the students from class A and few of class B which he blushed in embarrassment. Let's open yours last, Django said while opening his letter. A little round projector was then placed on the table and they were greeted by All Might. I am here, with your test results. P.E.D.O. Might. Everyone laughed, Izuku and Django included, while Tashinori grumbled under his breath about respect. This time Inko smacked Django upside the head. Now, you may be wondering why I'm here, it's because you're looking at you. Hey. As newest teacher. That's so awesome. He's gonna be with us. Another school teacher scandal. 
and Ko smacked Django again. Really, young Django? Tashinori scowled while everyone else was laughing. Really, don't blame me for having that encounter with you. Django defended with a shit-eating grin. Please, don't curse in front of Iri and Koda, Django. Izuku sighed as he saw Shino covering Koda's ears and Mirio to Iri's. Now then, on to the scores. Young J-A-N-G-O, your 40 villain points. If you were by yourself, that would be just enough to make it in. Bah, I got too many one-pointers. I killed like, 30 of them. But wait, there's more. Here at you. Eh, we also recognize actions of courage in helping those in need. Look at this, young Django. You helped a young man in danger, then that young girl and finally your brother. As such, you gained 30 rescue points. Congratulations. Alone, you'd be third place. Third place. That's amazing, Django. Izuku cheered his bot. That's nothing. Django smirked proudly. Who was the third place of our exam? Kayoka wondered. That would be, young Uraraka. Nezu declared which Achako blushed. She had gained 28 villains points and 45 rescue points at the moment. So, she's fourth place in the show. Tsuyu mused. All right. Third place. I wonder who got first though. Probably me. That means I win the bet Django. Izuku laughed out while Django shook his head. Nua, no way. We still got to see yours. You probably got less than me. The two started to argue and wrestle while Inko rolled her eyes and made her way to Izuku's letter. Grabbing the projection disc, she set it on the table and turned it on. They really act like brothers. Tamaki said quietly. I wonder if Midoriya's quirk would give us a brother like that. Mirio wondered. That would be interesting. Mejire gasped. I am here. The words shocked the two boys back into focus and they quickly paid attention to the man. Now, I'm assuming that Django has already show his disc. How could All Might have known that? Sen wondered. Probably by the principal. Itsuka deadpan. How'd he know? Probably Nezu. Everyone laughed when it sounded the same as they heard by Itsuka. So Principal Nezu had me record this second. See, you two already know that you're in. And I'm very proud. Now for your scores. Midoriya Izuku, you got 30 villain points, a few shy of Django. Huh, shush. But your actions with the surrounded group, saving Miss Uraraka and your brother have gained you 40 rescue points, bringing you up to 70. Huh, that blasted rat did this on purpose. Everyone that bet that they would draw cheered while the others groaned, giving the cash to the winners. Is it really okay for them to bet in front of their teachers and heroes? Shinji wondered to his group. Hey, they are not doing anything so it could go either way. You shrugged. Ish. Shinisu cuffed. Wait, they both said. If we both got 70 points, then that means. They turned again to the projection. Yes boys, you're both correct. Alone you each have 70 points. That means that together, you have combined score of 140 points. They stared at the chart that was projected in front of them. M-I-D-O-R-I-Y-A-I-Z-U-K-U, J-I-N-G-O, 30 40th, 40 over 30, 140 first place welcome boys, to your hero academia. The boys loudly cheered and all three cried tears of joy as they celebrated their success. This was the beginning of their journey to becoming heroes. Together, everyone cheered that the on-screen Midoriya would do his best. Izuku and Django laughed joyfully at the moment they were sharing, all while ignoring Kuma who wasn't cheering. Yes, he was giving them a smile but it looked more solemn and sad. Few people noticed his reaction that were Shouta, Shinzo, and G. Tashinori, the past users of OFA, Nezu, Keigo, and Naomasa. Izuku was slightly nervous as he stood in front of the large door for Class 1 but, reminding himself of everything that it took to get here, and hardening his resolve, he opened the door. Of course, it had to be these two. Izuku thought in exasperation while watching the confrontation between Bakugo and the team that Django almost shot. Said teen took one look at Izuku and immediately stomped over. Great first impressions. Tagaru snorted sarcastically. At least ours was more tranquil. Yosu said. If by having Monoma shouting the superiority of Class B was something, I guess. Itsuka deadpan. Hey, once again, my condolences, Midoriya kun. Tenya apologized. And like I said, it is fine, Ida kun. Izuku smiled. He looks like a robot. Oh well, might as well get this over with. I, Ida Tenya, humbly apologize. It is clear that you are the superior student. He said with a perfect bow. Izuku wondered if he could put a square and see if there was any space left over. You know, I always wondered about that. Tensei admitted. Brother, the Deku squad and few others laughed. Not what I was expecting. He thought, honestly bewildered at the entire change. Huh, guess you can't judge everybody by the first interaction. He heard Django said from the Mindscape. Uh, apology accepted but I'm no superior student. But you saw the truth of the exam. Returning for the girl. Ader recounted. A part of him still felt shame at not doing anything and simply leaving. Look, I saw someone in danger and I moved. That's it. I didn't even know about rescue points till the end. Ada was about to continue but he was interrupted by another arrival. Izuku noted that it was the last student and his first friend. Katsuki winced at being told that he wasn't his friend anymore. 
He felt a hand pressing his shoulder and saw Ijiro giving him a small smile. You're doing great, bro. He encouraged him. You did change throughout the year in you. But Katsuki sighed. Yeah, I just hope that any other person like me listened and thought on their own before the toxic environment overtake them. We can only hope, bro. In fact, we can send them a message or something with our actions, right? Ijiro grinned. We are heroes to be so it is our turn to give them an example to follow. Katsuki nodded and continued watching the show all by ignoring that Izuku was hearing and smiling at his bully-turned-friend. Midoriya, you're here. The bubbly Yuraraka was very happy to have arrived. She had also cried in joy at receiving her ranking, 28 villain point, and 50 rescue points, putting her at second overall. Both were very happy to see each other and even hugged before quickly splitting in embarrassment. Oh, so this time I got second place. Achako gasped in surprise before pumping her fist. Gamey, you did great, Achako-chan. Suyu so cheered for so, five rescue points extra. Shoto hummed. You did better than Bakugo. Huh, you said something, Isa hot. Katsuki snarled, his hands popping with explosions. Calm down, bro. Ajiro said as he held him back. Izuku suddenly feeling a presence behind him turned and popped a pistol. Face to face with a caterpillar. He blushed and apologized before turning and sitting in his seat. I can't believe I almost capped a teacher. Wow, Greeny almost killed his teacher. Satsuna cackled. That's no laughing matter, Takich. Itsuka sighed. You scared the little listener, Shu. As Ashi said, elbowing softly to said person. He was trained to become a hero so his instincts are honed. It is a logical reaction. Shouta huffed. Don't be so shy, Shouta. You can tell us. Nimari giggled. Shut it. If you do that again, you should call it Chicago Smash. Izuku groaned. What? Why are you booing me? I'm right. He heard Django yell off to the clones. Every student booed him with Tashinori's voice being the loudest. Shut it, Tashinori. Soraheko grinned, giving him a kick. What? Django raised his arms in challenge. I'm right. Kuma covered a laugh with a cough before munching on some popcorn. HMPH, good instincts. And at least you sat down. Either way, it took 15 seconds for all of you to quiet down. That's time wasted, that's someone dead. If anything the silence became more deafening. Excuse me if I'm overstepping my boundaries, but... Jirota began slowly. Is this how you all began your classes? Yes. Every class a student groaned in unison. Really, a racer. Sekijiro sighed. It is more effective. Shouta retorted. Either way, we're on a schedule today. I'm Aizawa Shouta, your homeroom teacher. Put these on. The scruffy man who was a caterpillar grabbed gym uniforms and set them on the desk. Dot 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 and meet me outside for a quirk assessment. Quirk assessment. We didn't have that at the beginning of the classes. Ibarra said. We did. Again, class said in unison. I'm so glad that Eraserhead isn't our homeroom teacher. Nyernjiki admitted quietly, not willing to let the teacher hear him. Here, here. Kosai gulped. Uh, what about orientation? Uraraka asked. We don't have time for such frivolities. I'll see you in ten. He said before leaving the room. All of them simply stared before Izuku simply shrugged, grabbed a uniform, and headed out. Soon enough, the rest of the class followed suit. After changing over, they found themselves outside near a large track area, most of them later than others. Obviously we'll have to work on your timing. That is if you manage to stay here. Either way, let's move on. Today we'll be doing a quirk assessment test. So far you've all been limited by the government in an illogical attempt to be fair. Here though we'll be pushing you to your limits. He paused as if he was deciding something. Back Hugo, you managed the most villain points in the exam. What was your ball throw in middle school? About 67 meters, Bakugo said as he walked forward. Aizawa tossed him a ball and motioned for him to go inside a circle. Uh-huh. Now we can see how Klasa did their quirk assessment test and see if our class was much better. Nito declared in his usual self. Just as the class A, as one, covered their ears, a few other teachers did the same. Uh, what are you guys doing? Yui asked. Use your quirk, stay inside the circle, go all out, that's it. Bakugo chuckled darkly as he rolled his shoulder. All right then, he wound it back. Immediately Django appeared behind a girl with dark purple hair and covered her ears. What the? Die. B-O-O-O-M. An explosion rang out the field sending the ball flying and making everybody cover their ears. The girl also clasped her hands over Django's to add more pressure as the sound rang out and left some people reeling. Every person who didn't cover their ears, winced in pain before covering their pained ears. Ooh, that's why. Yosu groaned. At least I knew since I met with most of them. Shinzo snorted, uncovering his ears. That was a blast. Mei cackled with joy. I wonder if my babies can explode louder than him. Hatsum, no. Majima ordered. Thanks, Django. Kayoka thanked him. No problem. Once the sound died out, Django let go and the girl nodded appreciatively. How did you know? I saw you through Izuku's eyes. We immediately deduced that you had some sort of sound-based quirk. I doubt that you'd like to go deaf the first day. Django explained with a soft smile. 
Thanks, the gratitude was genuine, but she also felt slightly creeped out that her quirk was so easily discovered by a mere glance. Rude, Django snorted. Sorry, Kyoko apologized. Don't be, I kind of expected it. Still, don't think of it much. It depends on the person's characteristics. We wouldn't have known Takoyami's quirk unless he showed it by himself. Few people are easy to discover. Django nodded before heading over to Izuku. Unaware of a smiling blonde boy who was glad to see him again and was about to make his way over when the device in Aizawa's hand beat. Too bad, Ayama. Rikido said. Don't be, Manami. There is always a next time. Yuga declared. 77 could only shake his head with a small smile. Over 700 meters. They cried out in shock as Bakugo smirked, smoke still rising from his palm. This is all designed to push you beyond your limits, and today we'll discover them. All of them immediately got excited, someone even shouting out that this would be fun. Well, we're fucked. Mina cackled with the rest of class a laughing in agreement. The other spectators glanced at them with a confused look. Izuku and Django both felt the atmosphere change. Fun, huh? Aizawa cut in, glaring. Fine then, let's change things up. Whoever is last gets expelled. Cries of shock and denial rang out from the class, calling it unfair and the like. Natural disasters, villain attacks, injustice, crime, the world's unfair. That's how it works. Here at UA, it's our job to teach you to fight that unfairness as heroes. So either you step up to the plate or leave right here, right now. He beckoned at them, almost mockingly. So show me what you have, plus ultra style. Jeez, Shu, you sure gave me a scare. Hazashi winced. They needed to learn fast on how the world worked. Shouter retorted. No student of mine will do half-assed. And you tell me that you aren't proud of them. Nimuri snorted. Shut it, Nimuri. He grunted, hiding inside his scarf the blush he was forming. He would deny that he blushed. Surprisingly, I am now happy to have Ken sensei as our homeroom teacher. Tagaru declared blankly with most of the Class B members nodding in agreement. Yep, we sure learned the hard way in our time, right Tamaki? Najiro said. Why yeah? The shy boy muttered in agreement. Mirio could only laugh since he was from Class B and Aizawa wasn't his homeroom teacher ever since. Over the afternoon, the students went through the eight tests each one trying their best to not get expelled. Izuku was practically in Quirk Haven, with so many new quirks that he wanted to document. As it was, he had to rely on his clones for later. He particularly took notice of how many quirks that weren't suited for some situations, excelled in others. For example, the side steps were overtaken by some short kid with balls on his head that used them like double trampoline. Another used his quirk to get over 500 kilos on the grip strength test. Really the most interesting was the girl that made an entire electric scooter for the run. You sure know how your classmates' strengths and weakness well, huh? Kuma chided, leering at Izuku. But of course, he immediately answered. I have categorized each of our classmates, from rescue, capture, recon, frontline, support, and underground. Oh, what do you think, Deku-kun? Achako asked, intrigued as the rest of the classmates and the others. Well, from rescue we have Asui and you, Yuraka. Capture team are Siro and Minta. Recon teams are Kota, Shoji, and Jiro. Support teams are Yeyurazu, Ashido, Ayama, and Sato. Underground could be Takoyami and Hagakure. And the frontline team are the rest, he declared, surprising most of them. HM, it could work out with Takoyami and Hagakure to be in the underground hero business. Shouta hummed thoughtfully. Hey, what about us, Greenie? Satsuna asked. You might want to ask him later after the show. Kuma interrupted. The others grumbled but decided for later with Izuku assuring them that he would speak with them about that. Yuraka's was the funniest. Sending that ball to space left him and Django in stitches. Izuku wondered if that thing was still in orbit. Someone from Class B coughed. Did she really send that all the way up? Kosai blinked in surprise. Hey, now that I think about it, I did see something fly away. I thought it was my imagination. Manga hummed, with a realization emote. Jeez, and I thought that Fukudashi was pulling our leg or something. Yosu admitted sheepishly. My bad. Izuku himself managed well on the tests, the most memorable moments being him and Django working together on the grip test, him jumping with one for all on the standing long jump and landing on Django's shoulders, having him run the rest of the way. That is quite ingenious way of using that quirk, Tenya admitted. We haven't seen much of those people with cloning quirks so it would be surprising for us. Suyu added, except for that villain. Achako grimaced. Kago frowned. Yes, he had his thoughts on twice and the order that the Hero Public Safety Commission or HPSC for short gave him. Kumasai glanced at the Hawk Hero subtly. I should do something about that or speak with Nezu later. HPSC might be the core for the heroes but they are so corrupt that they would hire assassins from their own programmed children. Might as well. Break the prestigious name of theirs while I have them here. Some of the class laughed at the spectacle and Aizawa remained dead inside. When he is not, Mina snorted under her breath with Denki snickering in agreement. Ahem. 
The two tensed fearfully before slowly turning to said teacher glaring at them with his quirk activate. You two said something. No, sir. The other class had decided to remain quiet and not speak badly of their homeroom teacher, who would think that they would get punished despite not having classes. They won't push their luck further. At the ball throw, however, Midoriya thought to himself what to do. I can't use a big percentage of one for all, I'll just break my bones. Hem. Django. Izuku said as Django reappeared, sticking the ball into his hands and grabbing him by the collar and waist. Izuku lied down on his back and held up Django with his feet. I choose you. Izuku kicked off while pushing his body up to 15%, straining his muscles and cracking some bones. Hanta snorted. Really? Did you really use a Pokemon reference? The other classmates from both classes snickered in agreement. What is Pokemon? Shoto asked innocently which resulted in many people gasping in shock. All right, that is sad and stupid. Katsuki grumbled before snapping his fingers at the usual people of his group. You know what to teach him later. Roger, Ajiro, Denki, Siro and Mina saluted. Might as well help him know what that is. See you said with the rest of her group of friends. I am not much knowing with that but I know enough to know the basics since my brother had me play the game before. Tenya stated. You really didn't give him much freedom, huh? Rumi asked dryly to the current number one hero. Enji would admit that he had taken Shoto's childhood because of his own greediness. He would say that he was a terrible father but ever since that attack with Hawks, he had his eyes open, seeing that everything he had done was a waste. No, no I really don't anything to say. He sighed. At least young Todoroki is doing well now. Tashinori said. Yeah, I guess. W-O-A-A-A-H-H-H. Django cried out before landing in a crouch about 50 meters away. You ass. Django cried out as he started to run. Aizawa merely shook his head before staring at the screen in his hand the number steadily rising. He could admit that the kid had some good running speed. Honestly, he was actually interested in seeing how far this went. At the same time though, call him back after a minute. We don't have time to waste. Izuku shrugged and nodded and after the time passed, tried to dematerialize Django but found that he couldn't. Huh? It was most people's wonder. Shouldn't Django have dematerialized or something? Denki asked. Keep watching. I think I know the reason. Katsuki grunted. Huh, I can't. What do you mean? He's too far away. Our connection's really short. I can usually sense my clones but he's actually gone far enough that I can't. Never had this happen before, good to know. Izuku paused as he suddenly felt everything go silent. All the voices, all the power. Silent. 77 shivered. Yeah, it was like our connection with Orivan got disconnected. I remember when every VOD began panicking on trying to get our connection with Izuku in a hasty manner. I guess, it was better to test it now rather than later. See you asked, unsure. Maybe. Shouta now felt guilty that he had done something. But in truth, he knew better that he was curious on how it would react and how it would fare. In a blink however it came back and he gasped in shock. Huh, looks like your clones are also independent of you and don't disappear after I use my quirk. Aizawa said while applying eye drops to his eyes. Oh, you're a racer head. I thought I recognized you, you were there after the entrance exam. You're an odd case Midori. I was prepared to erase your quirk after your stunt against the zero pointer, but you decided not to use your full power. Why? Well, when I did that I completely destroyed my arm, and I can't keep doing that. I'm going to have full control of that strength one day but until then I'm leaving that as a last resort and using all the other abilities I have with my quirk. Izuku explained, a bit nervous at the piercing stare that Aizawa was giving him, but he still stood tall. Manly, there was no reason to know who said that. Good, you actually have some logic in that brain. Come on, let's go, Aizawa said. Walking over to the rest of the class and finishing the rest of the tests, Aizawa stood before the class and presented their scores. Too much of a hassle to put everything, so I'll just put down your rankings. Gei Arasu Momo Midoriya Izuku. Todoroki Shoto Bakugo Katsukiha. It looks like he couldn't win against you, yeah Momo. Kayoka said, that I thought so too. But I know that if we did that again after he trained his quirks, he would have overtaken my place. Momo answered, just train hard and you'll succeed. Mizo supported her. You are one of our pillars that hold our group, yay Irazu. Do not lessen yourself. Fumikage declared with a sage nod. Which ranking he was then? Sin asked. He was the last at the time but we didn't know before his quirk since he kept breaking his bones. Tori replied. Jirota winced. Yeah, now we know better. And the list went on until the final name. Minta Minoru said Teen fell on his knees in despair, already lamenting the fact that he'd never be with women. Ew, were most women's reaction. Is he really like that? Shinya asked. Yes, we've been trying to curb his perverted tendencies but we don't have such luck. Nimari sighed. I tell you that I didn't know much at the beginning but from what I heard, it was bad. Izashi confessed. He's smart by going ninth place in the class and his capabilities, if it wasn't for his. Everything. Shouta groaned. There are a few worlds that Minoru-kun was expelled. 
Kuma stated, shocking most students and heroes but none other than Minoru himself. Ie, W.Y. Kuma simply gave him a flat and disgusted look. The many worlds I had watched. You were especially a kind of a rotten person that would look at any women without their consent and acted in a racist way. Most of our kind hope that you either learned your lesson or get the hell out of the school. They mostly think of you like a perverted comic relief. So, listen to me, and listen well, you perverted midget. Learn to be a better person without acting like an animal. Or I'll show you the many, many worlds that you are put yourself into. Kuma threatened with a growl that shouldn't come out like an actual animal. Minoru trembled fearfully and quietly nodded. Good, give this a lesson everyone. While most universes have good versions of yours, there are others that are not. Kuma huffed, sitting comfortably again. Like I'll tell them how some of the special ones have a perverted level of fantasies. Any nearby girl immediately took various steps away from him. Izuku, half pitied him. By the way, the expulsion thing was a lie. I just wanted to see you all give your best. Various exclamations of shock and relief rang out, although Yeyarazu declared it obvious. Izuku, however, was less sure but decided to keep quiet. Now if Django was here he'd immediately call Aizawa out and that wasn't really the best impression to give your teacher the first day of school. Every teacher gave the nocturnal hero a flat look and sympathy to the students. You haven't told them yet. Nimuri sighed. Not that they need to. I saw their potential so it isn't much to say about that. Shouta said. Although, I think that a few of them realized when Midoriya's thoughts were displayed. Ken told them. So, Aizawa-sensei was really up front with expelling us? Mina asked frantically. We thought it was again a logical ruse. Denki cried out. I did hear rumors from my brother but I thought I heard him saying that Aizawa-sensei expelled the now second-year hero students last year and enrolled them again. Tenya admitted with a grimace. I didn't think of it much and now I'm regretting them. We're screwed. Hanta groaned. But hey, look at the good side. He didn't expel us so he must have seen potential in us, right? Achako asked, unsure of her own question. That makes me feel better. Kayoka sighed. Yes, kind of. Momo agreed. Revelry in the dark. Izuku simply sighed at their homeroom teacher's actions while Django and 77 simply laughed at their Vod's plight. Go ahead and change back. You'll find syllabi on your desks. We're done for the day. Midoriya, stay back a bit. Everyone blinked in confusion. Why would he be left with Aizawa sensei? Koji asked quietly. Maybe to test his full strength. Rikido assumed with a shrug. That may be so. Mizo admitted with a nod. Midoriya nodded and stayed while the rest walked back to the school. Look, this entire thing is about finding your limits. You'd pretty logical, but I still want to see what yours are. Throw the ball with your strength aspect. Do what you need to. We can discuss training management later. Izuku nodded before stepping back into the ring. All right, let's not bust my arm this time. Focus. He brought one for all to life, charging it throughout his entire body bringing his arm to swing, and unleashing 100% at his fingers. The ball was sent soaring towards the sky, rings of air left in its wake as it went Mach 4. Holy shit, green bean. That's some power. Sitsuna gasped in awe. Language. Ibarra berated her. And he is holding back all this time. Tetsu Tetsu asked. This is going to go so bad if he gets better. Kosai grimaced, thinking that his quirk wouldn't hold him back. That is a nice throw. Rumi admitted in surprise. Still, he is going to get his bones breaking at this rate. Ruko said with a grimace. He's getting better. Tashinori huffed. Izuku brought his hand back and held it close to his chest. His index and middle fingers mangled but he still managed to grin. I think that's a good start, right Mr. Aizawa? Aizawa shook his head and gave a wry grin. He had a feeling that both he and that Django would be problem children. Hey, Aizawa-sensei is proud of us. Django chided before something white wrapped around Django. Don't test it, Django. Shouta growled, his eyes shining red with his quirk. He would deny that Nimiri and his ashy were laughing at the sight of a small blush forming on his face. All right, go ahead and head to recovery girl. I'll give her a note, get yourself fixed up. I'll find your brother, Aizawa said as he started walking. Izuku nodded and made his way back. And don't think I didn't notice that stunt you pulled with your legs. Aizawa called out, Izuku sheepishly ducking in response. Aizawa stared at the little screen in his hand. Over a thousand meters with just two fingers. And according to this Django's still going at 700 meters. Just had to have the year with 21 students. Huh. He mumbled out before moving along. Over a thousand meters. That's crazy. Denki shouted with Mina. Different on how you threw the ball during our quirk assessment, Midoriya Chan. Suyu said, tapping her chin. That Hugo would have made a fit if he saw that. Hanto admitted. I would. Katsuki begrudgingly grunted. You admit that you aren't better than him. Shoto needled. Huh, you wanna go, Isahat bastard. Silence, people, Kuma interrupted. Unknown to the both of them, Bakugo had stayed behind, watching, glaring. He was furious. Not only had he been beaten out by Deku and his worthless clone at the entrance exam, but he was beaten out today not only by Deku, again, but by two other extras. Now, this, Deku had super strength. 
something wasn't adding up, and Katsuki would find out, one way or another. I sometimes forget that you and Bekugo grew together, Achako said. He seems quite perspective at you. Tenya agreed. Despite that he doesn't want to know anything about you, Shoto added. What do you mean with that, asshole? Kuma groaned, wishing to have something to drink right now. Hey, now he felt how Shouta felt with his class. Shouta, on the other hand, suddenly felt a kinship with the host without knowing why. I thought I told you not to injure yourself like this anymore. Recovery girl asked in disdain as she healed up Izuku's body. Honestly, you're just as bad as Yagi. Tashinori was about to open his mouth before closing it when he received Chiyo's glare. I'm sorry, he meekly said. Nana took the amusement of her successor. Izuku could only chuckle sheepishly as the wound healed. I just needed to find my limits, at least the damage less right. He then hissed in pain as recovery girl took the opportunity to smack him upside the head. Just because it's less doesn't mean it's less stupid. I mean, she's kind of right there. Achako said. Yeah. Izuku sighed. A continued tirade was stopped by the arrival of Django who merely raised a brow at the scene before him. Imagine my surprise as I'm running when I hear a sonic boom and a ball soar over me. Yeah, turns out Aizawa helped us discover some things about ourselves. I heard. I felt the connection break but still maintained form. I thought of something similar when you were knocked unconscious, he said while sitting down across the room. Once Midoriya was cleared to go they headed over to their classroom, picked up the syllabus, and headed to the front of the school for the train station. They were, however, sidetracked by some of the students. Hey, guys. Hiroraka waved over to where she, Ada, the girl with dark hair and the effeminate blonde were. I'm more sparkled than effeminate. Yuga declared, mildly offended. Yeah, but you are among the guys that know makeups better. Rikido said. That I do, Monami. I wouldn't be surprised. The girls of class said. Hey, you all stayed. Were you waiting for us? Izuku asked while walking up to them. Yeah, we wanted to get to know you better and walk over to the station together. Yuraka said as they started to walk. All right, so I'm Midoriya Izuku. And this is Django. You two are. He asked the blonde and girl. I'm Jiru Kayoka. And GM Apple Ayama Yuga. It is a pleasure to meet you, the blonde said with a certain flair Izuku would describe. Is he actually sparkling or am I tripping? Nope, he's just sparkling. Izuku deadpanned before he looked thoughtful. Although, what if his quirk helped him sparkle whenever he wanted? It would explain a lot. Yuga smiled dramatically while internally he was sweating bullets. Kuma leered at him but did not say anything yet. I actually met Monsieur Django during the entrance exam and wished to express my thanks again. No need, Frenchie. It's just what heroes do. Yeah, and Django here covered my ears when that loud Pomeranian kid launched that explosion. Jiru snarked with a smirk. She was idly spinning an ear jack with her hand. Izuku immediately wanted to ask questions, but restrained himself. Who are you calling Pomeranian kid? Ears. Katsuki roared. You can ask away. Kayoka ignored Katsuki, making him angrier which Ijiro had to hold him again. Both Izuku and Django started to chuckle at the rather apt description though. I mean, he's not wrong. Rumi admitted. Katsuki grumbled, crossing his arms. Bite me, you rabbit munchkin. Rumi, with the help of her quirk, snarled. What did you say, doggy boy? Come at me if you want, shorty. Okami, why? Ruko groaned in exasperation. Kuma decided to laugh in amusement. Well, it's nice to meet you too. I'm glad that Django's already making friends. You're Ida, right? Izuku asked, turning to the other teen. Said teen nodded and introduced himself again. And they started talking about the beginning of the school year and what they had in front of them. Izuku and Django found Ida to be a good person if a bit too earnest. Ida actually apologized for the confrontation at the exam. And Django in turn apologized for pulling a gun at him. That you should. 77 chided. Django snorted. He started it. The group of teens got to know one another as they made their way to the train station. And as their school year began, so did a series of friendships. By the way, Midoriya, do you know that Bekugo guy? Yuraka asked as they stood waiting for their train to get there. Hmm, yeah, we used to be friends like, a decade ago. Now he's just an ass. Why? Wow, Midori is being sassy. I like it. Kayoka admitted. That is a confident Deku-kun. All right. Achako added with a nod. W well. Izuku began. You might not want to answer that, my boy. Kuma said with a tone similar to All Might. I don't sound like that. Tashinori huffed. Yes, you do. Most teachers of you are said in unison. Well, I know your name's Izuku, so why does he call you Deku? Ah, an old nickname he gave me. It's an insult that means useless. Izuku snorted in derision. Why would he do such a thing? Ada asked in concern. If this was a hostile relationship that translated to Yua over the years, he'd report it. That, I would. Tenya declared, staring at Katsuki. Toxic environment people. Kuma sighed, shaking his head. Toxic environment. Nezu could only chuckled maliciously. 
with the permission of his students, not that he needed it, and the information that was given by the dearest host, Nezu could have the time of his life destroying lives that deserved. The Yua teachers and some heroes didn't know how to feel about that, pity them or not, and then, they shrugged because they had it coming. It's cause I was quirkless, or rather was. I even got the joint and everything. Although later I discovered that relationship is more correlation than causation or proof. Izuku went on a small mumbling tangent before Django slapped him upside the head. Ahem, right, anyway, Django didn't appear till I was ten. So I'm a late bloomer, but it didn't change anything between us. He shrugged as if it didn't affect him. But Django could see the slight signs of regret and sadness. That me should have been happier or something. Katsuki groaned, face bombing. You might have but he isn't you, so. Ajiro tried to assure him which it did good on him. Is there a chance to bring that Bakugo here so we can punish him? Nina wondered aloud. Eh, hey, it is a stretch but I doubt it. Kuma shrugged. Oh, I thought it was like Dekaru, like you can do it, so I was gonna call you that. She said with a slight ditty and a sheepish smile. Oh, so that's where's the nickname come from. Nina teased Achako who blushed. The other girls glanced with a smirk at the gravity girl, not knowing how to respond to that. I thought it was more ironic to that. Keigo said. From the bottom to being hope, he is indeed like all might. Suguo cried out while actually crying tears. He's good. I am happy to know that Tenya has a great friend. Tensei said proudly. Izuku flushed at the cuteness of it but still shook his head. Denial is bad, Midori. Mina teased which Izuku blushed again. Django in 77 simply laughed. You say like you don't, Ashido-chan. Kuma scoffed under his breath. Like the term omnivore for shippers, he was kind of shooting for the usual couples. Kiri Mina was one of them. Iraka, I'll be honest, considering how we saved each other's lives, you're more than welcome to call me Izuku. You already know me as Django. As far as I and the other clones are concerned, you're one of us. Others than I shut up, Izuku. Uraraka smiled in appreciation, nodding and accepting the honor. Then you can call me Achako. Wow, Uraraka. You work fast. Kayoka snarked, making Achako blush nuclear red. Hanta quickly shot a tape to her before she could float away. Do you think that if Midoriya would bring more clones, would he gave his classmates a squad or something? Ken asked the other staff of Yua that might be a possibility. Anan replied. It would be crazy if the kid brought more than to the students. Nimori said. Imagine having a squad of Midoriyas whenever you worked. Shouta didn't think of much but knowing his student. There was a possibility that he could come up with a stealth-based training for the clones and following him during his nightshift. I am Yuga. My name is Tenya. Eh, hey, what the heck? We're all gonna be together in class anyways. Might as well cut the middle man. I'm Kayoka. And so they went forwards, six friends starting their journey as heroes. Django couldn't be happier for them. With that the screen blacked out, and the lights turned on. Well, that was something, Shroom. Kanoko said. Yeah, but it is not finished yet. Kuma interrupted. You might want to restock your snacks but I wouldn't be so sure since the next one is going to be a bit darker. Tashinori frowned in concern. How dark are we talking about? Kuma grimaced which was noticed by everyone. Dark enough that I am going to Nidori and Kota blind and deaf until the show is finished. Either that or leaving with a caretaker. The wild, wild pussycats. Mirio and Izuku were worried that they had to leave them alone. Knowing their expression, Kuma assured them. Do not fear, I have a special room for kids during these hours. Not that I expected to use it right now, and they have enough things to distract them. Kuma clapped his hands and a small feminine robot with a maid outfit. Think of it like 2B but wearing more covering outfit than her usual ones. 2B, do you mind taking the kids to the recreation room? 2B nodded as ordered and held softly the two kids' hands. The two glanced back to see the worried faces but they simply reassured them with a wave before following 2B. After the kids left, Kuma sighed and got the spectators' attention once again. Just remember this, there are many alternative universes that nobody could have expected but no better than most. Unsure on how to expect that, everyone sat down once again, the cinema, theater's light turned off and the screen lighted up. Darth KYOFU Chapter 1, The Fall That Doesn't Sound Right. Yoichi grimaced. No, it doesn't. Higaki said with slow dread at what they were about to watch as the other OFA users a dark figure walks forward, clad in heavy armor filled with machinery that kept him alive. Not a single piece of skin was exposed, even his helmet sealing him off from the elements. Dark, hollow lenses stared at him, the only light coming from the control panel on his chest and belt. From the man's helmet, similar to a samurai's, protruded two large and flat horns, a mockery of his signature bangs. Tashinori gulped at what he was seeing. The villain had the same similarities with himself but he was acting like everything he had done was a mockery, something he was familiar with all for one. The students shivered in fear as they watched the futuristic-looking villain walking menacingly at someone. The heroes, on the other hand, frowned, thinking if they had the capability to defeat such villains since a few of them couldn't have done anything to all for one during the Kamino Wards. Toshinori gulps as he faces the haunting figure that was approaching him, 
the accursed breathing that plagued his nightmares for days now, especially once he learned the truth of the man behind the mask, the monster who destroyed Midoriya Izuku. W what? Achako yelped in terror. Who would be capable of harming him? Tenya gritted his teeth in anger, familiar with the feeling when he almost lost his brother. He couldn't let his dear friend to be lost. Shoto glared at the image of a villain, his body emitting both fire and ice with the sheer fury that was reserved to his father. Katsuki glared but couldn't get the feeling that something was wrong with this villain. He should be mad, sure, but there was a feeling of dread and regret. A part of him still surges in fury at all for one's cruelty. First he discovered the truth of his master's grandson, and now this. As much as he wished not to be here, to be back in the old days, it was too late. Nobody batted an ear during Tashinori's rant about his master's grandson as they paid more attention to the monster that came to destroy their greenette friend. Tashinori calls upon the last remnants of one for all, partially restored to him for one last mission. It wouldn't be at full strength but it would be enough for one last fight. His final duty, to lay his successor to rest. Dot 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 what? Tashinori gaped in shock as many others. Are you telling me that that villain is Midoriya? Mina asked, shocked. What a mad banquet of darkness. Fumikage grunted. How could it possibly be that a cinnamon roll like him turned into that? Toru asked incredulously. In time will tell. Puma conceded. Darth Kaiofu finally stops and pauses, as if he was searching for the right words. Have you come to destroy me, All Might? Kaiofu asks as they stand in the ruins of Jaku. Tashinori breathes in somberly, his eyes opening to face his opponent. I will do what I must, he says, as for the final time one for all flared to life and he ignited his blue blade to counter Kaiofu's crimson. Ooh, lightsabers, May said, not sounding too enthusiastic as she couldn't phantom to see muscles with that getup. Melissa was in the same. Kaiofu merely stares for a moment, unknown thoughts racing through his mind. His expression is always hidden behind that damned mask. Then you will die, he says with a certain finality, igniting his saber. With a swipe of his blade, he strikes. Kaiofu's and All Might's blades crash against each other with savagery and Kaiofu was quick to strike again. His opponent dodging once and dodging another blow before striking back. Their blades clashing again before All Might attacks again. The two trade blows, their blades striking each other multiple times before Kaiofu gets close and throws All Might back, the latter going into a roll. Not gonna lie, apart from the fight, I like the music. Kaioka admitted, impressed. Yes, it is a great composition. Momo added, I'll send you a few songs later. Kuma offered, from his knees, All Might blocks a few more attacks before spinning and striking only to meet Kaiofu's saber. HM, All Might is using defensive but counter-attacking moves while this Kaiofu uses more aggressive ones. Yasuhiro hummed as he watched both warriors moving and striking to get the advantage. There are moves that are named, Kuma said, watching intensely the show. It is explained in the future. Striking again, they ended up getting closer, and with a spin they end up back to back. All Might blocks another blow before delivering his own and grabbing Kaiofu's wrist, pulls him off balance. They clash again. Their blades striking a few more times as distance is finally gained between them. Kaiofu then raises his blade into a defensive stance. After so long of being unchallenged, he was unused to an enemy who could withstand him. Readjusting his grip as he guards himself, he stares while All Might slowly brings his lightsaber around and points it toward his enemy. That is not something I expected to be, Tashinori admitted. You mean, fighting with a weapon? Murai asked. Yes, but seeing that the lightsaber scorched and cut the ground like butter, it made me feel like it was the best option. He had considered fighting with a weapon or so when he was in America. But all the time it didn't feel right and he preferred to fight with his bare fists. I remember the time that Toshi would destroy most weapons as soon as he grabbed them. David chuckled. What a nightmare. Melissa giggled. Rearing back, the lightsaber spins as he leaps forward to attack. Their battle rages and their environment is changed. Among a forest of pillars from a battle long decided, a new one rages between two forces of nature as their blades sing and dance in the empty night leaving new scars in their surroundings as they push against each other. Red and blue collide once more as Tashinori pushes Darth Kaiofu back, before ducking and rolling under a wide swing and rolling from a downward slash. Getting back up to his feet, he brings his saber up to defend against another strike, the two adversaries desperately trying to gain ground, the only other sound being Kaiofu's forced breathing. Tashinori then grunted as he ends the clash and strikes, forcing Kaiofu's away before managing a glancing blow at his hand, pushing him back. Kaiofu leans against a pillar after stumbling and Tashinori is quick to capitulate, using what strength he had to punch a pillar and push it down on Kaiofu. With a stretch of his hand, he catches it with his power, and Tashinori pushes more, the two forces struggling against each other. Wait a minute, since when All Might can push the pillar without touching? Nito asked in complete confusion. Since never, Izuku noted with a frown. It must be some kind of multiverse thing as All Might goes mostly close combat. 
But to see him push the air with force, it looks like he is channeling OFA with his environment, something he could have used at given chance. Tenya stated, so, something like my quirk. Achako said as she glanced at her padded fingers. Close, since when Midoriya could have such power? Ijiro asked. Katsuki grimaced when a thought of realization and terror passed through his mind. He couldn't have, could he? He was a monster and he used any advantage he had on others. If he gave to Izuku quirks, then... Holy fuck, your strength has returned, Kaiofu says with a certain interest, wondering what exactly had changed between now and their last fight. But the weakness, he snarls as he forces the pillar away before lifting some rubble with his power. Tashinori's eyes widen as he backs away, cutting the rubble into pieces, still remains, charging forward. The two trade blows once more, with Tashinori forced to block a blow from behind and leaving himself wide open for a fist to the face. On the back foot of another clash, Tashinori's feet are then swept out from under him before he dodges a downward strike that carves a deep furlough into the ground. Darth Kaiofu then raises a hand and slams into the ground, using his power to shatter the earth, creating a large crevice that then becomes a pitfall that Tashinori falls into. No, every student shouted. The teacher squirmed into their seats as they couldn't feel helpless as they couldn't do anything to help him. Tashinori grimaced in sadness, feeling that he had failed the only person he would consider as his son. And that is why, you will always lose. Tashinori gasps and cries out as he falls into the pit, his lightsaber turning off unintentionally. He stares in fear as he sees Darth Kaiofu at the edge of the pit, his blade glowing menacingly in the night. Darth Kaiofu then raised his hand once more, rubble rising to meet his command as he then slams piece to piece on top of Tashinori, intending to crush him, the latter grunting in pain as he helpless against the onslaught. A final, large piece of what was once a building then slams itself on top of all the other pieces, sealing Tashinori in his tomb and cutting off his scream. Everyone was quiet, noting on how Midoriya could have defeated All Might. Mirai couldn't think that apart from that he had thought that Tashinori's successor wouldn't match the symbol that he showed, using his head and skills. Mirai had too much to think after watching this. Mirio frowned with a rare sight of a frown of his face, considered that maybe his kuhai was more than he is shown for. The battlefield remains silent once more and Darth Kaiofu slightly pants in exertion. Did you truly think that you could defeat me? You have failed, master. He spits out derisively before turning off his lightsaber and turning away. Now for the false hero and the usurper. Everyone shivered at the thought that their counterparts would be next. Mirio gulped, knowing somehow that he had become the next successor for one for all. How he got it, he wasn't sure. But his counterpart better be prepared, because Darth Kaiofu was out of mercy. Beneath the rubble however, all was not lost. Tashinori strained as he used one for all, holding back the weight of the rubble, each moment sapping more of his strength. At this moment, he feels more alone than ever. No, Izuku mumbled, tearing up. And he remembers, I'll do my best as your successor. A boy blowing up in the sky. All Might, help me. You cannot run, All Might. You should have killed me when you had the chance. I am what you made me. Each moment, the voice began with a soft voice before it turned deranged and angry. They couldn't believe that someone like Midoriya Izuku could have in such way. Django and 77 glanced at each other, knowing from the knowledge they had to learn, a person can fall if not given a hand. And in this case, it seems that Izuku had lost the help around him. But it is in these moments that he also remembers what's important. A boy who loves heroes and desperately wants to fly. A girl who looks at him with such adoration. People who still look to him for guidance. And the smile of a boy he loved like a son and what he would expect of him were he still here. Never stop fighting, all might. He has no choice. He must rise. Why? Everyone cheered, begging for All Might to regain his strength. Shouta grumbled at the volume of the voices but kept quiet as he was also nervous. To think that his problem child could fall in such way, terrified him. He was going to do things right. And as one for all surges through him, he finds the strength to throw off his shackles alongside the rubble as a new resolve surges through him and he climbs out of the pit. Darth Kaiofu stalks forward, his prey nearby. With Lemillion down an arm, and Bakugo having a hole in his gut, he would be easy to destroy. You look like shit, Bakubro, Anjiro said, worried. With the things he has, he is capable of destroying anyone. Katsuki admitted. Tamaki and Nejire glanced with worry at Mirio but he simply gave him a reassuring smile. Not forgetting that inside, he was feeling unsure on how he could muster his strength against such opponent. But he pauses, as he senses strength that infuriates him. With a spin, he blocks Tashinori's heavy attack, the two clashing for only a moment before Tashinori strikes again and again, forcing Darth Kaiofu back. Tashinori practically dances, as he strikes at Kaiofu and forces him to block by using his telekinesis. Their blades then dance together, striking the ground of arcing around their bodies and finally able to get close. He uses his strength to push Darth Kaiofu flying back, the latter crashing harshly into a thick wall, falling to his knees and gasping in pain. 
He can only stare in horror as Tashinori slowly bulks up, one for all enshrouding him in golden lightning. Although it was not the same strength nor stature as before, it is still no less intimidating. That's so manly. Ijiro and Tetsu Tetsu breathed in awe. I should have expected that if All Might had the same characteristic as yours, he would have had those lightning around his body, Deku-kun. Achako stated, it would have been quite direct into thinking that you and All Might were the same, Kiro. Tsuyu bluntly said, secret loving child, Shoto deadpanned, I told you All Might's not my dad. Izuku whined, rubbing his eyes. All Might then leaps forward and Kaiofu barely has time to bring up a telekinetic shield before he is battered by a series of brutal blows from All Might's fist, groaning with each strike. Finally pushing through the blows, Kaiofu brings his blade up to strike against All Might's only to be blocked, the two glaring at each other through glass and light. Darth Kaiofu, in his rage, strengthens and pushes forward, the two crashing through another pillar and falling down. Their fight increases in brutality and desperation as their blades crash against each other multiple times. All Might stabs forward, only for Darth Kaiofu to dodge and grab the man's wrist. All Might then raises their arms together and grabs his hand before spinning and bring his blade down on him only for blue to meet red. Still, Darth Kaiofu weakens, unable to react as fast as Tashinori who brings his blade back and strikes him from below with the hilt, knocking his chin up. All Might then delivers a series of brutal strikes with his hilt directly to Darth Kaiofu's control panel, sparks shooting out as his breathing apparatus beings to weaken as evident by his strained breathing. That should weaken him up, Tagaru said. Yeah, there was no other option. Bondo sighed. Ibarra was praying that no more deaths to occur in that universe and that the reign of Darth Kaiofu would end. Another strike from the blade is hastily blocked by Kaiofu as All Might then grabs a large piece of rubble and slams it into Kaiofu's side, making him grunt and forcing him to stumble away. They both take a moment to breathe but Kaiofu is relentless as he stumbles forward and strikes, only for All Might to easily sidestep and counterattack. He forces himself to ignore the scream of agony that erupts from his opponent as his blade carves a deep cut into his back, making Kaiofu fall to the ground. It's done. Denki gulped. Maybe. We can't be so sure. Izuku said as while the villain was down. It could happen anything during the middle of a battle. Everyone else continued paying attention. All Might does not go for the strike, instead hanging back and keeping his defense, making sure to point the blade directly at Kaiofu and watching him shakily get up to his feet, wheezing as he stumbles a bit. The clash for only a moment before All Might flicks a finger, the condensed wind blasting Darth Kaiofu back with a grunt. All Might pants and glares before charging forward, his blade humming with each step as he leaps and strikes, Kaiofu attempting to strike beforehand but missing entirely. The blade cuts deep into the helmet, sparks flying everywhere and Kaiofu finally falls to his knees defeated. All Might is once more victorious. Or is it? Toshinro frowned sadly as he watched his counterpart gaining victory against his successor. But this was a hollow victory. Toshinori stands tall and guarded, his enemy defeated and kneeling before him, the raspy breathing from his damaged suit echoing in the ruins of the city around them. The villain in front of him struggles to breathe, wheezing in exertion as his helmet sparks from the damage it just took from Toshinori's saber. Wheeze how or? Toshinori took a few steps back from his defeated enemy. Blue blade at the ready as he kept hearing the broken man before him struggling to even get up. We us. Ugh. Falling slightly before catching himself, Toshinori allows himself to slightly lower his blade as he realizes that his enemy will not be able to fight again. With great effort, Kaiofu lifts his head, a large part of his helmet gone alone with left side, revealing a bald, horrifically scarred head from burns that had occurred ten years ago. Everyone gasped at the sight of their friend turned into a horrific version. Shio growled in anger when she saw that Izuku had third-degree burns and knowing how he was, it was a miracle that he survived much damage. Enji looked with a regrettable look as he was also a hero with a fire quirk that burned many villains, leaving from first to third degree of burns. It could have been said for his first son on how his quirk wasn't compatible with his body. Finally, Tashinori's eyes met the exposed eye of his fallen opponent, blue meeting yellow-tinted green, glaring at him with such hatred and anger it physically made him hurt because he knew that face, as scarred as it was, and he knew those eyes, as corrupted as they were, and his heart stops, and although he was panting from exertion, although he had long been lying to himself that it couldn't be possible, that he was gone, dead, he couldn't help but gasp out the name, Izuku, the armored figure finally manages to get up to his feet and stares at Tashinori hatefully, his visage full of disdain as he spoke, his vocoder mixing with his natural voice due to its damage, Izuku is gone, I am what remains. Seeing Midoriya-chan with those eyes feels wrong. Suyu said, slightly shivering in fear. We knew that Midoriya-kun was smart and dedicated. Tenya slowly uttered. But, seeing him like that, it is not Midoriya. Shoto concluded. Achako glanced at Izuku who kept his head down. 
He couldn't believe that this version of him would fall and vengefully attack heroes. What could have possible happened to him to turn him into Darth Kyofu? Deku Khan. Izuku was brought out of his thoughts by his first friend. Are you alright? Izuku could lie and tell her that she was fine. But that wouldn't have been truthful and she wasn't like the others. Gulping slowly, he shook his head. And no, seeing myself like this, I... She grabbed his hand and gave him an assuring grip. It's alright. We couldn't have known how much Darth Kyofu would have fallen. And I hope that in that version of you, has a slight hope for heroes. I hope so, he muttered quietly. Kuma, who remained quiet, sighed. Years ago come on, Kakin. Why do you always get to be All Might? I want to be a hero too. Fat chance, Deku. I'm always the hero. Now hurry up and get ready. Fine, can I at least pick a villain name? Ugh, fine, sure. Hurry up. Awesome, then. My name will be Kyofu. H-L-H-L-H-A. Face me, All Might. Face me, heroes. To think that such dark name would come from a child. Mizo sighed sadly. What does Kyofu even means? Pony asked. Fear, terror, dread, dismay, horror, and scare. Momo intoned. That checks out. Shihai grunted. Are you alright, my boy? Izuku hears as he starts from his dream. He turns and looks at one of his closest friends. Even since he'd been stuck in the hospital, his help had been instrumental in getting over his depression and physical therapy. Now it seems that we are watching the core and rise of Darth Kyofu. Nezu concluded. What did happen to his arms? Nimuri shrieked and aghast. When a body isn't prepared to hold one for all, Tashinori declared sadly. Everyone turned to the former symbol of peace and shock. Are you telling us that Midoriya could have broken his limbs with that quirk? Shouta shouted incredulously. So, we got a version that Midoriya managed to hold the quirk while that way couldn't. As Ashi gulped nervously, it couldn't have been pretty. Ken said. At least he had some company, GRR. Ryo growled. Katsuki watched as if the nerd couldn't hold All Might's quirk. This would have been the result. Would he be able to see him? Or would he have ignored him for being an idiot? I'm fine. Just remembering old dreams. My boy. It's alright. Izuku tries to placate his friend. His hands raised up to wave off questions. But the glint of metal caused his expression to sour and his heart grew heavy. It's not alright, my boy. You were cruelly denied your dream for so many years. And when you finally got the opportunity, it slipped through your fingertips, and here you are. In a hospital bed. Izuku deadpans at him. Wow, you really know how to make someone feel better, huh? He asks sarcastically. While morbid, everyone agreed with that answer with a chuckle or snicker. Izuku and Tashinori chuckled too since they could at least admit that it was funny. You know what I mean, my boy. What I'm trying to get at is that well, you have a right to be upset. You deserve to be angry, to be sad, to embrace your emotions. Aren't you always talking about remaining in control? I said to embrace your emotions, not let them control you. A quiet yet comfortable silence remained between the two of them as Izuku slightly leans against his friend's taller frame. Let me tell you something I learned long ago. You may call it a tenet, or a code of sorts. I personally don't follow it completely, but I believe that you may benefit from it. Oh, yes, it goes like this, peace is a lie, there is only passion. Through passion I gain strength. Through strength I gain power. Through power I gain victory. Thought victory, my chains are broken. I shall be free. I didn't teach you that. Nana was confused. There wasn't any code or something like that. Tashinori said, much confused as his mentor and the others. Maybe something that in that universe I learned. In a way, Kuma nodded. Peace is a lie. Izuku contemplated as he looked at his metallic hand. I'll leave you alone now, my boy. Think on my words, won't you? Of course. Izuku says as his friend walks out of the room. Sensei, why do I feel wrong in so many levels? Hanta asked in dread. Yeah, no kidding. I feel the same. Denki said. I think most of us do. Momo stated. To think that one simple word could harness such impact, Fumikage declared. Hi, Izuku. How are you? Achako said as she walks into the room with cheer. He smiles brightly at her in return and they share a soft kiss that always left him flushing. Both Izuku and Achako blushed as many others gasped in shock or gushed on how cute they were. Mostly Mina, Toru, Satsuna, and Pony. How cute. Toru squealed, watching this cute scene which was a better way than the previous scene. How come you two aren't dating? Mina asked, whining that her ship wasn't sailing yet. Just that, the two continued blushing and avoiding glancing at one to another. Tashinori and Nana simply laughed good naturally. I'm doing great. The physical therapy's going smoothly and soon enough I'll find myself out of here. How about you? I saw you on the news today. It was great seeing you at the sports festival. I'm doing fine. Bit sore that I lost but in the end everything was great. Hopefully I get some good internships soon. She said as she sat next to him and began to rub his hair. He leans against her touch and smiles calmly at the feeling of her fingers gently drifting across his scalp. That looks fine. Unknowingly, Izuku and Achako were thinking the same thing at the same time. Kuma could simply chuckled under his breath before he got caught. I'm sure you'll do great, wherever you are. Yeah, I only wish that you could be there with me. 
She said sadly. Yeah, me too. But I guess that just means that you'll have to be the hero for the both of us, right? Right. They stay together, cuddling and sneaking in some kisses every now and then. Eventually, she had to go, and after one final, lingering kiss, they said their goodbyes. I love you. I love you, too. Aw, how cute. The girl cooed at the cuteness and romance it was displayed. It feels like we are watching a romantic show. Denki said. We are watching a down, jamming way. Kayoka snarked. How are you doing, you Izuku? Tashinori said as he sat next to his would-be successor. I'm doing fine. The recovery process is going well. Hopefully I'll get to leave here soon. Izuku said as he flexes his metallic hand. Me as well, I do have that tour of UA. I promise you, all might. Izuku groans, exasperated. The man tries to do something every day to repent for his mistakes. He had been told countless times that it'd be unneeded. Hey, I promised that I would help you achieve your dream. While it might not have worked out the way we wanted to, I still want you to come. I've been talking with Nezu. Your analysis skills are still top-notch, and he's willing to take you on as a student. If you pass his test of course, Toshinori says as Izuku begins to tear up. You'd really do that for me? Izuku asks shakily. It's the least I could do, my boy. Not a day goes by that I don't regret what happened, but never doubt that you aren't important to me. No matter what, you will always be the ninth. Toshinori says as he hugs the boy he loves like a son. But knowing now, I would be so sure that Midoriya would have become my protege. Nezu admitted, surprising many teachers. In fact, I may add a little lecture in classes for Midoriya after this. Toshinori and Shouta glanced at each other with worry. They knew that Izuku was smart but how would he fare against Principal Nezu? Izuku, I'll be back soon. I'm just going to grab something from the cafeteria, okay? Okay, mom. It's not like I'm going anywhere. Izuku, what? It's true. Izuku chuckles as he turns back to the news. Both mother and son have a great dynamic. Nimuri cooed at such wholesome moment, even between family. Who would have thought that Midoriya has a sense of humor? Itsuka asked. I do. May chirped. May. Izuku blushed in embarrassment. When he comes to the support department to adjust a few gears, we sometimes joke around and such which he is a great company. Oh, child, after this you might have more. Kuma chuckled. The villain attack is moving straight down Kyoto Street and he hears the reporter say before he starts to tune her out. It was hard to watch heroes nowadays, even though she was getting better. Wait, Kyoto Street. Isn't that the street where oh the world turns black? Everyone was silent, before shouting started. Am I D-O-R-I-Y-A? I-Z-U-K-U-D-E-K-U. Everyone shouted in confusion and worry at their friend. Django and 77 gripped their seats, knowing that they couldn't do anything to help their Oriva. Why must the world make Izuku's life miserable? Why couldn't they let him live joyously with his family and friends without worrying? Was it too much to ask? Izuku himself couldn't know how he felt. Before himself, he was more worried about his mother, and he hoped that his mother counterpart lived through. Izuku groans as he tries to regain his senses. He tried to push himself up but found that he could barely move an inch. His vision slowly focused and he grimaced in pain as he felt a horrible pressure on his lower back. Looking behind him, he saw that his bed had been flipped over. The hard metal digging into his back with the ceiling on top of it. His left arm was pinned and it felt like his legs were trapped. Go, somebody, help me. He chokes out. He was scared, terrified even. For his life, for his survival, for his mother. Where was she? Was she safe? Mom, he coughs out. Somebody, help, me, all might. Achako, Izuku gasps out, slightly delirious as he calls out for those that wouldn't even be nearby. Come on, come on. Tashinori pleaded for his counterpart to find him quickly. He wasn't the only one. Hurry up. Where is she? Achako mumbled, begging to find him hastily. She was having the best of her life with being with Deku-kun and she was worried that he would die, bleeding out. Katsuki gritted his teeth hoping that his counterpart could have at least some kind of brain to save the nerd. But somehow inside, he knew better. Then a voice in the distance, familiar, one that he'd hadn't heard for months. Out of my way extras. Die. Kaken was here. Surely he would save him. Okami. Katsuki groaned. Was this how he sounded? K. Kaken. Help me. Huh. Dia K. U. What the hell are you doing here? Bakugo spits out in fury as he looks at the pin boy. Please, help me. Another explosion rocked the area from behind Bakugo. Who turned around in anger. Save yourself, D.E.K.U. I've got villains to kill. He yells as he blasts off into the distance. What? Izuku gasped out, disbelieving. Kaken, you've. You're kidding, right? You're coming back, right? Izuku chokes out before smoke fills the air and he turns to look behind him. Fuck. What the hell is wrong with that version of me? Katsuki raged out, disappointed on himself. Dude, you were just there about to help Midoriya. But you left him. You abandoned him. What the hell is wrong with you? Tetsu Tetsu shouted. You think I don't know? If I ever get the chance, I'll wring my own neck with my own hands. Izuku choked and lowered his gaze as he couldn't see himself suffer through that. 
His mother couldn't hold much if she ever saw that. Wait, his mom, where was she? A spark had ignited a fire in this section of the hospital and he stared at it in terror as it slowly approaches him. Kakin, please, save me, somebody, anybody. His trousers ignite. Izuku screams in pure agony as the fire quickly travels up his body. Him helpless to do anything. Every student avoided the scene. Not willing and stomaching the view of their dear friend suffering from burns and agony, alone, with nobody there to save him. The heroes frowned, feeling the urge to jump up and save the kid. Only that they couldn't and could only watch how a hero to be was suffering. Achako choked in tears, trying to ignore the screams. She couldn't. Tenya gritted his teeth, his hands gripping hard on his seat as he could only feel helpless. Shoto's body combusted both ice and fire at the sight of the hero who saved him burn away. Like the stories he heard like his brother, Taoya. Suyu croaked sadly as she avoiding seeing her dear friend burning to death. Those that took it hard were Izuku and Tashinori. Izuku couldn't believe that there was version of him, suffering and lonesome while Tashinori couldn't bear to hear his successor dealing with that kind of undeserved punishment. Finally he snaps, as everything horrible that had happened to him played itself over and over in his mind. The taunts, the bullying, the burns, the loneliness, the false hope, the destruction of his own body as one for all betrayed him. And now, his own immolation. I hate you. Izuku roared out as he continues to scream in pain. His robot hand weakly extended, trying to grasp at anything, anybody. But it fell down, with nobody to reach for it in return. Before the fire could consume him, and before he could be relieved from the pain by blissful death, a black and purple portal opened up beneath him, whisking him away. Oh no. Izuku gasped as he and few others recognized the portal from the USJ and many other shenanigans that happened during their year in Yu and now he's going to be recruited by that bastard. Katsuki groaned, disappointed in himself that he was one of the many reasons that he got him into that position. Many heroes and teachers grimaced at that. The cool air stung against his burned skin, as did the cold concrete below him, but it was a fair better pain than what he'd just endured. Izuku's robotic hand, the covering burned and melted off, revealing its components reached out and dug into the cement. The metallic fingers buried themselves with an unknown strength as he desperately tried to survive, each movement causing him to moan in pain. There he is. He's still alive. A familiar voice says, bringing hope to Izuku. He peers upward, and there he was, Sensei. No, he is not. Tashinori gritted out, feeling the burning feeling of OFA with the desire to maim the villain. Sensei had come to save him. Tell the doctor to prepare for immediate surgery. Izuku flips himself over and Sensei walks next to him, kneeling and placing his hand on Izuku's burnt chest, the touch immediately bringing relief. Sensei, SHH, my boy, save your strength. Later, as he found himself strapped to the hospital bed, Izuku hears his Sensei once more. Poor child, abandoned by the world. Nobody came to save you, did they? Sensei, I am here, my boy, and I am but a humble man simply looking to right the wrongs in this world. For example dot 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 look, turning his head to a screen that just turned on. Izuku's eyes widened as he saw the news. Hero in training, dynamite, praised for work in defeating villains. He, he's getting praise for it. His rage and hatred were increasing as he started to snarl. Then his heart broke. He saw Mirio, Achako, and All Might, all at the scene, looking for survivors. But when they were interviewed, young Dynamite did excellent work. Dynamite's got some skill. He should have focused more on the hospital and its patients. Achako, dear Achako said while trembling. But I guess he did all right. And his heart shatters. No, the three named people bolted up from their seats with a shocking look. No, I wouldn't assume like that. Heroes need to prioritize the people if there is slight chance of saving them. We cannot simply give up. Achako cried out. Defeating villain is important, yes, but they should have tried to look for survivors, not accepting just like that. Tashinori yelled. Mirio gritted his teeth, sitting down. He knew how helpless he felt as he had once lost his quirk during the raid. He gained hope when he recovered to but if he couldn't save one person from that, he shouldn't be accepting like that. Tamaki and Nejire watched at their friend with worry as there was a time after the raid that he confessed to them that he felt regret and disappointment when he let her go with overhaul. It was one of his worst decisions and he couldn't live with that despite they had saved her. Katsuki covered his eyes with his hand, feeling inadequate on saving the only person he could match up with determination. Yet, there, he only showed himself like an arrogant hero, not worthy of being called a hero if he couldn't even save one person. What's good is being a hero, if you were going to have the blood of the innocent in his hands? Remember this everyone, Puma slowly drawled. Not everyone can save people. But you have to practice and be good to be able to save the masses. A few heroes nodded in agreement while the students took attention to that. They felt that they needed to practice more to be better. They didn't even know. They didn't know that he was still alive. That Bakugo was getting praise that was completely undeserved. He would destroy him. He would return to them. He would get them back. 
Izuku turned his head back to the man who saved him, rage clear in his eyes. I will help you, my boy. I will give you power and strength to create your own destiny and destroy those who wronged you. You need only serve me. Izuku's eyes burned with hatred as he looked at his savior, unaware of the corruption that would soon infect his mind with darkness, perverting his thoughts and perceptions as his eyes turned a red-tinged yellow. Yes, he rasps out. Sensei chuckles and smiles. When I get my hands on him, I'll kick his head off his shoulder. Rumi promised vindictively. Do it after I maul him with my teeth. Miko snarled, her throat growling with a draconic tone. Good, although I should warn you, this will hurt. Then he removes his hand, and the pain returns tenfold. Izuku was swept away in darkness and found himself in a laboratory, a familiar doctor appearing and commencing the procedure. Every step was excruciating. Every poke and prod made his body feel as if he was back inside the fire. His last limb was amputated, and all the prosthetics replaced with new ones as he was eventually covered in a full body suit, various pieces of machinery inserted into him, all to help him lie. Then there were the black rods that pierced his flesh, inserting something alien into his body, a pain that almost made him black out. But he refused to succumb, somehow knowing that all this pain, all this suffering would serve him. Finally, the last piece. Izuku stared with no small amount of fear as the mask lowered towards his face, its eyes opening to show red lenses. As it was lowered he could only whisper out one thing. Save me, all might, that I will, young Midoriya. Tashinori whispered, a tear falling from his eyes. But he would not. The mask connects with the rest of his suit with a hydraulic hiss and whine. The helmet being connected last as the suit finally pressurizes. Kukira the bed slowly rose up, as the newly created person was risen from the ashes of his former self. All for one stood next to him smiling sadistically. My boy, can you hear me? He breathes for a moment, adjusting to it, before replying. Yes, master. All for one was pleased. It seemed that All Might's failed apprentice would be very useful in the future. Where is my mother? Is she safe? Is she all right? All for one pretends to mourn as he faced the boy. It seems that in the conflict dot 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 the heroes failed to save her, even killed her. In shock, he turns forward, unable to comprehend what happened. That it can't be. She was alive. I know it. Izuku choked out a sob, not willing to accept that his dear mother would have died. He couldn't. Django and 77 patted his back in reassurance while glaring at all for one. All clones had a first rule that everyone followed. Nobody touches the mother or their vod and gets away with it. He groans as the entire room starts to tremble, machinery and tubings being crushed under an unseen force. He tore off the restraints, forcing himself to take his first steps. He screams in agony as all for one smiles. Yes, he would be useful indeed. Every student and hero glared at the villain. No, monster that had tormented everyone. No matter whether there was going to have a battle or a war, they will be prepared and the forces of all for one will know how the heroes did their job against such opponents. Telekinesis, kinetic blasts, emotional enhancement, pain conversion, and more. His previously quirkless body had been perfect for managing the quirks that had been given to him by his new master, the dreaded antithesis to one for all. All for one, ironic. The former, created to save had destroyed him, while the latter, created to destroy, had saved him. Tell me, my boy, now that you have risen anew, what shall you call yourself? Shall you remain tied down by your old name? Bowed on his knee, he shakes his head in denial. Midoriya Izuku is dead. I, I am the darkness that remains of him, and I will strike fear into the hearts of the false heroes and corruption of this world. His words were accompanied by the accursed breathing, but it was all to keep him alive. All for him, all for one. Having previously looked into his memories with a special quirk in his collection, smiles, it couldn't be more poetic. Very well then, henceforth, you shall be known as Darth Kyofu. Darth Kyofu breathes deeply as he feels power flow through him, emotional enhancement allowing him to use his rage as fuel. And there it goes the name of the new villain. Kago grimaced, his feathers ruffled in contained fury. Don't worry, Inji growled out as his flames blasted off his costume in eagerness. He won't live long after this. Arise, my apprentice, for while Tamura shall be the paragon of the League, you shall be its shadow. And when the time comes, you will have your revenge on those who wronged you. Yes, master, Darth Kyofu said as he rises and takes his place by all for one side. It seemed that his master's words were true. Peace was a lie. With that, the screen turned off and the lights turned on. Everyone was quiet and Kuma couldn't blame them for that. They had watched Darth Kyofu as it is one of the many dark-themed stories Draconis made which in turn. Everyone will see how much a change, a decision that could turn to their world upside down. After another pregnant pause, everyone was surprised when the silence was broken by the last person they expected. Why would you show us this? Katsuki asked, his voice not sounding the usual arrogant tone Klasa was used to. Kuma glanced at Katsuki. He wouldn't admit it but there are stories that he wished that Katsuki would be better since the beginning. For him to know struggle when he was entitled to everything. With a sigh, he answered. 
to show that of consequences, Bekugo Katsuki. Now, Midoriya Izuku is his own person and his actions are his. And while there are countless universes where All Might's words break Midoriya and lead him to villainy, the fact of the matter is that he was only the straw that broke the camel's back. But there is one near eternal, universal constant. He raised a finger and pointed it at him. You, your actions, your influence, your daily abuse combined with everyone else's in his day-to-day -day have led to the deaths of trillions across the multiverse. You think Darth Kyofu is bad? Just wait until you see Lockdown, Megatron, King Ghidorah, Thanos or better yet, all for one. Everyone choked at the thought of Midoriya Izuku having all for one. There's a universe where Izuku has all for one. Tashinori gritted out. Kuma closed his eyes and raised an arm. No, there are universes. The Deku squad choked. As in, plural, Tenya said in dread. Much worse, Ida-kun. Kuma sighed as he began walking to the doors. There are much worse. Take an hour to rest. We will return after you have taken your break. And that, everyone watched as Kuma opened and closed the doors without looking back. They now were thinking how much they were going to learn in this place.